Hey, hello, everybody, and welcome to a special pre-recorded EFAB. This will be one we pop out when, when there's just so much going on that we can't possibly do a live one for whatever may reason hap happens. In any case, uh, semi recently slash ages ago, bring a completed soma. It's Hooray. wonderful. Yeah. Look at that. Wow. Yes, Since with that happening, we can all talk about it now. The three of us as a game, right. a story, set of ideas, blah, blah, blah. So, first of all, uh, why don't you, gentle viewer, enjoy the conversation that we're going to have that happened a while ago, but is now going to be in this video <laughs> of us talking about soma. And then after that, We'll uh we'll come back and we'll do something else that you've probably figured out from the title of this video already. But hey, look at them. There they are. They're gonna talk now. They they take it away. Off they go. Hello. Hey. You finished it up. Mm-hmm. Ten hours ten hours in total about, isn't it? Yeah. So what do you think? Oh, I'm going to be thinking about this game for a while. I'm going to be thinking about this game for a while, I can tell that. I don't even know where to begin in terms of unpacking my thoughts on this whole game. Um. Uh, yeah, I mean, so already upon completing it instantly, this game is way, 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 way high up on, like, my list of favorite stories in video games. Well, at least now you know why Beard Rags put it incredibly highly. I, uh, I don't, I don't know that I could ask for the game to do any more reasonably in terms of exploring all of the concepts that are, uh, the, the, all of the concepts that it's attempting to delve into related to consciousness being uh, artificial intelligence, continuity, you know, continuity of consciousness, robotics, um, what it, what it, what exactly, like, life is, where we derive the value from the, the, the notion of, like, whether, the, 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 like, how much the value of life is derived from the perception of it being real, and moreover, like, what does that even matter? Like, it, the notion of it being real or the perception of it being real and what exactly does that even mean to the perceiver um i i, I yeah like I, I felt like there was a uh, yeah like no stone stone left unturned in terms of exploring these concepts and like the way that, and 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 this is all on top of the fact that i think that like the central plot as presented here with these characters going through it and the mystery that unravels as you traverse through all of these different parts of the base uh, gradually piecing together what's going on. Um, the, like, all of that is presented in a really interesting way. Obviously, from a gameplay perspective, it's pretty straightforward. Pretty, like, you know, minimalistic, I suppose you could say. It's not like it's a particularly mechanically complex game, but I certainly don't feel like, uh, the game as presented and all of the mechanics get in the way of the story. It feels like it's totally, like, in sync and in service of the story. Yeah, it's another one of those that answers hypothetical because if someone said which they have soma shouldn't have been a game it should have just been a movie it's like no, no it, needs it needs to be a game it's got to be a game the choices is such a huge yeah, you, part of the experience to, it's part of the uh sort of how the argument how it convinces you you get immersed in being simon exactly and if he is being viewed by a camera the whole time as opposed to you being him uh, it's much easier to disconnect him from humanity yeah, I think so, and it especially... I mean, look at the way he looks, right? Like... Exactly, the first-person perspective, even when you've got, like, the robot hands, you can't really see exactly what you are, and particularly at the end, you can't quite see exactly what you are, even though that part, by that stage, it's particularly horrific. Um, it's particularly horrific what exactly he is, and I don't think you get... Because having the... Obviously, you know, as a setup, essentially, for what happened there at the end of the... What was already something that you should have been able to essentially ascertain by that point is that there there doesn't seem to be such a thing as like a transfer like what we, we're doing the prestige well, the prestige, the prestige. Yes. It's there, the... technically speaking there is a transfer but sure it, but because transfer this obvious why they chose that word it's very uh you can mean a couple things 
exactly. It's it's all down to perspectives because so much of it boils down to, and so so much of like the ethical quandaries essentially boil down to. Well, like, what do you make of it? What do you think? <laughs> like, what do you think? What do you think the situation? What do you think you're being asked to do here? What do you what do you think you're being asked to decide on? Um, and there's like so much to go through, and I, I like when it comes to thinking about. Oh, just like each of those choices, because I'm sitting here, it's like, hmm, would I, would I, would I destroy the WoW? Would I do that? I don't, I don't feel like I fully so, understand that choice, you know? I don't, I don't even know what I'm choosing between well, there. Yeah, it's not a huge loss that you didn't make an informed choice, so to speak, in the game, you can still just think about it now. But, I'm, st uh, I'm thinking about it now, yeah. When I got to that yeah. point, uh... I had a different point of view to you. I felt like I, the whole game was showing me exactly what it means for the WoW to proliferate, like to, to do what it intends to do. And I, as far as I'm concerned, it's horrifying. But what I find incredibly interesting and I believe is part of the point the game is making is that I want to stop the WoW to stop all of the suffering, even though there's plenty of instances of happiness, there's plenty of instances of functionality. There's plenty of creatures here that don't necessarily, if they have the choice, want to die. Mm -hmm. You are one of them. You don't want to die in this game at any point, really. Um, Simon is very much, he's got a huge amount of self-interest, naturally, because he's, uh, you know, a copy of a human being. He's just like, yeah, yeah, I want to live. I want to I want to make things better for myself. But the, you know, time could come where he would want to kill himself as well as circumstances if he was to be crippled and stuck in like a, you know, cocoon, which you almost were. And that's one of the most interesting parts of the game is that you meet up with your, uh, you essentially have your dream coming yeah. true and then you're knocked out of it and so the implication is that the wow not that's only what the wow presents to you. and gives life yeah that it tries to get them in in you know a sense of everything being strong and great and there's a couple of quotes about the shambling sort of machine monster creatures we don't know what they're seeing for, it's, for it's the thing know, that makes it really difficult is that all we can see is from the outside in and we can try to figure out what they're experiencing based on the things that they're saying and there's kind of like yeah. conflicting information because as I, you know, some of the robots expressed that they were happy. They didn't want, you know, that, that they were happy with the situation, even though the situation just seemed to be them in a static near catatonic state. But the problem is that what we're perceiving from the outside, who's to say what it is from the inside and what exactly is there for you, but your subjective experience of reality. If, as far as you're concerned, you're leading your life and everything is pretty normal. And you have no idea that you're hooked up yeah, to like, basically this like gray goo thing that's constantly expanding and trying to keep things alive that in the real world is horrifying, but you're completely oblivious to what does that mean to you? I mean, there's so many concepts running at once because you can picture like that creature, well, any of them that were chasing you, what they could be seeing is they're in a beautiful forest, just, you know, running after a rabbit. And just yeah, exactly. I, th I think what mainly, yeah. what really put that in my mind was the fact that Simon initially thought he was a person in the facility yeah. he thought he was a person and then eventually he realized oh shit i'm i'm not i'm a i'm a robot um and if that's something that he perceived that could absolutely be the same and we, we saw it right with uh with uh carl like really early on where he's talking about how he thought he was a human like yeah see here's my arms and everything like that it's just to him everything seems not but I, yeah, that's the thing. It's like, I, I guess you would presume that the longer that the, the WoW goes on, the more that it can sort of refine its process and create essentially this it situation. It's that wonderful. There's so many amazing quotes in this game. One of the ones I love is from Johan Ross, where he says, we cannot rely on a machine to know what it's like to be human. That's the one we that really makes me think. To, know, to define, to, to make sure the experience is the way it's supposed to be when it's like... I'm listening to it, my character right now, who is a machine. Exactly. It's, and, what, and what is the nature of all of the beings that have been amalgamated into this thing to agree to be a part of this? To agree to be a part of the WoW and to essentially lead lives that are entirely dependent on what the WoW perceives life to be. And who's to say that what the perception of the WoW is doesn't change into something that's horrifying later on. So this is the this is the thing I I find the destroy the wow choice to be one of the most complex because I usually land on I'm going to end the suffering but the thing is if an all powerful very well knowledgeable alien came to earth and had a choice to just blow us up and it was looking around and it'd be like yeah I've spotted some that are just in constant pain some that like just bought birth to die some that are just like 
kept on machines until they die. People who want to die but can't because their, their systems don't allow it. People who are getting murdered and killed. There's wars happening constantly. Yes, there are people who are happy, but that's usually in, like, stark opposition to their circumstances. Like, they, they, they make it that way. It's not a neutral position, happiness in this world. It's mainly a planet of suffering. And so it's worthwhile putting a stop to it. Like, I can see an alien deciding that, or a greater being of power. And then I start to wonder, it's like, wait, am I doing that with the WoW? Am I just deciding, like, uh, there's too much suffering here for me to let it happen? Especially when it's not something that is completely and utterly comprehensible. It's kind of be it kind of can't be. You can develop a pretty good idea of what exactly it is, but you can never really know. You can only know once you're a part of it, and even then, and then even and then you can't do anything about it. That's that's the big aspect of Soma that's super important is that um, what inflicts like a huge heaviness on your decisions is that you have the power to make it now, you might not in the future. Exactly. That's kind of the difficulty with a lot of those choices there is I could do something about it now. Um, it, it's like I said, a lot of the choices seem like you can cut off the possibility for bad, but you cut off the possibility for good. It's just that the good is way less likely than the bad, at least it seems that way. Well, that's the problem. It seems that it way. It seems bad. It seems the good. Though yeah. Simon seems to be one of the most self-aware creatures in the facility, and he's terrified and trying to make things better. It's like, maybe the the vast majority of the other creatures in this facility are actually relatively happy. I don't mm. know. They don't look happy. They don't look happy, but, but at but the like... same time, some of them said that they were happy even when they looked very unhappy. Like the Amy in particular. That was the one where it's like, she wanted to remain in that state, even though it looked absolutely horrifying. What do you think of Simon as the main character? Um, I think he asks all of the questions that I want him to ask, and around about the times that I want him to ask them. So, I, like I, think... I said, one of the things this game got heavy criticism for was Simon not only talking too much, but being just an annoying idiot. Okay, I don't think he's annoying, and I don't think he's stupid. He actually asks a lot of good questions. Something that people don't take in is that the game says that he is... So first of all, he's a man with brain damage who got a scan that is considered one of their first initial legacy scans that are simplified, meaning that they, they're they not as detailed. He doesn't uh, have as much creative thinking or learning uh, as, as regular like scans and stuff. He's a volatile human being. And that, um, but he's still absolutely Joe Everyman. Like, he's the most normal person ever. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Catherine uh, is, is one of the most fascinating characters in this, as far as I'm concerned. I think she recognizes that pretty early on in the game that you are not exactly, uh, ready to explore a lot of the realities of this situation. And she strings you along for as long as she can. Because so when can she's complete. When she's saying, go and think about it, she has thought about it a lot. She's very, very, yeah, very, very, noticed. very aware. But, like, everything in this game is deliberate, so when all the characters seem to, like, take things well, um, on Catherine's side, it's the fact that she already understands all of this. She's at peace with most of it. She's she already at the end point. Like, Catherine gets to live in the Ark, and you'd be like, well, you're not you, though, and she's like, no, me. Yeah. And you're like, okay. You know, like, that's her POV. Um... While Simon, like he's uh, he's got the perception filters happening because of the the creature that he is, and he's got a simplistic brain scan, meaning all of his like POV is is stretched and uh, smoothed out to try and just accept his circumstances. So like every time he gets a new piece of information, he gets riled up, but then she just stops talking and he starts thinking and calms down and then just carries on. Um, and it's just throughout the game, and it creates this sense that she's like the villain when. Honestly, she's just a little bit like, uh, and I'm not doing this to be mean, but uh, th there's obviously theories from fans. It's like, I think she's got autism to an extent. She doesn't really do well with people. They make many references to that in her human form. She's uh, very driven by goals. She doesn't really react to situations a lot like normal people do. Um, and she's not good, with, great with people. But if you, the latter quotes about her from people in the end of the game are all that of like, sorry to her, she was right, and that she is a good person. And uh, I'm inclined to believe that completely. It's just that everybody makes mistakes and that she decided early on that it's wise to not inform Simon of a lot of what's happening because he might not complete the mission. Which, um, she might be right. 
uh maybe he would have like if, if he if he was essentially presented with the notion of you've got like a coin toss plus another one really with the dive you know once once we're past the that they couldn't use the uh the dunbat machine once you pass that it's like right so you got you got like a, a 25 percent chance of you know of actually like making it to uh the end in terms of your you know what i mean like the coin toss right of yeah. the prestige um, you got a 25% chance of actually making it to the arc. And in the meantime, you have to go through this absolutely terrifying experience to get there. Like, you present that to him, that's a much harder sell. It's definitely like oh. the carrot of hope. Is uh... I'm curious what you'd have to say about this. So, one of the big criticisms the game got, uh, this is all of my videos as well, is that uh, it lies. There was never a coin toss, it's set. The Simon in the chair stays in the chair and one gets copied over to the new place. It's the prestige. So, uh, it's the prestige. So people go as far as saying that the game doesn't even understand it's not a coin toss. It thinks it's a coin toss. No, it is a coin toss. It is a coin toss. It's the prestige. That's the fun reality of this. It's the fun thing. People don't... So people treat it as looking at it from... It's not even necessarily... This, this is where it can get complicated. The, the Simon's POV is exactly the same, whether he stays in the chair or goes to the Ark. He will, he will have the, he will have the same, same perception history. of events, exactly. He will so perceive that the everything... Simon in the Ark will feel lucky. He'll be like, I'm the one who's... who's a, 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 and obviously we won the coin toss, as she explained several times. Uh, the the us that continues Simon in Toronto has that extra, what was it, like a week and then you die? Meanwhile, the, the Simon that, you know, was copied over, at least the one that we're playing as, who presumably is the first copy that was created, he... he it's it's a reason why they present it in the way that they present it. Um, it feels very deliberate, particularly that they present the first because each time that we've gone with it, we followed, you know, a particular Simon essentially the continuity of Simon as far as we can perceive it. But it feels important to show at the end the Simon who didn't make it to sort of emphasize the nature of what's happening here. Yeah, which is that essentially the way that it's the way that it's going to be perceived by whatever the duplicate Simon is, if you want to say the duplicate, is that they had all of the experiences leading up to them getting in the chair, and then they there's like a, 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 a fork in the road, and they continue in one path, meanwhile, the other one continues in the different path. The perception of which one is or isn't the, the real one is a distinction without a difference. Yeah, you might be able to make the argument in terms of the Toronto Simon to the Pathos 2 Simon, but from then on, you can't say... Like, I don't know what standing you'd have to say... No, Simon in the Ark is not Simon. Simon is left in Pathos 2. And it's like, no, but he, that is no, Simon. No, that is Simon. He perce he has all of the same memories. He has all... Yeah, everything the, it's makes just that, that person the, the, Simon is Simon. The only like, difference is that instead of still being on, you know, on the bottom of the ocean, he's like, oh yeah, I got into the Ark, sweet. So well, yeah, I don't, what, uh, I don't know. that uh, The idea why, that the game doesn't understand what it's about, it's like, no, you just don't get it. Sorry. The thing about um, <laughs> oh, no. you know, the, the the ease of people's interpretations for the Toronto one versus the Pathos two one, of course, is the human flesh, the body, right? Which is is like, oh, that's an easy separation. But what about Simon one to Simon two? Like, what what are you gonna you gonna say? Like his 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 robot body in Pathos two when he first got there is now more sacred than the second robot body. And is that second or first robot body any more valuable as a <laughs> well, sort of vehicle for his mind than the Ark? That's when they started talking then, about course, the whole notion of uh, when he was talking about the afterlife, right? And the idea of like, hmm, what does it mean if there was like an afterlife and then there are duplicates of you that, well, you know, and, each time they fork off at some different point, but they're duplicates of you and they all coexist in one place. Does that devalue I think the, them? The game is trying to highlight with Simon One, Two, Three, Four, if you label them that way, is that the only distinction we can really come up with as the difference between them is their bodies, and what does that mean? And what does that mean what's when the of, their perception what's the name is of the game? So, <laughs> yeah, so Soma, Soma means <laughs> the the body as distinct from the soul, the mind, or the psyche. Hmm. How much does it mean, and how much do we define ourselves by it? And it's complicated. And the game presents it as being complicated. It's the reason why Simon yeah, says that he's not sure. Team I don't think this. so at all. It's... I think the game presents its material to you, and then like what you pull from it and what you make of it is kind of down to how you feel about all of these subjects, which I think is really awesome um, that it presents them in such a robust and, and comprehensive way, while at the same time 
leaving a significant amount of it for you to think about and figure out. Like, the game didn't give me any of the stuff we were talking about when it came to what, we, what was going to happen with Brandon or if we were going to delete the legacy scans. The game didn't provide me any of that. That was all stuff that I was able to pull from the material and just pull from my own yeah, thoughts game, about, you know, existence. They really limit the hand-holding in this game as well. Uh, so much of where you're supposed to go and what you're supposed to do is relying on maps and signs in-universe. And you paying attention. And, like, appropriate ones, not, you know, just made-up stuff. Well, I mean, it, um, it's... This is the peak of what I would call an adult game, this is. I'd say that, um, it's like I said, there's a lot that you can gather just from, like, looking around at things. Um, just, like, paying some amount of attention to the... I, I'm surprised by the amount of diversity that we got in terms of the locations, considering that all of them are ultimately, you know, under... Uh, d yeah. Desolate underwater bases. But we got, like, a real... Where we ended up was quite different from, uh, from where we began. It just kept, like, evolving and changing. Because at the beginning of the game, I had no idea that this is where we were going to end up. But it all, it all like, flows, and that information just keeps coming to you at a pretty steady pace. And there's a whole bunch that can just be gleaned from, like, reading all of the, uh, all of the logs and, and everything scattered about and just paying attention to the environment. There's a lot that, uh, I feel like I... It's it's obviously hard to tell because it was my first playthrough, but I don't know how much of it I picked up versus how much I didn't, and uh, how much more or less comprehensive my uh, my knowledge on the game could have ended up being. Yeah, obviously, if you ever decide to play it again, you'll be able to pick up a lot more. There's a couple of recordings you missed, a couple of like other rooms or whatever, but nothing that would you know change anything significantly for you in your experience of the game. You got pretty much the whole thing, the whole package. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, sad thinking about the fact that this game was not received as that well or sold, didn't sell very well. Well, now you can understand how furious I got, basically. I, I thought this was incredible. It's one of the best games I've ever played in my life. And then I found out that not only did nobody really play it, but nobody really liked it who did play it. And it's considered like a fuck up. And Frictional Games got the message from everybody and they were like, okay, yeah, we fucked up. We'll make we'll make something more generic and scary next time. And so then what? You got Amnesia <laughs> Rebirth, is that Rebirth, it? Rebirth, <laughs> which is one of the worst horror games I've ever played in my entire life. Um, yeah, and I, then I... they did I, The Bunker, which is apparently much more true to form to The Dark Descent, which is a good game. But Soma is a hell of a lot... Like, Soma's transcending its medium, essentially. I don't know what to do with the idea that the game isn't scary. I don't know what I'm meant to do with that. I find it it's pretty terrifying. Horrifying. I find yeah. it very terrifying what was presented here. Like even just the concept of people being connected to the WoW and their experience and what it looks like from the outside, but how they feel about it on the inside. And then from the outside in, I really can't know how they feel yet. I've still got to try and make decisions about whether or not I think I should leave them in this state or not. Like, I don't know, man, if that's not scary, like that's okay. <laughs> Good for you, I guess. A lot of people just wanted to get a series of rooms where they're chased by monsters. But I mean, and have to run but they around. had that. There were those moments too, not, and they freaked me enough. out. Not I, enough of them. Not fast enough. I, I'm. I feel like I got as much as I needed of that, because we need the downtime. We need the downtime well, to so explore. The, the, this is the thing. Soba presents quite a big problem because I consider it a masterpiece, and it's like not very well liked by much of anybody on Earth, at least statistically compared to the people who don't like it. Damn. It's like, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Alright, whatever. Ugh. It was funny too, because I, I went into it expecting the Dark Descent, but sci-fi. Okay, and that's, you got something quite like, different, well, didn't you? good at doing spooks. Oh, yeah I, yeah, I did not expect this. And I was just like, Jesus Christ, well, they're like one of the be best dev teams going. And then they're, they, just, they're just making art. And that's all they're doing is... And th this, this, to me, is like a huge step forward for gaming as well because of how they dealt with choices. Uh, the fact well, that yeah, those choices do nothing mechanically, like, at all. It's, uh, it's an interesting thing that happens with conversations about choices because something that often gets pointed out with Mass Effect... A lot of people will point out that the vast majority of your choices are inconsequential as like a point of criticism. Um, when really, it having a game effect on gameplay or not, it's kind of like complicated how much that actually matters. Um, 
I know we've talked about morality systems before and how generally I feel like the approach with the morality system is to make the good choice harder. That always seems like a, a, a like the, the the evil choice or the renegade choice is the more expeditious path and that like the good choice is the one that entails more hardship um, as like a concept. But then when it comes to the idea of like how consequential... Oh, and of course Telltale games get criticized for the choices not mattering. Um, but the thing is, is... I mean, surely this game would be an example of how... It's not really... It, like, it's... I'm, I'm thinking about these choices, even though, you know, it's all in a video game where... E even if you wanted to get around the idea of, like, that they weren't very consequential in the video game, even if they, if they were consequential in the video game, the video game's not real. It's not like... It's not like real life, right? These are all choices that you're making in the context of a game. But I'm, I'm having a real big think about these. I don't know that I'm ever going to fully resolve what I think about the choice with with um brandon or uh, i guess yep. by extension the legacy scans i'm really not sure about that robot uh robin that w i i decided to leave out there i'm not sure about the wow i'm not sure if i should have <laughs> i'm not sure i'm not sure if it was i i don't i really 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 truly feel like there are no clear easy answers for the choices in this game for each choice, I feel like I can easily provide a pretty robust counter-argument to it. I just keep doing I that. I believe that the way they structure it is that, like, you ending up... Like, the, the shock of going from Toronto to Pathos 2 is like, this is horrible, this shouldn't have happened, why has this happened? And, by the way, um, I figure you would have had it in the back of your head, but you can discover you're a robot who's been uploaded, like, in the first room. There's, um... If you read through all of the information, it basically explains that, uh... It, like it has dates and the users and then the wow is the one that built you and it built you for the express purpose of turning the power back on at Upsilon. That's what it wanted you to do. Hmm. And you did. Um, obviously for other reasons though, you kind of did that intuitively. That's, that's what everyone does. You're just like, well, I'll power this place back up. I don't know. What's interesting is there's a, a TV show that was kind of made for Soma. They're, they're like super low budget, uh, sort of like a, I don't know if it was like a YouTube series or not, but it's called Transmission. Interesting. As far as I know, it's it was officially licensed. Okay. And um, it tells the story sort of of a lot of the survivors. Uh, the most interesting part to me, though, is the Imogen Reed, I think her name is. Uh, she's in the game as well. You can find... You're, you're using her body as Simon 1. And uh, she's the one, the last survivor in uh, Upsilon in the, in the show, and she manages to just shut down the power to stop the WoW. Like, that's her whole goal in that show, and she does it. And that's like the prequel series, and then you wake up in her body that the WoW is used to upload you to to turn it back on, which is some fucking poetic tragedy, I'd say. Uh, I would say so, absolutely. Um, man, I I really I really found it interesting, you know, how uh, you have this system essentially to gain access to all this information, but then when you get to uh when you get to um uh Omicron. It's just like a, a, a sort of like a, a black hole in terms of uh, information because all of the, also, all enough, of the, the people recordings inside. you missed um, in Omicron would have given you the full context, but like you might have chicken and egged it. You'd be like, oh, I, I can't read their black boxes because their heads are gone, which means they wouldn't have the black boxes in their head. When it's in reality, it's the, the WoW used the black boxes to kill everybody in Omicron. He blew up all their heads. Oh. And he did it because they were going to try and sabotage the WoW with the uh, the gel. But obviously, you can do it without much repercussion from the WoW because you don't have a black box. Right, I see. There's a lot of like pieces of Soma that are <laughs> not readily obvious that you get when you re-go and you're like, I see. oh shit, that's why that happened, that's why that happened. Oh, this. And learning the character names and understanding their journeys has become clearer and clearer. <laughs> and yeah, um, everybody is hyper sus of Catherine throughout the whole game, and uh, I just think it's a, it's an interesting thing they did where it's, it's only because of the fact that I think you, that you're playing a game, you know there's going to be twists, you know, that like, the way that she ends conversations all the time, very awkward. The thing, the fact she doesn't react to things as usual as everyone else, but uh, she is just trying to get humanity off Earth. She believes that is the most righteous thing she can Which, do. Which, um, she wants to do it. I mean, you know, hard, nothing. <laughs> like, if uh, if the choice is in terms of like a prospect for humanity, it's probably better in space than in the bottom of the ocean, where there's only X amount of time for sure. 
compared to it, it which is interesting because it, it feels like it's kind of you know ties into what a lot of the choices are which is do you want to take a chance on this yeah. do you want to take a chance or do you want to and i mean it feels like that's the case with the wow in terms of that choice do you want to take a chance that what the wow that the wow should continue to exist as this new form of life that is providing an experience that maybe you don't understand but maybe it's not so bad yeah and, and i don't believe there's any hard answers in this game is, is just supposed to make you think about everything i don't think there's like a straightforward answer to these things either obviously they have and that, that's what i see that's why i like simon and catherine so much they they're both well all the characters they all have very um specific points of view and understandings and it's supposed to you know be vehicles for arguments and stuff like the fact that the arc didn't get launched why because peterson thought that it's too risky and that it's better that we live down here for however many years than risk having none at all. And then Catherine uh, died the for that, trying to yep. stop that. What's up, Rags? Hello. So, why don't, why don't you tell everybody what you think of Soma? Ooh, Soma's good stuff, isn't it? Soma's real good. It's a really, really high-tier content. Super duper coolio. Um, yeah, there's a there's so much to like about it. It's a shame not as many people know about it. Uh, I think it, I think it like uh, barely essentially paid for itself. It took a long time for it to pay itself off in terms yeah. of sales and stuff. Oh. Um, uh. So it's a shame that, you know, they went from... Did you ever play Rebirth? I haven't played any of uh, Frictional's games. I haven't played the Amnesia games. This is the only one. Next year you should do The Dark Descent. That could be cool. I think The Dark Descent yeah, is cool. Descent. That was like one of oh, the yeah, early uh, Let's Play games. And ironically, my top yes. horror game of all time before Soma came out. <laughs> okay, interesting. Yeah, it's really good. I would highly recommend uh, hmm. Amnesia The Dark Descent. Uh, I think you'll love it a great deal. Um, you can... You can tell it's like a same, a similar kind of game, uh, and at the same time, a very different game. But um, not the same for Rebirth, the same right? That's yeah. kind of like a, what happened. Rebirth is horrendous. Trash. <laughs> Absolute trash. How we went from this to Rebirth is... Well, I guess we know, right? Because Soma's not a horror game. Yeah, it's because, <laughs> yeah, it's because Soma's not a horror game. There's um, a bunch of... Dumb you know, fucks didn't get it, you know? As much as there's memes for that, right? If if this game doesn't launch off of its own reputation and company, what can really help is a whole bunch of streamers playing it, loving it, and then having other people support it or play it themselves. Unfortunately, the biggest influence in the form of a video review on YouTube said it was kind of bad, don't buy it. And it's that Joseph, Joseph Anderson, Anderson and it right? Drove so, me absolutely so, insane how much he did not understand about this game at me all. having not watched that video for pretty obvious reasons. Because I saw someone ask, "Are the floodgates open on Stoma spoilers?" I think the answer is probably yes, yes at this point. Now, now, if you like are watching an EFAP and you watch episodes, you're not safe because I played it yeah. now and I'm gonna want to talk about it. So yeah. Um, and I have not seen his video, which means I'm probably going to watch it at some well, yeah, stage. And as someone just mentioned, the insane, the wild thing is if you watch Markiplier's playthrough, he understands this game completely. Well, you showed me the, uh, the, 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 his, uh, uh interacting with Robin, uh, before he went into, was it Delta? Was that the station? Theta, I think. Theta was, yeah, I think it might've been Theta. Um, yeah, no, I mean, based on that small snippet, it's like, yeah, I mean, he clearly understood it. Like, he, he Im immediately figured out what the moral, like, quandary was, as presented to him. Um, uh, and yeah, well, um, oh, Josh actually. Anderson, famed author and, uh, game breakdown <laughs> extraordinaire, uh, he reviewed it, and by the way, free, he did the, kind of the same thing as you, but obviously he took it forward into a review that, uh, he didn't even know that you, destroying the WoW was a choice, like, he describes the story as though Simon destroys the WoW as like a set thing. So the thing is, Which, is um, that I think if I just slowed down a little bit, I probably would have grasped the, like, I don't feel like the game screwed up there. I think I might have, uh, I don't know. Yeah, you could I, just leave. Yeah. Um, Which makes a lot of sense that I could have yeah. just left. Yeah. Yeah, obviously yeah. the game wants you in almost every single sense to just have a look around first before you do anything. Mm. <laughs> and then you'll be all right. 
Uh, well, and, if, yeah, and there's something to be said about if you feel compelled to destroy the WoW. There's yeah, no, I know, like, I know. Some, that's that's the thing. It's that I don't, I don't, I don't yeah, know that there's anything. Too, it's it's why you rushed I, into it and just did it. I found it interesting because I, I I've talked about it before, but sometimes I f I think it can be really interesting when like the player doesn't know that they're making a choice, but they are, and then they find out that they are afterward. Because I mean, yeah, I don't know. I I I, uh, I think <laughs> maybe that speaks to a sort of gut instinct there, which is like, hmm, I don't, I don't think I like the wow. <laughs> There's just something telling me like, oh, I'm not so sure about you. Um, well, out of well, I always like just Kath's description of it early on in the game, where she says it doesn't think, it doesn't want, it doesn't. Even, she doesn't even know if it has the capacity to. It's a cancer. It, mm. It's it's just doing it does what, what it, it does. does. Yeah. yeah, like that it it does what it which uh because I mean as I understand it isn't the idea with a cancer cell that it essentially something's gone wrong and it doesn't want it to essentially go through the natural process of a cell and then that starts to spread and multiply to like the adjoining cells so maybe that's like actually a, a good well, yeah. one, describing when, the wow when you see I think it's the late part of theta you go through a series of areas with loads of just this fleshy piles with like you can sort of make out faces like eyes and limbs and then the creatures that are uh walking around as rag said to you before but if you could find some of the concept images and, and some of these creatures that you know in isolation and get a good look at them it's like the designs are fucking terrifying and it's hard not for that to inform you entirely in terms of turning the wow off I see. Yeah, obviously so. the WoW has no real concept of aesthetics ex externally, mm. so what yeah. it makes is not really how it how it looks as, as they're alive. Well, regarded, yeah. So what I'm curious about what now. What does it even mean for them to be alive? Now that the game is completed, uh, maybe d both of you like you know go along chronologically. What choices did you make? So, if we would say choice one would be Carl. Yeah, um, let's say the this. problem. With Carl is that a lot of people don't recognize it very well, the choice, before it's too late. I see. Um, Christopher Odd is one of the, the people I was watching. He turned on Carl, turned off Carl's switch first, and Carl starts screaming, and he says, please turn it back on, please stop, please stop. And he did that, and then he eventually like thought for a while, and he was like, oh, sorry, I, I guess I don't have any choice, you know, and then just did it anyway. I see. Um, I, think, I can't remember if Mark figured out he didn't have to do it, and so it didn't, but obviously... I don't think anybody has an issue with choosing to spare spare Carl the screaming in order to make yeah, the game exactly. harder, which I find really interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that is interesting it's, you, to think about. You look back at it through the context of the game, and for all the people who don't think that those are really people or anything, but who wanted to spare this person or this thing the suffering, right? Like there, that that in and of itself should at least get some you know gears turning in your mind. Mm. In the um, end, you're willing to. In the end, you're willing to kill it out of mercy, but it's the exact reverse kind of mercy that you showed to it earlier. Um, and I think that that's choice. If you're in, if you've taken the game for what it is, if you're super immersed and you want to prevent suffering, that choice is pretty straightforward. I think everyone makes the same uh, choice, which is despair. Yes, which it's, would why, mean... it's probably why it's like the first choice. It's pretty, yeah, pretty you know, rudimentary. Starting off, no suffering is better than suffering, right? All things being equal, you know. And then uh, choice two would be Amy, right? In the uh, do you unplug one or both? I think that's the next one. That one I wasn't sure. It, it, uh, I need to check because I've never known anybody, including myself, to try only unplugging one. I can't remember if it lets you leave if you've only unplugged so, one. So the thing is, is that I thought about just unplugging one. The impression that I got when I looked at the screen was that power had been returned to the tram and that I could have just left. But that safety hadn't. Yeah, what it was, which, which was what I was wondering um, about. Because, yeah, at that point, now it, it costs you something in order to... Uh, well, it, it'll it, if you leave her alive, it'll cost you safety, whatever it, that, that refers to exactly. If we're to take that for the actual choice that it was, as opposed to... Like I said, mechanically, I'm not actually sure. I need to test that one. I don't um, think there's a difference um, whether or not you so, uh, unplug So a couple of people are saying it. that there's no change in the consequence. It, I guess it would just be that you leave her alive in a state that definitely looks worse than when you got there. Um, either, it always it was an initial just absolute freak out for me seeing that she had like wow created structure gel lungs that were yeah, pumping that into was really pipes into it. That was like, I was just freaky. like, oh good god, like... And then, uh, and when she said uh, it doesn't let anything die, I was like, uh. Mm. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, a lot of 
we can kind of you'll know all of my choices when I tell you like um, any one of them necessarily is uh, or one of the later ones and you'll know how the rest of them went so like you know for instance I wiped all of Brandon Wan's stuff I wiped the legacy things I wiped um, I, I turned off the girl outside of Theta um, I, t I killed the WoW I wanted all to stop I thought it was horrifying <laughs> okay uh, Rags what about you I honestly can't remember, like, a lot of my choices. Um, it might be because I played it a long time ago, and I've watched now two different people's... I guess three with Markiplier's. I've watched... I've played it, and then I've watched three people's <laughs> playthroughs of it, and I can't actually remember what a lot of my decisions were when I first played it. Um, some of them I do remember. I... I... Th Ooh... I'm trying to remember if I killed I the WoW or not. Now, right? Yeah, I guess you can, <laughs> essentially. Um, as far as Amy Azaro, I can't remember because it would come down to what she says. Um, I think if she wanted to stay alive, I would have left her alive. If she wanted to die, I would have killed her. I think um, she says I can't remember that she wanted to... Dialogue. I think she wanted to stay alive. I think that's what she said. Like she, I think All she right. said, why did you... She asked you to find people who can help yeah. her as well. Alright, and uh, so then that's probably what I did. Compared to someone like um, Sarah who explicitly asked uh, for the... to pull the plug. Yeah, 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 yeah I killed uh, Lindwell. Sarah at the end. Um, I... Did you destroy the see. WoW? I can't remember if I did. I... I honestly can't remember if I did. Because I've you? seen... I don't know. Um, this this is honestly a tough one for me. I feel like there would be some value in you streaming Sober Rag at this point. <laughs> if you can't so remember your choices, it, so. yeah. Yeah, there might, it might be. Because um, I legitimately can't remember a lot of stuff I did. Um, Mel said he wants to replay it now as well. I'll have to see him. <laughs> oh my god, it's a Soma Renaissance. Summer. I hope so. I hope this is a summer renaissance. Um, if only we were world famous streamers, then, well, then we yeah, could breathe so, I mean, it, new life into it again. You know, I mean, it, it, in terms of like a, I guess a broad statement on this game, I find it pretty profound. Um, I find it like a, a very captivating experience. Um, I it's... think you can get a general list of, like they list all the mockingbirds: Carl, Harry, J, Javid, Lisa, Robin, Vigdis, and others uh and i think they i think they list them in order um da, 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 da. yeah i'm just reading through the wiki a bit here it's not a horror okay. game come on yeah pretty crazy <laughs> i don't know what to do with that i don't know what i meant to Nobody say to that. To do with that it's an insane thing to say let me see there was Javid Goya's Mockingbird at Delta, Simon finds a UH-3, which harbors the brain scan of Javid Goya. It is completely delusional, not directly acknowledging Simon Jarrett's presence and believing that he is merely remote controlling the Universal Helper using the pilot system. That'll be the choice between him and the little oh, the puppy droid. I was about to ask, yeah, because I was just thinking about that one. What what you do? Um, I funnily I enough, I actually the... can't remember that one. That would be one where I would just have to think about it now, which is the... And I appreciate a lot of the arguments for this, because it, it's a tough one. Um, the logic for a lot of people is that is a simplistic AI inside the little puppy droid, so, you know, it's whatever. It's not as important as the human mind that is clearly in the other one. Like, in terms of just valuing sub uh, so valuing consciousness, whatever. But then on the flip side, you could be like, well, that's a reason to destroy the other one, right? That, that you don't want a human mind stuck inside one of those things in, a, like, a delusional <laughs> so, state. So, um, I mean... But then also, there's an angle of, uh, as, as you pointed out, the pragmatic use of the, the robot. The, the, you know, it's like, it actually has helped you open doors. Meanwhile, the other guy's just floating around. Um, so, um... But then there's also the argument that I saw... Where someone said, how do you actually know exactly. that there isn't a person's mind inside the puppy droid? Yeah, you don't, because that's kind of the thing. Even though it was obviously presented as that dichotomy, system. I kind of don't know. And I don't think I could know that the drone that helped me was more simplistic. I don't even know if that's the case. But yeah, the, so the thing that tipped me over the edge was that that droid had helped me. 
So it seemed real bullshit to kill it, <laughs> like, when it, when it had been helping me throughout this adventure. I think I chose to kill the helper droid, um, and I think my reasoning was probably that I was more convinced that the other robot was uh, closer resembling a human consciousness, and it was speaking, and it didn't seem to be in any sort of pain or terror. It seemed and even to be if it was deluded, delusional, though, that's the thing. That's yeah, interesting. even if it was delusional, it seemed to be okay. That's um, what made it tricky, is because, at least on a yeah. surface level, it did seem like the, the I guess you call it the doggo robot, didn't seem like it was as cognizant as the, uh, as the, the other guy, but I'm not even sure that's the case, because the helper robot was, like, actually interacting with the world in a meaningful way, whereas that one was just sort of going back and forth, up and down, left it, like, it wasn't really, it wasn't doing anything. It also, was, and, and another pro problem Soma presents is like, so you're judging it based on its current status, so you don't actually know if it'll increase in any way or decrease in any way. Which, um, like, uh, it's, uh, in terms of, like, consciousness. emergent properties, and you don't I mean, know what it feels. He exactly. sounds content, the one from the, the robot we end up going. Yeah. Going. It's like, is, a, is an experience less meaningful if it isn't representative of understanding its surroundings? I have no idea. Yeah, exactly. It's just, and I mean, I don't. Yeah, so, so I don't a know. Fucking, it's a nightmare. The whole thing is, and the <laughs> idea that this is, we need more horror like this. And unfortunately, people don't interpret it as horror. I don't understand that though. I don't get it. Because something scary didn't jump in front of your face and spook you for the thirty seconds. I mean, time. something did jump out and was scary though. That's in there. <gasps> I don't get it. That's in there as well. well but it, you've also got all this stuff. It's also painful. It's like, Outlast. You know, it's just so <laughs> fucking popular. Our last one of the most popular like, horror games of all time. And like, I, I go into it being like, okay, I'm ready for some scary, scary flames. And it's just people grabbing me and screaming constantly. Yeah, I don't know. That doesn't like, really work. Corner and, whereas this one is confronting, is, confronting fundamental yeah. aspects about existence. Outlast is surprising. It's not scary. It's startling. That's it's what surprising. you're looking for. It's startling. It startles me. With it's, it's surprising. Say, like, on all the time. If I was to argue which one isn't scary, it's, it's like, I might just go with the one that's considered scary by the vast majority, like the 99% of people who played it. Which is like, man, do I start to feel like an alien? I, I, well, yeah, it's like, because what, what do you take away from Outlast? Boy, that sure was spooky. Definitely watch um, out for the spooky the man it, who goes, oh, he yeah. tries to get yeah, you. Yeah, boy. That sure was gross what that guy did when I when I saw it and and then he jumped out at me and, and he grabbed me and I was like oh goodness my instincts work that's good worse uh, you know good to get a check on those every once in a while um, but you, you like, walk away and you're done you exactly. don't take anything with you meanwhile it's it like is summer a is asking compartmentalized you experience what is summer life is so what is it like what detailed complicated and terrifying that it would work as like training for people who have to understand concepts that we're actually gonna have to deal with eventually i mean inevitably yeah <laughs> like it's all leading to the you know the road leading to these sorts of concepts relating to artificial intelligence you don't want to think about it start thinking about it i think it's worthwhile to think about because even even beyond the context of artificial intelligence i think there's plenty to consider here in terms of your perceived experience of life now even even divorced from any technological considerations, I think oh, there's yeah. plenty to be thought about in terms of what exactly is it that you derive value from. Is it, it was, your um, conscious experience? Is it based on whether that conscious experience is real or real to you? Is it based on the stimuli that you receive? Or, again, perceived stimuli? What does that mean when it's only going to be filtered through your sensory experience of it? Um, I mean, I can't see infrared, you know? Like, I can't see, I can't see, like, gamma rays... There's a lot that I can't perceive about existence right now as a human being. There's only so much that I can see. There's only so many ways that I can think. There's only so much that I can do. The uh, debate that me and Rags had with good old V and Sargon like five years ago, something ridiculously I long remember, ago. Yeah. Uh, Sargon held to continuity being the defining factor for basically what is a person. Okay. And... Um, that if you were copied or transferred in even the most like just dis distinctly accurate 100 percent way you would no longer be human because you've lost continuity how do you know that you haven't lost continuity like already well, not to reopen that debate <laughs> i'm just saying that that perspective what, every time you uh, fucking sleep i was about I to know. say when you go to we, sleep we that up. i don't know if you can find that debate still you might be able to if you like so, we were playing left for dead um, okay 
but uh, yeah, the, you know, obviously Soma is the backbone of a lot of my POV of, of all of these subjects at this point. It, like, it basically replaced Blade Runner. Okay, like, so um, this is interesting because to me I feel like it expands on things that I've already thought about, but I guess not filtered and framed in exactly the same way. I feel like this well, is a nice... Isn't that what I just said? Y you said it was like your backbone, which almost made it... Yeah, replaced But it Blade replaced Runner. Blade Runner, which is kind of a... It's kind of interesting because I, I don't even know... I'm not sure what I would say in terms of like the idea that Soma replaces anything. It feels to me like it is... Um, I describe it as another... Another one that sits there, right, on the shelf. If I got a bookshelf that's about fucking consciousness. <laughs> like, not official intelligence. I don't... When... You know? When considering these topics, I don't tend to open up a library in my head. Instead, it's it, it'll be like one piece of media at a time. Um, I see. I can obviously relate to lots of them, but you know, if you ask me to talk about soul mechanics in storytelling, Buffy comes to mind immediately. And it's sure. like, okay, what about um, you know, vampires? It's like again, that's probably going to be Buffy. But there's a couple of ones that might come to mind. It's like werewolves, uh, mm -hmm. underworld, kind of comes to mind first. But there's a couple of them as well. But it's just like, yeah, the question of what does it mean to be human? It's like, oh, it's Soma instantly. Nothing else will be it for uh, those questions that I ask myself constantly. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. I think we'll have to see where, what, uh, I, I mean, I'm going to be thinking about this game for a while, probably. I'm probably going to be yeah. thinking about it all day. I'm going to be thinking about it tomorrow. I'm probably going to be thinking about it for ages. <laughs> I, I, like, I don't know. I'm just, uh... Yeah, I'm just going to be constantly thinking about it. For at least consider, the next little while. Consider a change they could have made. Which, I don't know if it's... I, I like what they did. I'm not saying this would be better or worse. But just consider if they had done it this way. At the very end, Simon and Catherine successfully launch the arc and then the scan happens. You get the flash of white. And then you immediately pick up as new Simon on the arc, right? And that's where the game, the, the natural process of the game takes you. You go through, go to the arc, you take the little survey, you meet Catherine, you see it go off into space, then the credits roll. And then after the credits, it cuts to Simon back in Pathos 2. If they had Writing flipped the uh, ending scenes. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Where you think, um, I, oh, I think sweet, we... Doing both. Yeah, there's, I don't know which one is better or worse. I think both of them, it kind of like one is, do you leave the the happy one? Do you start off with the happy one and you think, oh yeah, we, we got transferred, just like she said. Incredible, this is amazing. Um, and then it's like, oh no, you know how this works. Um, I'm going to go ahead and assume is, that the dev team talked about this for a while. I get the impression that they did. Probably Something did, I yes. wonder I is if they pushed it. I think what would have informed it is that with the player's POV, you've quote unquote won the coin toss every time, and the end of the game is where they have you experience the loss first. Yeah, it and, acts and then as like I, a uh, very hard contrast. I think what's interesting as well, again, is is how that because for me that was definitely informing the decisions I was making uh, for that survey again, having the stark reality of. Uh, because I think the, yes, the main one I pointed out is that I uh, I do kind of mourn the prior ones. Whereas I think before I said that it, I, I don't know what I said. I almost treated it as like a separate thing. It's like, well, that's a, you know, that doesn't really have anything to do with me. Whereas now it's like, damn, man, the Simons well, that so get you here, you know? That's why I find a lot of people's takes like idiotic on this game. When people are like, Simon was a fool and didn't understand, blah, blah, blah. It's like Simon is overjoyed because he believes like he made it through. He He won out. He lucked out. Which, when you really consider everything, he's technically correct, at least in the form of a POV. But the the player is more so like my current PFP, if you know what I mean. Like, while Simon is like, Catherine, like, we did it. This is the art. Woohoo. You're just sitting there like, Jesus Christ. Like, this, yeah. this is horrifying. And that's why um, I always find that I think people struggle sometimes if they don't align with the player character. That, like, the game's fucking up, as opposed to... Simon is one of many characters in this game that has a point of view that you don't necessarily agree with as the player. Of course they're aware of that. Soma's value is obviously in its themes. It's mm. like, basically... I mean, the, it's a difficulty the... when it comes to games where you have the main character be an agent who speaks and thinks things and will express those perspectives. 
is that there's always a possibility of a, a misalignment occurring that doesn't really occur with Mario. Like with Mario, Mario can talk, but you know, th there's never really a misalignment between what you want to do and, and what Mario wants to do compared to like a, a person who's got a perspective on things that may well differ from yours. Yeah, um, and, you know, a lot of people get annoyed with the fact that, like, wow, I already knew the twist. The game did not get me. I knew that I was going to stay on Pathos 2. And it's just like, I don't I don't think that's a twist. I, I, it's not a twist. Catherine, Catherine says, like, explicitly many times, and she's fucking annoyed at you at the end for not getting it, but as you can tell, she goes ham on you at the end because there's nothing to lose. She gives you the real shit at the end, so to speak. Mm-hmm. She's like, you're a fucking idiot. You don't pay attention. You're not listening. And, and 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 the fact that she's so exhausted, if you remember, there's a really important part that I think informs everything about her attitude. She says, uh, her experience isn't like going to sleep. It's like being constantly awake and there's no limits. There's no pausing. There's nothing. It's just constant. And it's exhausting. Yeah. Like humans are not meant for that experience. And that's what she's been having throughout the whole game, except the fact that randomly she'll just teleport to a new place and be told that like X amount of time has passed. Yeah, like she doesn't experience in the same because obviously so as a person tired. who's asleep, when you go to sleep, you don't really experience that, but you do in a in a way, right? You, you there is something going on there yeah. in terms of a, an experience where she's got nothing. It's just like, oh now I'm here, now I'm here, now I'm here. Now I'm here. And then you wake up, yeah. and you're, you wake up where you remember being before you went to sleep. There's lots of aspects to that that are comforting. Yeah, but for her, it just you just flicker to the next place. And there's a couple times in the game where power goes out, and she doesn't even get to, like, know that she's about to switch. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's yeah, I mean, it's interesting to think about, isn't it? There's even a few times where she stresses, don't forget to take me with you. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I think you at one point, uh, bring you like laugh at the notion, you're like, you're my door opener, of course I would. This is like, <laughs> yeah, from her POV, she's that's just a, her, a tool on a table. That's her exactly, that's her, yeah. exactly. She'll just, like, like, yeah, I consider her dead remarkable. Take her with you, yeah, essentially. In terms of her calm, like, approach to everything, and that I think she operated in the best way possible to ensure those people got out there. That was yeah. her only goal. Yeah. But poor old and, Simon, um, you yeah, know. Yeah, I appreciate just... <laughs> her POV as well. She came to terms a long time ago with the fact that uh, she is not, uh, you know, she's not going to be on the arc, but that's okay because she is going to be on the arc. Yeah, exactly. Like she Me... says, they're out there, you know, they're in the, they're at the stars. And then I think Simon's POV is those fuckers living at large on the arc. Yeah, meanwhile, I'm here at the bottom of the ocean. On this dead yeah, planet. Yeah, which is amazing, because then you go and play as Simon, and he's just happy to be there. He's not thinking at all about the grim reality of the other Simons. Yep. Simons, plural. Yeah. Man, uh, one of the things that hits me so heavy about that game is when you find the recordings of Simon Jarrett after the yeah. sort of medications. It's so rough, because it's just like, this was supposed to work, and it's like, it's okay. You're just listening to the original you die. Mm-hmm. So far removed from everything that was happening here. Oh, that was something that was interesting. It was something that was sticking with me for a while, was the, uh, the pamphlet at the beginning of the game that said that, uh, like, essentially the duplicate would be getting bombarded with, uh, like, it would be run through a bunch of simulations, essentially, to try and figure yeah. out the optimal thing. That was making me wonder for the whole time of, like, oh, man... That seems like uh, we got a we got a sneak peek of what that looked like with Brandon. Um, well, so a lot of people, I think even Joseph Anderson said that he thought the Pathos Two was that. Um, that the entire game was the the experience being bombarded with you know stimuli to figure out how to solve the problem of the brain in the physical world. I thought that could that be Pathos a possibility. Pathos Two being overcome with like cancer and tumors is representative of the brain being overcome with it as well. And I was like, well, that's that's an idea but um no what i what i was running with is like that could have been a possibility maybe what we're seeing here is one of the many scenarios that was being run through maybe but i mean it, it operates totally fine as taken as matter of fact which is that this is well, yeah, entirely beyond what you were uh what what any of this was meant to be for the, there's a lot of sci-fi tech in, in, in this particular sci-fi IP, right? And, like, one of them that's a given is that uh, Munchie and his companion or whatever, they, they've created 
something that can recreate human, um, you know, consciousness in the form of a digital copy. That's something you have to take for granted in order for this story to run. Sure. And the, the scary part is they copy it and digitalify it in order to put it through everything. Like you said, it can give you a thousand painkillers and make you run a marathon at the same time just to see, you know, run everything, which is the thing that gives you the healthiest outcome. And then they convert that result back into a physical world aspect, which they said there was a particular diet, particular medication, and that uh, Simon should improve, but he didn't. That's mm -hmm. just the grim reality of it. Just didn't work. But the thing is, you know, when they were doing that, was were those things that they were putting through those tests were they experiencing pain? Did they like had they accidentally, you know, really fucked up here? I mean, maybe. I feel like that Brandon and then, one makes it pretty stark, kind of like, oh, geez. Yeah. Yeah, like, is he real? And it's so nuts, man, because you're thinking about destroying Brandon, deleting him so that no evil can come to him, and it's like, yeah, what evil? The evil that you just did to exactly. him? Exactly. The brain scan that was uploaded in the form of this flashy body, and it's just like, I don't know. Like, you don't want to be deleted, do you? At any point in the game, you don't want to be deleted, so why should you be able to delete any of these people? And it's like, well, what if they ask for it? Yeah, what if they're wrong? What if you're wrong? <laughs> So but I mean, like, what what I does it even know. mean in terms of anybody? There's nobody who can really make that choice because you're deleting a potentiality. You're not deleting, like the data Let's isn't the, the copy. Is... So there's nobody that you can ask because even the the copies themselves can't speak for any future copies, right? Yeah, no. The second that you are separated or copied, it's like you no longer have the responsibility. Like, Which means that, they, that nobody they, has the responsibility. Well, it just means that nobody does, do they? Really? But it, no. does that make sense that the data must exist for perpetuity to potentially be used for whatever purpose, potentially horrifying by something like the WoW or you, <laughs> you know? Yeah, when the WoW is simply trying to make life. In whatever way it thinks it should. Well, that's the thing. We see all of its creatures. They're all of different levels of consciousness, ability, and uh, mm. sort of aggression levels. Yep. Because a lot of the people that we power down, there's no reason to think that a WoW cable won't eventually attach and power them up. Yeah. That's, yeah. You might Limbo notice that in the, um, you might notice in Sarah's room, uh, if you, if you looked at the, the presence of the WoW and the gel, there were tendrils that were making their way towards her yeah. on yes. the floor. Um, but it's just so the WoW given, is given enough time. Pressing they're, in. They're getting there. Yeah. It's pressing it's in on her. Because it's just, when yeah. you look back on that room, it's just like, yeah, this is the last of humanity stuck here at the bottom of an ocean, of the ocean with all of the pressure of the environment closing in, with the WoW closing in, just sitting there on life support. It's like, yeah, I mean, this is pretty, this is pretty metaphorical, um, I'd say, pretty, uh... Yeah, and she's you know? guarding what is essentially the egg for the future, yeah. you know, chapter of humanity. Exactly, which, you know, itself was pretty close to getting consumed by the WoW. But now it's up there in space. And maybe humanity's got a chance, maybe in a totally different form. Yeah, you know, it's, it's yeah. That. slim chance aliens will find us and plug us into their tech and save us. Mm hmm. Which, you know, again, it's not going to be humanity, it's going to be something different. I think you have to accept it. Something different, but the same at the same time makes you think. This whole game makes well, yeah, you it's, think. Uh, it's Simon's appeal to her when she says. He she wants him to kill her, he's like, that's, that's it? You're the last human you go out like this? Shouldn't you, you know, just keep going? Just because of, this, this is, it's so nuts, like, even she has trouble with it. It's like, all of every decision that every human has ever made has led now to this one person in this room. Yep. And all of the history, all of, you know, whatever human potential remains is just sitting there in this machine. Yeah, there's got to be an irony there that she's kept alive by a life support machine. Mm-hmm. It's like yeah. a, a machine we consider good, meanwhile the WoW we at that point consider cancerous and evil. Yeah. That's it's a pretty neat game. Yeah, that's summer, everybody. Um, uh, and uh, as like I've mentioned it before, Soma is the Greek word for body. And Soma is the name of the, uh, the drug, right, in Brave New World? Yeah, I mean, we were talking about it uh, before you jumped in, Rags, that, like, I feel it's very purposeful to have chosen that as the name, being that the body is pretty much the big reason people would separate what is human and what is not. Because the whole point in this game is that the, 
it's pretty much impossible to distinguish the humans from their mental capacity versus their digital versions or mm -hmm. a lot of well, the other you, ones. So it's like, well, a, a human being that's in a that's brain dead. I mean, it's not nearly as difficult to say that that's not a person anymore than it is to say an actual human consciousness that's in a robot is or isn't a human. That's a lot more. Especially when it acts a like a more... human, talks like a human, you know, seems to. Yeah, that's way yeah, more I'm difficult one... for us to distinguish, which is kind of part of the point. Well, and, you can take away every part of you human treat... except their mind. And yeah, still if you treat it as hardware human. and software, which is a very, you know, uh, ill-advised, probably simplistic way to look at it then even brain death could be considered like uh, hardware death as opposed to what is going on with uh, Simon, which is like human software on a... Well, well at first it's... you'd assume entirely uh, mechanical system, but then we find out halfway through the game that he's actually a combination of uh, human flesh and the uh, structure gel. I mean, it helps some of his suits. Influence. Some of his suits, there's a corpse inside of him. Mm. I mean, there's a... Well, so that, and that's the thing. Uh, yeah. For any the girl who was trying to destroy the WoW, she was getting into her power suit, and then the WoW exploded her head. Yeah. Like, she was going to be heading down to Alpha to destroy it. Yeah. Matter. Which, you know, it, this is what I mean. Like, it's, it's, someone could argue, it's like, oh, it's a bit convenient, isn't it? That it's all there, ready to go. It's like, oh, there's a, there's a reason that it was like that. There's a reason you're being compelled to take the gel down there. Mm-hmm. Um... Yeah, so <laughs> that's uh Game's all right. Yeah, that's yeah, Soma. Um that's uh I'm going to be thinking about it for a while. Um it's fun to look into the um the station names and what they mean as well. Their equivalents. Yeah. I did it for my video, but I can't remember them all now. Oh, uh, well, yeah, I mean, I'll be I'll probably be doing that. I'll probably be watching some videos on uh I haven't seen yours stuff on Soma, so <laughs> That's uh there's a lot to think about, a lot to look into, read about. I mean, a lot of it, and in retrospect, is kind of unfortunate, but I don't know, it's kind of necessary. A lot of it is vitriol toward people who didn't like it. <laughs> but they did, obviously they did a lot more than not like it. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's, the, point, the point being that, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's something that I'm going to keep thinking about and sort of developing my perspective on, which is uh, it's really good when I can get that kind of experience. Um, the fact that I was stuck on some of those choices for a while, you know, um, I, like, I've said it so many times, but I guess it just bears repeating, I found this a very captivating game. Um, mm -hmm. it's gripping and, uh, thought-provoking. It's really well made, <laughs> and I really, really, I don't know if enjoyed is the word that I would want to use to describe it. I, uh, was very engaged by it. Uh, uh, well, what it, did you choose for um, whether or not you killed uh, old Simon uh, when you were swapping suits? Uh, I decided so to, to. I decided to uh, delete that. Uh, yeah, I decided to erase uh, old Simon. Okay. I, I, yeah, I don't know. You I do rags. I did not kill him. Okay, interesting. To me, it just seemed like why is in here. Or we know what's going on. <laughs> so, oh well, um, there's, yeah, go there's for a it. couple reasons that I was uh, the, that I think about it is if I am a copy of if if I copy my consciousness into another suit in order to go deeper, right? Am I going to have to do that again? If I have to do this again, knowing that I killed the last one that I did this to, that would make me extremely hesitant to upload my consciousness once more into something else, knowing that the last time I did this, my new version is going to kill the current me doing this thinking. Secondly, um, you can... Um, I think there's this, this element of, I was just... Qu this is quote-unquote, lots of quotes here. I was just that person, and I wouldn't have wanted to die. Uh, if I want to kill myself later, I can do that. But that is a line that you can't step back from. Whereas, eventually, uh, I think there was a time when he would wake up or repower up, something like that. Um, which means yeah. that I think, as far as I know, that right now, like in the game, there will be another Simon that 
the an old Simon that you played as previously will wake up from that, um, and he'll be at least in that station, and he can do what he wants to do with his life and what, what's happening. Right? I I don't think I don't think it would be as right of me to rob my old version of that choice that they can make for themselves, um, and it would be duress either way. So such as uh, such as the nature of the decision. Um, but I think those two reasons in particular were like, yeah, I'm going to let him live. And what he does is what he does. At least I'll have a chance to do it for himself. What? Why, would, why did you decide what you decided, Frank? My thinking was, I don't even understand what it would mean to leave him in a position where, like, he has no equipment. He can't, he, like, he can't do anything. He's stuck in this room, presumably just to wait until the WoW comes in, and in the meantime, to consider exactly what has just happened, which is, as far as he's concerned, a massive betrayal, totally not what he wanted. Um, and then I was thinking about, like, the whole idea of, um, the sort of, like, a matter of perception in terms of, like, continuity of consciousness and stuff like that. Um, I don't know, it seemed like, I, I, I definitely thought about all of those things of, like, him essentially getting the choice, but it just seems to me like insanely cruel, essentially leading to what would probably in all likelihood be the exact same outcome anyway, or maybe even not because he might have been absorbed by the wow. Like, I don't even know if I don't even know if he has the means to like end his own life as a uh, as a machine in that space. Like, I'm not sure what that looks like or what that means. So that was all kind of the stuff that was informing it. But again, it's like all of the again, there was still definitely that whole looming thing of yeah, but is this is this like Simon 2's choice to make for Simon 1. Um, it's again, it's just a matter of all of these choices. It's not, it's not easy. It's like two really difficult, you know, propositions and then trying to figure out which one you think is, I don't know, the lesser of two evils, but what exactly does that mean in this situation, you know? Because it's kind of like, depends on where your values, it depends on what you think are like the higher values, I guess. Oh yeah, it tests the hell out of him. Yeah. I worry in that situation that uh I think I might if if he was awake and he knew about all of this, being I'm saying this if it's not me or is me, but you know, if I said just leave me, um since I, like say for example he was awake, which Catherine could theoretically have woken him up early, I don't know. But if he was, um and he said, Yeah, don't shut me down, just go. I know I can't go with you because it's the abyss. Um, and even if under these circumstances he knew that the doors were all going to be locked as well, so he just couldn't escape this room, even if then that he agreed to it, I'd still want to compel him. I'd be like, we have our chance now to end you very peacefully, as opposed to what may happen in the future, which is something much more horrifying, and that you'd have to wait indefinitely for it, which boredom is considered one of the forms of torture as well like i don't know you just you got to really consider here this is your last opportunity and that knowing it is me means that i would be thinking about it as well as in like i can die quickly and easily here thanks to me turning me off or i can take a risk where all likelihood points to immense suffering i don't even see much of a likelihood at all for anything other than that mm. um even with the the WoW killed at the end of the game, I don't know that he... Well, what's going to happen to him? He's going to eventually run out of power regardless, as far as I'm aware. They all have after a, a long life. time stuck at the bottom of the ocean. So, yeah, yeah I don't know. I, I, I just feel like if I turn him off now, he doesn't even have to suffer knowing of the betrayal. Well, it's kind of, again, so I was thinking of the Star Trek thing, right, of getting beamed up, where it's like the if it kills the original and creates the copy... It's kind of like the same situation has happened here, essentially. He has no perception of what's happened. But, you know, yeah, <laughs> such is Soma, the, right? There's no easy choices. A, exactly. It's so incredibly complex and uh, makes you think about all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Which uh, I will continue to be doing over the coming days, weeks, and months. Or, you know, I, yeah, this is, uh, this is one that's going to stick with the memory. Uh, stick in the mind. Um, and, yeah, I hope you guys found it interesting to, uh, to watch. I mean, you were watching it more. What did you think of it all? Oh, it's as, uh, entertaining as I often find a good engaged with Soma playthrough. It's, um, watching people gradually realize everything and struggle with the choices. It's, uh, mm. 
It's what the best of Let's Plays is supposed to do. I don't need to see you going blah, 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 every five no. seconds yeah. watching, uh, yeah. you know, playing. Is he loud. gonna? Is he gonna go ah when the thing jumps out at him? Oh, he did, <laughs> as if he had a. Well, yeah. Well, the funny thing is, you did freak out a couple times because it turns out it it's turns a out game. the game is pretty scary oh at times with these monsters and things. Oh, and, the, and yeah, even even beyond all of that, right? We talked about it briefly, but the art direction is amazing. The sound design is fantastic. I need to listen it to the is... musics for this game. <laughs> it's Ironically, really good. what I would probably say are the two at most atmospheric games I've played are games that take place in the bottom of the ocean. Is, well, is the other one Subnautica? Yeah. Uh, or, or, no, or Bioshock. I've, I've heard a Bioshock. lot of... Bioshock, yeah. But I get, well, I've heard a lot of things about Subnautica and how it can be, like, very terrifying and super yeah. atmospheric. That's what yeah. Oh, yeah, but Bioshock, um, yeah. <laughs> but Bioshock is uh, big... Big high tier top when everyone Bioshock needs to play Soma, I'm happy to see prequel uh TV shows from HBO go. Mm. Let's do it. Maybe one day. <laughs> well, Bioshock is getting something. Oh yeah, that's Soma right. Yeah. Soma's just nobody cares about Soma, which is really unfortunate, but whatever, that's the world we're in. No, well I care the about the little Soma. mini series uh live action stuff they did on youtube is definitely worth watching it's uh yeah it's, it's cool. really cool okay is what interesting called. well you know even if nobody else cares about soma i care about soma right that was a that was a really riveting experience and thank you all for joining me on this adventure um it's been interesting and it's made me think and it's gonna keep making me think and i hope you all found it <laughs> worthwhile um so yeah, that'll uh that'll round it up uh for this here playthrough. That's yeah, that's <laughs> I mean what more is there? That's Soma. And uh yeah. <laughs> yep, that's Soma. Wow, what a great conversation. How interesting. Wow, that show yeah. was good. I really enjoyed having that chat. How enthralling. And the thing yeah, is that's right. It's not even over. That's like conversation one of ten thousand that we'll have over time about Soma referencing well, yeah, Soma. Yeah, will be referenced a lot. It's, uh, it's gonna get talked about. <laughs> Yeah. After all these years. Beautiful. Now, the other thing that we were going to do, because it feels it just feels about right, is to take a trip down memory lane to go back to a, a video that, well, when it was released, I haven't caused, seen it. well, yeah, I mean, for me, certainly, for Rag somewhat, and then for you, not at all. That's why it's an interesting right. dynamic, eh? It's, uh, you oh. know, when Soma first came out, I adored it. Thought it was incredible, one of my favorite streaming experiences of all time. And then I was like, wow, what does everyone think? And I remember checking the Steam reviews and being like, oh, what's going on? I even remember people saying, like, the gameplay sucked. And I was just like, gameplay? But it's like Is The there... Dark Descent. I mean... <laughs> it's basically a carbon copy of The Dark Descent, and you love that. It's like, what, yeah, it's mainly, well, the, the phrase walking simulator kept coming up, and I was like, what the? I mean, somewhat but like that's the format that would be suitable for the and then it's like wait a minute how much do people even like sort of get what soma was trying to do versus it being a you know a sequel to the dark descent which is totally not what it is at all you can tell by the name and the setting <laughs> and the characters yeah but I mean, not, everything can, not by it. the development yeah, company I though <gasps> I can appreciate looking at a game that is, you know, a different name and seemingly going for a different thing and going, well, you know, spiritual successor. But, yeah, uh, it I happens. Guess in this case, as someone who hasn't played Hemnes of the Dark Descent, how similar are these well, games? To, maybe they set themselves up for failure there because they made the Penumbra games and the Dark Descent really is a refined Penumbra. Um, uh, well, sure, but I mean, I guess would people feel the same way about something like Bloodborne or Sekiro? Maybe they do. Maybe they do, that's right. I mean, yeah. in a way. <laughs> there's, there's things that are in those games that I kind of wish would be put into the next Dark Souls, you know? Like, it's... Yeah, right. There's further connections there that can please fans and stuff. But yes, yeah, Soma was just... It was a disappointment to a lot of people. And I was like, what? How did this happen? And it's weird because I think you probably even say, Fringy, that its reputation is very high, but not many people have a, an opinion on it. Of the people who yeah, do, it's very high. People who have an opinion of Soma love it, uh, but not as many people are as interested in it as, like, Amnesia of the Dark Descent. Yeah. Um, and so, back then, different set of people I was hanging out and uh, with, and, and we were sometimes checking out videos, and I remember there was a time we were like, what is this? It was popular, 
review of Soma Breakdown by one of the bigger gaming channels, a guy called Joseph Anderson. I was like, oh my good gosh, let's check this out. And uh, I almost, I mean, anyone who's seen my series, you know how I felt about it. I was not happy, um, and I also find it really frustrating because I feel like it damaged Soma significantly. Um, with the fledgling reputation it had, the the way that Frictional benefited in the past is through online content creators, and so having the biggest intellectual breakdown of the game being like, eh, um, you know, you get plenty of people saying like, ah, I will avoid this one, when you could have done the opposite. Now, mm. it is fair to not like Soma, and it's fair to distance yourself from it if you think it's of low quality, depending on what your references may or may not be. You gotta be careful, because, you know, having a casual chat about it, or a stream, or... Um, even like a Steam review is, is one thing, but like having the quintessentially looked at video review where you do a full breakdown. The first thing, because this is the thing, I haven't seen this video in genuinely like six years, so this is going to be weird. But um, one of the things to consider, I would say, is that I assume you guys would agree. If you're going to review Soma, you should probably play it twice. Uh, I think it's... I think it's worthwhile to play something twice before it doesn't it doesn't Joseph Anderson do that though typically isn't isn't that something that he does play games multiple times um I don't necessarily know I don't for know sure uh, I can't remember I I feel like I'm he's a thorough lad though that. Yeah. he like 100 percented uh, like Zelda Mario games right when he reviews them uh, I, think. I guess yeah that's right he got every single uh he got every single moon in uh Odyssey which yeah. you know, would have taken a while but but I guess the yeah the point being that you at least twice for a movie for a television show for a game because watching something the first time around or playing it the first time around and absorbing everything as it comes versus knowing all of that information and then sort of you know seeing how it all plays out with an awareness of where it's leading it's just it can provide new insight but then, of course, I suppose the counter would be like, well, no, I can give a review of anything from any amount of experience I have with it, surely. And it's like, I guess so. You can, but do you want to be more correct or less correct? That's kind of... You, you stand to be more correct by playing something twice rather than just once. It's almost yeah, like... If you um, are a video game reviewer, and that's like what you are, right? It feels like playing it twice, especially if it's a heavily narrative and details-focused game... Probably important. There's probably some games you don't need to play through twice, sure. Some are, some are very simple. By the time you've done it once, you know, you've really gotten the, the breadth of everything. But a lot of games are really complex, and they got a lot of stuff going on, not just in terms of the narrative, but, you know, mechanics and builds and places to go and things to do. So it's not, like, really... It shouldn't be anything, like, different from what he normally does. Well, uh, in any case, I guess the it's like the difference when you're running careers like this of uh, widespread coverage of lots of things quickly or more refined coverage of individual things that you want to deep dive into. And as far as I was aware, he was definitely the latter of those two. Um, but we shall see, I suppose, with a critique of Soma. You guys ready to jump in to whatever oh, may boy. be contained with it? This is genuinely going to be nostalgic for me. It's going to be so weird. Okay. Right. Exciting, yeah, I guess. I'm all set. Oh, 43 minutes, jeez. Well, yeah, this is a short video for him. called Pathos 2. Hey. Here we go. Soma, like many games, can be split into two parts. There's gameplay and there's story. The vast majority of games can be segmented like this. What makes Soma exceptional is which part it executes well. I can't remember how many times I've said to myself, well, the story is terrible, but there's some good gameplay here. Soma is the opposite. The story here is quite literally outstanding, elevated far from the usual stuff you see in video games, but the gameplay side is a total failure. A total failure. A total failure. Uh... <laughs> but here's the thing, it's, but surely he must, he, he has to have said this then about The Dark Descent. I don't There's know, no I don't way know that you, if we'll get his oh, sorry, on so, And if he's consistently it's wrong, he... it's something. I, I didn't want to, because this video is long, I don't want to, but like, you can divide most games into gameplay and story. Already I'm like, man. I was like gonna a... pause on that, yeah. I was like, 
divided into gameplay all, and story. Most Oof. games can be divided into gameplay and story. A lot of games have like no context for what's happening. A lot of games are just mechanics, you know? What is the context for Tetris, for instance? Um, what is the context for a lot of puzzle games? But I mean, you know, even even putting that to one side, you can divide something into gameplay and story. It's like, yeah, but I mean, they kind of like they blur together. It's kind of a blurry line in a lot of video games, you know, uh, the narrative and the story. You know, choices in gameplay, for instance, and how they affect story. I mean, that's partially gameplay, right? Or uh, potential. Well, it's, it's curious because it's like, what, where does lighting come in? It's like story. Like, okay. Oh, yeah, like, what, what exactly? Level design, I mean, because goddamn, you can have conversations about level design, uh, and, and in terms of the layout, but also the kind of information that's being relayed to a player about this place, and what's happened in this place. Um, More yeah, like, pacing, I mean, is that story, or? Yeah, like, I, I don't know, I wouldn't have led with that <laughs> as an observation, because I, well, because... like, I feel like we can talk about that for hours. He wants to do the thing of being like, yeah, Soma's got a great story, but shitty gameplay, or failure, such an interesting thing, because that's the, um, the last word I would failure. describe it with, because I'd be like, yeah, it might be thin, or it might be not exciting, but it's not a failure, it's a, it's a complete success, well, it achieves everything it needs to and wants to. That's a complicated one as well. What does it mean when it fails? Is it that it fails to be what it was trying to be? Or can a game succeed at what it's trying to be, but what it's trying to be was misguided? Or tell me what it's missing. What did Soma's well, gameplay uh, well, need well, that it I did guess not we're going to get there, right? I this guess is, so. It's just yeah. his opening statement. But it's a frustrating one because we already feel, I imagine, between the three of us, it's going to be very difficult to justify. <laughs> um, yeah, but let's see. For me, that's okay. I can play some games for the story, as long as that story is good. And just because the gameplay is, in my opinion, a waste of time, doesn't mean that Soma fails waste to use time. interactivity in any meaningful way. Well, so that, isn't that an interesting then thing to say Then it's not a total already? failure. Even though I think it's a waste of time, it uses its interactivity in, like, clever, interesting, novel ways. Like, it's like, Joseph, we're less than a minute in and you're contradicting Yeah, I would, I would say that's well, a major contradiction. Is... This is pretty fucking rough, my dude, for a professional video game reviewer. How do you get a minute in and you're already contradicting yourself? At this point, you have oh, to no. do as best faith possible and say that he's now divided up gameplay into the failure part and the sometimes okay part. And the failure part is when you're running away from monsters, At which judging point, from his visuals. I would have said, don't, don't lead with the statement that you could divide most games into gameplay and story then. Just, like, skip past that entirely and yeah, just talk about confusing, the things that but... work and didn't work. Um, I mean, we'll probably go over this the more time goes on, but, like, uh, we've said before that Soma needs to be a first-person game, and it needs to have you pressing buttons and looking at screens and shit, and it may sound, like, tedious, like, why am I having, like, wouldn't it be better if I just saw all this happening? It's like, no, you need to be making these choices, and you need to, to feel what it's like to be, like, Simon moving through this world with that POV. You rarely have to acknowledge that you're a robot. Instead, you're just yes, a guy you need trying to, to see survive. This in his... Yeah, you need to contextualize this in the way that he would. Very important that not only it's this POV, but also these mechanics. Um, and it seems like he has a vague handle on that, but then he also says it's a failure, so it's like... Eh. Only moments that are made more poignant because it's being told in a video game that simply wouldn't have the same effect in a movie or a book. Okay. I'm not saying we should go dig up Roger Ebert so he can play Soma, but this is one of the strongest stories I've seen in a game. Soma is a science fiction horror game that is not nearly as scary as it may first appear. Uh. If you're easily startled and doesn't like that kind of experience, then you still make... I, see, that's the, that's the opposite of the truth. It's Yeah, that is the opposite. It gets scarier the more you think about the it. The more you it's understand more like what's happening, the scarier it is. Because when you arrive and it's like this sci-fi facility that's all dark and there's like wires sparking and stuff, it's like, oh, this is like your sort of casual it's horror. Creepy. You know, it was like, oh yeah, my god, look at this, setting. oh, yeah. this is spooky, yeah. And then when when you get the lights on, and you're in relative safety, and you're talking to people, you'd be like, oh, see, it's not very scary. And I was like, well, no, because now you're realizing the state of everyone here, how they got here, what they are, and what, what's going to happen to you, and all this stuff. And it's like, oh god, no, your brain starts to get, like, fucking overwhelmed with horrors. But it's so weird, because he just said, yeah, like, it's not as scary as it at first appears to be. It's like, oh. That's bizarre. The more you go on, the scarier it gets. I don't know. Maybe his brain didn't engage with it. I'm not sure. Well, uh, it was it was like over five years ago, but we covered his uh, what is it called? Something is implied. Subjectivity is implied, isn't it? Whereas the videos. Something like that. 
the, the point of his video is that every statement made in his videos is supposed to be subjective, not objective. Even though he, like everyone else, draws distinctive language to define when he's talking about something being there and confirmable versus something he felt. Because that's what everyone does. And of course, you will blend those at times. Everyone does. I don't. I, I completely understand that. It's just sometimes you make mistakes We. you... Uh, and something is a th for example this game isn't scary it's not a horror game that is a you haven't even gotten there <laughs> I mean, it's a that's... game just don't, don't even just, it's a game it is a game objectively it, it's not a subjective statement that soma is a game it -uh, is a game because you're a human rags and i would and i would never i would never cripple myself to such a degree by saying that everything i say is implied to be subjective maybe i'm misremembering and he only meant like certain statements or whatever but yeah i just i remember that being the thrust I of it because so he got in some level of pushback for a lot of his, like, more brash statements. But, I mean, he went into how, you know, like, horror doesn't scare him at all anyway, which is the kind of context you really need if you're going to be... Also, I don't believe him. I don't even know what to make of it, because it, it, he brought up Hill House, funnily enough. That's, that's around the time he was making the video where that came out, and how, um, I think TV shows and movies and stuff uh, aren't as scary on any future playthroughs or whatever, or watch-throughs, because you know what's going to happen to them. I, I can't remember the specifics of it, but it was very strange. ...scary as it may first appear. If you're easily startled and don't like that kind of experience, you still may want to avoid it, but the story in this game is worth your time if you play games for that reason. And that's the end of my spoiler warning. The beginning of Soma proves how important expectations and tone are when you experience anything. Virtually anyone who plays this game will find out beforehand. That that already is pretty bizarre because if you're coming off of the Dark Descent, I, what gameplay are you expecting from Frictional? Um, because as I've said, Soma's gameplay is basically the Dark Descent's gameplay. Yeah. Um, so I don't. I, I legitimately don't know what, how he could. Pop. Again, maybe he said in his Dark Descent review, if he reviewed it, that the gameplay is a total failure. And if he is, at least he's horrifically consistent. <laughs> yeah. But uh, okay. The beginning of Soma proves how important expectations and tone are when you experience anything. Virtually anyone who plays this game will find out beforehand that it's meant to be scary, a horror experience. So after the game gets through its introduction and you wake up in the main character's apartment, you are going to be immediately on edge. You might even ask, what's wrong with this picture? Why does the apartment seem so ominous even though it's normal? Um, I, I is mean, what ominous? is going on here? What, so, what so, exactly? I mean, if, if we couch it behind the safe words of you might feel like, and it, the, the, I, I guess you could ask it might feel like the apartment's ominous. Sure. I don't know. It but... feels like he's ramping up to a critique here, though, in terms of like that this is an expectation that was set up, uh, but it's not the case. There's nothing scary, you know, there's nothing overtly scary about this apartment. Well, then you just have to highlight, like, so what about the person who plays this and is like, okay, I'm in an apartment. I wonder what, 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 like, what well, can I draw yeah, from exactly. this apartment? Not, hmm. not everybody's expectations are like, it's, it's kind of hilarious, right? It's like everybody enters into things with expectations and that can color your experience. It's like, sure. But everybody's expectations are going to be different, even if they hear the same thing, depending on the horror stories that they've consumed, or just, you know, depending on their temperament. And I just, so I'm not quite sure. I always come back to, like, why can't we just take it for what it is? Why do we have to start judging it based mm -hmm. on, it's like, well, it is frictional. Oh, this is a game after the Doctor Sent. Oh, it is. Uh, and also, know. these are all of the biases that I'm bringing into it. Yeah. Think mm -hmm. of the people who play this knowing nothing about it. What about them? Is it good for them? Oh, well, we'll wait until he gets, because you're right. You're like, why is he setting this it's, harsh groundwork? Is, well, like, is he going to be doing it's something It's a horror game. It's a horror game. That means this apartment a, is ominous. He's ramping up to a criticism. I, my guess would be that he's ramping up to a criticism that, like, these expectations that were built up, that were the fault of Soma for existing, were lot not satisfied. Hmm. This may seem like a minor observation, that if you know what genre, a movie, or a game is ahead of time, that you'll immediately start to anticipate certain things. But it's important to know for later when we get to how the game starts trying to scare you. But that's well after this introduction, because there is nothing lurking in this apartment, or the subway ride that follows it, or the eerily empty office that you arrive at. Yeah, it's like the real world. Yeah, and I, I've always mm. assumed that's that they do that on the, for the purpose of showing you Simon has a very normal life, normal apartment, yeah, it's, normal it's, uh, travel. He, to really emphasize the fish out of water aspects of uh, the story going forward. Hello? Dr. Munchie? 
Let's rewind for a minute though. Soma is a game about a handful of things, but at the center of it all is a man named Simon. He was recently in a car accident that resulted in one of his friends being killed, and left him with a terminal brain injury. This is told in a sort of awkward way at the beginning, at first with a nightmare sequence, and then with some forced dialogue after Simon wakes up. The first few minutes forced of this dialogue? game are the weakest part of the story. The voice acting is also less Wait, than what? stellar here too. So this is forced dialogue and the voice acting's bad, is what he just said for the call that's about he's okay. about to play. But I would also say, like, awkward dream sequence. It's just like, how is a dream supposed to look? <laughs> None of my, well, my dream, my dreams are never awkward or strange. I or, this like, like, like what a surely you have to give a bit more meat on the bone for that criticism. You can't just say like the dream wasn't the way I think dreams well, yeah, should is be. That, is that is that all we're getting for it? He just throws out, yeah, no, the dream sequence is awkward. Dream was anyway, awkward, and on. then the exposition afterward is uh, forced, and the voice acting is bad. It's like, yeah, okay, well, right. let's see the voice acting then. Two, I have a criticism now. Yeah. I think that the base of that lamp is way too small, and that thing probably tips over <laughs> quite a lot. I think that's right. pretty small. Simon, <laughs> you need to get yourself a better lamp. I know you accidentally knock it over all the time. And don't use your so. brain injury as an excuse to be like, oh, I can't yeah. take care of You can operate anymore. a phone and pay your taxes, yeah. so you can buy a lamp that doesn't fall over all the time. And I'm pointing that out is so I can commend how much better it gets as the game progresses. Munchie, we spoke earlier. The brain scan. I remember. Are you all right? Yeah, yeah, just a bad dream. Are, are we still on for today? The events. What's that, wrong I mean, with that's that? Pretty normal. That's, that's pretty normal. That's pretty normal. So like, as it's, well, it's, he has variables that would uh, protect against a lot of what could be perceived as bad acting, being that he just woke up and he was just shaken by a very horrible nightmare. Um, mm -hmm. So you can, you'd have some allowance from sounding a bit strange, which is what I think Munchie picks up on. He's just like, are you all right? And he's like, yep, yep, I'm fine. So, no, I got, I got nothing for you there, that's a bit weird, but alright. ...here are about Simon going to visit a doctor in training that is developing an experimental procedure that could resolve the damage left by the car crash. It's a chronic bleeding problem in Simon's brain. The doctor thinks he can use a scanning machine to identify the issue in Simon, and then run him through a rapid series of stimuli. Basically, putting a simulated version of Simon's brain through a massive amount of different treatments until one works which can then be used on the real Simon once the simulation confirms that it's effective. You can see in this conversation that the game is still awkward here. This exchange didn't feel natural, especially given the earlier phone call and that Simon should really know all of this already. Ultimately, it doesn't really matter though. Uh, part of the reason why he may not is because of the fact it's very slapdash. This is like a mm. startup. They're trying technology that's untested. They don't actually know this is all going to work. This is all experimental. Isn't Simon their like, core legacy scan he's like the first major one yeah he was the first one I so think. yeah that's why a lot of this is being introduced and understood as it goes because even munchie doesn't fully understand the work he's making we're going to do a scan of your brain then we build a computer model of it and bombard it with stimuli what I want to say about this part is more about me personally, because it was really surreal at first. This game starts out in Toronto, that's where I live. The doctor here is a student at York, which is where I went to university. Okay. I also have a problem with regular nightmares like Simon appears to suffer from, and my mom died of a brain aneurysm, and I've had several scans to make sure I didn't have the same problem. So even though this was a coincidence, I felt like the game was screwing with me on a second level in addition to the usual bracing for jump scares, because I knew it was a horror game. This isn't important for the review, of course, I just thought it was funny enough to mention because the game got to me a little more than I think it would have otherwise. You know I have a serious condition, right? You heard about the car crash, the X months to live deal? Soma abruptly changes at this point, and arguably this is where the game properly starts. The brain scan commences, and when it's over, you're no longer in the doctor's office. You're in some foreign industrial looking room. It's dark, you're alone, you nor Simon have any clue about what's going on. This first area gives you a lot of hints about where you've been apparently teleported to. There's some technology that is clearly advanced despite its bulkiness. The corridors are reinforced, imposing, and abandoned. I mean, I, I guess I just listened to his accurate descriptions of it, yeah. Um, yeah, just sort of... Mostly set up in his little it, anecdote. Yeah. Yeah, Pretty setting really stuff up, yeah. You know, and carry on. Parts of it are locked away. There are some robots, one of which promptly goes crazy and runs away shortly after you leave it alone. Your vision isn't functioning as it used to, as you can see here, and you're able to access memories from some places around the area, like you're hallucinating some sort of ghostly echo of the people that were here before you. Oh, 
It's working better than expected. They're having a really hard time getting the doors open. If you're like me, you'll immediately guess that this is the stimuli that the doctor was talking about. It's pretty obvious that this is the test he's running. Somehow it's resulted in this weird futuristic base that is a representation of Simon's brain. The locked passages around you are blocked pathways that need to be opened in his head. Something called structure gel that appears like black blood that the robots leave behind represents the bleeding that keeps happening in his brain. The corrupted vision and the broken memories you can access are glitches, twisted versions of his own memories and the friends Simon has, along with the simulation threatening to distort or crash if he becomes too stressed out. The game will be about opening all of these pathways and then defeating whatever personification that the simulation creates to serve as an adversary for the bleeding in his brain, likely linked to the friend that was killed in the car crash at the start since he's brimming with guilt about it. Ashley, what are you doing here? And if you guessed all that, you are completely wrong, just like I was. I don't feel bad about this, and neither should you, because I um, think it was deliberate. I mean, there are two what, how, that... how, long, how long are we to believe that he thought that was the case? I, I'm, because I'm, I'm listening to him say all this, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, like, pausing and thinking, like, in what way would... Why would you just not take information as it's given to you without well, so trying it's to kind jump of interesting. to this and jump to that? <laughs> like... I definitely had in the back of my mind during my playthrough thinking about essentially what the treatment was, but I think that what you're meant to make of that, especially with the Brandon section, is like that's kind of what that treatment would have looked like. Um potentially, right, for the for the scan of Simon and all of the copies that would have been run through simulations. But running with the the conclusion like that it wasn't what was being presented at face value, which is that you are you know, like, you're like a duplicate recreation of Simon in the future, in this place, that all of these things are actually happening. Am I, did he believe that for, like, the whole game? That that was actually the case, and it was only at the end that he realized that he got it completely, like, that that wasn't the case at all? Maybe it's just a matter discover... of, he was so sure of his interpretation, he blocked out all the other potentials. But, like... they tell you what's happening throughout the game, they're, I mean, it's actually... Like, you don't... Well, like, meeting like, Catherine. You don't have well, well, it's just, there's a, there's well, yeah. a story that's that... playing out there at face value that just follows. Like, you know what I mean? Are you, so you're sort of suggesting, like, it just feels weird that he would have been able to maintain this POV despite all the information that would have... All the facts to the opposite, at some, yeah. at some point, I figure that you would switch away from thinking so much about that to just taking the story at face value for what it is. It's like, you know, oh, it's, this it seems is this... like it... It seems like this interpretation loomed over his entire experience, which is kind of interesting, because for me it was just the thing that was in the back of my mind of like, man, I remember like at the beginning when I was reading that, um, that like newspaper article that was talking about it, like that was really interesting. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to make of this as an observation. Well, I wonder if it would have made you... Like go with a hunch or sticking with it? Even d despite all the contrary well, elements, the story and the characters in it present to you? At, at the end, that he doesn't like, what, can we rewind like 10 seconds, what, what he said right after he relayed this? ...adversary for the bleeding in his brain, likely linked to the friend that was killed in the car crash at the start, since he's brimming with guilt about it. Ashley, what are you doing here? And if you guessed all that, you are completely wrong, just like I was. I don't feel bad about this, and neither should you, because I think it was deliberate. There are two reasons why the narrative gives so much attention to Simon's life in Toronto at the beginning, and this is one- Oh, and also, that flashback he has about, uh, the girlfriend, that- that- or it's not really a flashback. But, by the time you get there, like, he should have been completely disillusioned about his Yeah, you're well through with Theta at that way point. Way before the- yeah, like, this is one of the- You've had it explained to you at that point that you've- Yeah. What you, you are and how you're there, yeah. Yeah, you know your goal of launching the Ark. Uh, you, so you kind of got basically the grasp of the story. I think someone was going to say you could... was that I wonder yeah. if because of the fact that he was on that sort of mode, that any piece of information he would either ignore unless it fit with what he was thinking and didn't like sort of interpret it for what it was, which is kind of ironic because like you know if you just if you'd just done that, you might have been able to take the game for what it was simpler and easier than running with like a metaphor or a, an allegory or like an in-universe uh, simulation that's supposed to represent things and he's, got, he's trying to like crack the ending to a game that doesn't even exist, you know? Maybe. Um, it's just so weird. Normally, if I play a game and I'm getting 
you know, I, I see the setting and I'm getting some little storytelling elements and world building elements from what I see and what's around me. Yeah, in my head, just naturally and subconsciously, there, there's sort of like my brain tries to think about why things are the way they are. But it's just hunches and guesses. When I actually get all the information about what's really going on here, then I'm like, well, I was wrong about that or I was right about that. I guess the thing is that him getting the information that is the actual plot of the game doesn't necessarily preclude one from continuing to believe. Yeah, but I mean, who knows how elaborate this, you know, this simulation could end up being. And I guess all it's just like, yeah, I mean, I guess, but there's a story that's playing out here that at face value has all of these elements to it that... I don't know, I find it strange, but it's, it, it sounded like you were saying there, well, you know, I think it was deliberate, like, I think that this is a consequence of a deliberate choice they made of starting off the game in the modern day before he gets to, um, Pathos 2, which is going to be interesting, because to me, I feel like there's a pretty clear and obvious reason why you start here, it's that this is how you want, like, this establishes the fish out of water dynamic. Yeah, this is Simon Simon's, like, baseline... Guy. Yeah. experience and what his original version and certainly yeah. believes that you know he is fully and totally um without this section here yeah it, i think the game would lose a lot of context without having the the real world i mean this yeah, is this why you know particularly important in terms of the continuing duplication of simon having this be here you need yeah, this you're getting further and further away from the original i mean there's i mean there's a reason we spend 45 minutes in the shire before we kick things off it's a, a an eternal sort of baseline for how the world is and what we need to try and get back to and save and in the same way well, yeah you, you saw with normal life yeah but what what does he think the reasons are let's see one of them along with opening with a nightmare it's misdirection, and I think it's great. It also gives you a reason to accept why you're it's, suddenly in a vastly different. It's not uh, misdirection. I would I would rather call it mystery thing. than misdirection in terms of the opening. But the thing is, I, I talked about it in my video. I remember is that you, if you just read everything that's on the screens in the first room, you can crack everything that's happening to you, which um, is cool. It's really cool. The the mystery is gradually revealed across the game very explicitly, such as like, oh, I'm not a human. I am a robot. You will get that, like, an hour and a half into the game, but obviously you could figure that instantly. You could have been... I think there's people who played this game who were like, he scanned my brain and now I'm here. Is this... Has my brain been uploaded to something? Think, you know, it was, um... It was, uh... Oh, damn. Uh, the first guy that call, right? Um, when yeah, Carl yeah. says, like, what are you talking about? I got, I got my human hands here. Like, at that point, that's something that should click, because you've seen Simon's human hands up to that point. Yeah. And the fact that this guy is acting like a human, you know, at that point you'd be like, hmm. hmm. But if, um, I don't know, if okay. the if you told the direct developers, like, I like how you misdirected me into thinking this was all a simulation, I feel like they'd be like, well, you, uh, you could assume that. You could assume a lot of things. I don't know that we... I don't know that they would say like they were hoping you'd think it was a simulation we as a misdirection. The majority of, yeah, I don't, I don't imagine that they were like, man, you know, mission accomplished when the majority of people believe that this is a simulation. I don't know about yeah, that. Yeah, I think, I, never... I think they just they want you to feel dropped into a horror sci-fi scenario, and that uh, you know, gradually you get to understand it, which removes some yeah. of the more, so to speak, terror aspects, but then introduces a whole lot of more existential horror aspects. Mm-hmm. I mean, is it less scary if it's a simulation or a hallucination? I mean, don't I, well, I certainly no. think it's <laughs> in terms of the way the that thing, Soma, so... in terms of what Soma has to say, you know, no, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be any less scary like, if it was a simulation. The fact that, that it's real it certainly real. seems scarier to me. Place because otherwise, really, how the hell did you get here after just being in a doctor's office? The information yes. you're finding. You don't know, so you can withhold that's judgment. Right. Mm. Yeah, you don't. You don't actually have to decide instantly. But that just mm. goes to show you how intricate the matrix really is. You see, uh. your finding says that the year is now twenty one oh four. There's seemingly no rational explanation for it. The real answer in, in the sci fi horror game. All right. I mean, yeah. I don't. I guess he's just saying that's the first. It's weird. Thing you, but you get answers very pretty quickly. Like it's not well. You know, super Joseph late into the made game. a pretty, pretty substantial error. Again, um, it's becoming a pattern. It's unfortunate. So if you are going to tell us that you're bringing a lot of, I get, essentially, baggage with you, understanding that it's a science fiction horror-themed game, um, 
especially if you know the Greek of the name. Um, I don't know how you can say, how did I get here? There's no rational explanation. Like, well, you've already admitted that you're bringing the baggage of it being a sci-fi Oh, now I get what story. you mean by, yeah, like, there's going to be thousands of rational explanations in a sci-fi story, because it could be all exactly. kinds of things, yeah. You yeah. should be, you should, your mind should be extra open. It's like knowing that you live in a world that has a, if like a, if you're playing a fantasy game and there's all kinds of different magic spells mm. and wizards are everywhere and you're like, there's no rational explanation for this. It can't possibly be. Cause like we, we just established that magic is very prevalent in this world. What do you mean? There's no rational explanation. It's magic. There's some magic spell. The, the entire plot of Soma, which is mostly about the events that happened here in the future. The place you're in is an underwater base called Pathos. That's strange. About the events that happened here in the future. It's an interesting sentence. I was actually going to say... It's not wrong. It's just an interesting, it's an he, interesting sentence. It's, did he want to say to us, here in the future, like, like this is where we are, we're in the future, or the events that took place... It sounded like you were saying events that took place before we got here, but also in the future. Yeah, right. it's, just, it's an interesting, strange yeah. sentence, you know? Called Pathos 2, and it called Pathos 2, and it's more of a research base or a factory than Rapture was a city in Bioshock. It has several different sites that serve different functions, and you'll go through most of this place throughout the game. I don't know if you'd call that several. At this point, I think we've, we've, we've gone past several. I don't know what you call this. What would you call... Because you have... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Um, so you have, you have a few. That's like a couple, right? Uh, I see um, it. A several. couple is two, a few is three, okay? That's that's how I yeah. see several it. Is... Few, few is like, several is like... Several is like four like to ten. Like I don't know. I feel like... I, I always felt like several you, is you like three-ish. No, I feel like several is a reasonably big number. The lowest oh, I'll go for several I mean, is never... four. Yeah, I, exactly. I'd say a few... Because, yeah, a couple's two, a few is like three or four, and several is more than that. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Okay, because I because when I hear several, I've just always been like that eh, three, four, maybe. Man, okay, that's for me. Several could mean a lot. Uh, it could couple. mean a lot. It's like a um, couple, few, several. Well, the thing for me is that it, what's being described is like how many stations we visit, and he described it as several. Yeah, I feel like we went to several stations. Well, the irony, uh, I guess, I would have said is that we go to all. I think epsilon a and b, lambda, delta, theta, omicron, tau, and phi. We go to all those places, right? I think we do, yeah. <laughs> I, just, I just didn't yeah. know if, if several okay. was like a lot or what that really meant to a lot of people. Well, no. okay. So before we get to that, let's put the story on hold for a moment All for two right. reasons. The first is that I think the video will flow better if we can loop back to the story after looking at gameplay. And secondly, because I want to show a massive problem that <gasps> Soma has before spoiling the story. Here we go. Just massive in case problem. this problem ends up being strangely positive for a lot of you watching. This might convince you to play it yourself before I go on to spoil it. And that problem is, Soma isn't really a horror game. It's not uh... scary. <laughs> there it is. Th this image has there lived in is. my head for a long time. <laughs> Joseph Anderson, everybody. Soma isn't really a horror game. It isn't scary. Like I, I can't man. do anything with that statement. I can't do anything with it. It's it's just me, so we, we've Lord come across isn't a fantasy adventure story. It, yeah, I it's guess. it's not like, exciting or epic. It's it's to me, I was bored by Lord of the Rings, so it's no longer an adventure no, story. Dodgeball isn't a comedy. Yeah, because it wasn't now, funny to me. I mean, Soma is scary. Sorry for me, at least that game is scary. It is scary. Well, absolutely. this is where we get into the whole fucking subjective, not a subjective thing. It's like, of course, everybody can be scared or not scared by things individually, but then what is it for a thing to be defined as scary beyond a person's experience of that thing? And it's like, I don't know, I guess that if it follows the trap, we get into genre. And then, well, okay. I hate genre discussions, but if you're gonna say Soma isn't a horror game, I'd be like, what, what, do, you, how, what, what do you think it is? I guess he'd say it's just a science fiction game. Oh, um, so what but about I mean, all the horror? I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty obvious that Soma's goal as a game is to scare you. Well, it's, uh, I we gotta be able to go further than that, right? Like, it's, it's, it's got, uh, I, won't, I almost want to get, like, caveman mode with this. It's like, it's got extreme gore. It's got, like, creatures that yell and make horrible breathing sounds. It's got people who are asking to be killed. 
people who are hooked up to like devices that are, like body horror obviously and just the aesthetics of darkness and you know, yeah we decay. got loads of darkness Creepy loads of lights in the dark that, like the central sort of themes is existential dread not being able to fight back against the enemies it's like, oh, the, go to the, the server room where a creature down, who can't see and has no arms is, like, hobbling around in there making horrifying breathing sounds that if it hears you, it'll scream and run at you. That's not scary, yeah. you see. That's just sci-fi. And then, well, it's, it's, and it's, then it's you learn about what your fate is. What's going to happen yeah. to you? What's happened yeah. to the people around you? Like, how is that? I don't know, man. Like, and this that, checks, like, literally every box. Everything that you make of that as a person who isn't a robot in the future, but as a human being living today. And everything that it makes you think about, about the sense of self and where that's derived from. Um, like, the, uh, to be like, yeah, but I wasn't scared by it, therefore it is not a horror game, is like, baffling. Yeah, you should go statement. the other direction I, that all normal people go, which is, this comedy didn't make me laugh, this horror game didn't yeah, scare exactly. me, this blah 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 didn't and, blah, and blah, blah. Of course, this, this gets particularly awkward because it was that subsequent video afterward, right, where he said that, like, horror games don't scare him in general because you can respawn. Uh, so, like, why did he say this? There is no such thing as a horror game if he can't be scared by any of them, right? I don't also, even... Since, <laughs> since when was horror only when your life is threatened? That's a that's a weird. It's yeah. That's that seems like an incredibly limited view on what constitutes horror. Like yeah, when someone threatens if to your fate is to be like tortured, or you're 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 you're, you're like you're strung up, you're incapacitated forever, or you, they do something to your mind, or something along those lines. Um, or they do something to people you care about. Absolutely. And it, like looking at this, still, it makes me wonder how many people watched this review, played Soma. And they were scared out of their fucking minds. <laughs> and they're like, wait a second. He said this wasn't a horror game. He said this wasn't scary. And here I am, terrified of these creepy-ass monsters chasing me around in the dark, not understanding to, that that was mention, once a human. Not to mention all of the existential dread. <laughs> well, so, and that's, the that's to move on from caveman mode. The, the, the creatures that chase you in that server room, I forget the specific name of the, the type of monster it is, but... It's an amalgamation of several body parts, and if you get a good look at it, like, one of it is just a human face that's stretched across a lot of it. It's just like, can you imagine? That thing is alive. It feels things. Imagine it was self-conscious enough to know what it looked like and what its existence is. Just like, ugh, I'd rather not think about that. It's like, yeah, you'd rather not think about it. Because it's fucking scary. Scary. This... What a... What... Anyway, moving yeah, on. it's um, it's iconic. You could say <laughs> this this screen is iconic. Really, a horror game. It's not scary in the same ways that a lot of other spooky games are. While I've ultimately decided that this is a good thing, it's abundantly clear to me that this isn't intentional. Frictional was. How, do, how are you looking at that? How can you show this? <laughs> and then be like, nah, it's not scary. It's not a horror game. As he said, Rags. Not the way that it's... most are. Is like, but the creepy monster trying to find you in the dark, wanting to like do terrible things to you. But that but that's that checks all the boxes. Mm. Dark spooky monster, danger, can't fight back. <laughs> it's like, don't show this. Trying to make Soma a scary, tense experience, and they failed. Did they know? This is the main reason why I said earlier that the gameplay in Soma... See what I mean? Like, for me, the whole, you know, they failed to make it scary. Does that not come across as a little more than subjective? <laughs> How can why you tell you, me what? that everything you're saying is subjective, and then you choose the language, they failed to make it scary? Yeah, what does that mean? Do you mean to you specifically? They failed because to the scare me is a very Soma different statement. A game. Well, it's just the statement Soma isn't a horror game seems a hell of a lot broader than to Sometimes me specifically. Sometimes I feel like it's like a pussy thing. Like, um, you don't want to say they failed to scare me because that's not interesting enough. So you want to be like... They failed to make it scary at all. And then yeah, someone's it, like, whoa, be, bro. Be and then he's like, oh, it's exactly. fine, it's fine, I was being subjective, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I was being subjective. And you're like, oh. Oh, I thought you were saying something a lot more controversial and complicated, but okay. Because if ever we made the statement like, this thing isn't scary, I don't even know how I would go about justifying it. Even like Teletubbies. I'd be like, well, no, there's probably some kid out there who's terrified of that. And then you're like, wait, so you're saying it is scary? I'd be like, no, no, I'm just saying the saying Teletubbies... 
fails to be scary is just a fucking broken statement anyway. I don't even know what to do with that. But the same for sober is a broken statement. What justifications are you going to come up with? And then you just go, eh, I just meant me. It's like, well, okay, then say that. ...as a waste of time, because it's largely about the robotic monsters that you encounter throughout the Pathos 2 facility, and the game tries so hard to get you on edge with the tense suffocating music, the loud noises and crashing sounds, it tries to assault all of your senses. It's screaming at you like a nervous dog, hey, be scared, you should be scared right now, are you scared? You scared? You scared? I don't know what to do with this. This, um, is, this is insane yeah. cope. I, I feel like this is just be like, I wasn't scared by this game. I'm brave. It wants you to be scared. <laughs> I suppose he's correct in the same way that telling a joke is overcompensation for wanting people to laugh. I mean, yes, they are using all of the tools available in the medium to in evoke fear in you, but he's saying it like it's a bad thing that they're trying to use these tools. Yeah, like if he was talking about jump scares, fine. If he's talking sure. about Outlast, fine. I can understand what he's saying. But at this point, <laughs> if we remove all of these these things, so like the use of lighting, the use of like chromatic aberration, I think is the actual thing you can turn yeah, off. I think that's what it's called. Obviously fucking with your robotic senses, because these creatures emit like all kinds of electricity in relation to the structure gel and the pieces they're made of. Then of course like the context of, I, I can't believe we're shitting on the soundtrack now too. This is like the fact that it plays uh, at all, the fact that it gets more yeah. tense the closer they get to you. This is This is bad now. These are what? the tools that the game is employing to evoke fear in you, yes. So really it should be a matter of talking about whether or not they're used effectively or ineffectively rather than that they're used it at all. all. Yeah. Is I mean, there <sighs> anything that is being said about this that can't be said about the Dark Descent? Things that part of the problem is, I don't well, know, I'm sure I mean, he's played it, I don't actually real, know. Again, I, I, part of the problem is it's hard for me to watch this without thinking, but yeah, but you made a video where you said that the reason why video games, like, don't seem to be capable of scaring you at all is because you can respawn. Mm. I don't mm. even know what to make of any observations about the nature of a game being more or less scary when they fundamentally can't scare you because you can respawn. To me, it is so opposite. Like, I find video games have the capacity to scare me a lot more than a film. Absolutely. Or a television show because yeah. of the interactivity. It's like it's almost like I have a I ha, I cannot put red dots on bad guys. I'm gonna review a lot of first person shooters. There's um I, a really I, I guess I'm oh, sorry yeah. There's a really simple way of they, they they talked about it in the dev diaries I think uh, frictional where it's just like the there's a part in um the Dark Descent and it'll be interesting to see you play the whole game maybe a uh, future Halloween there for you but uh. There's like an elevator, and it's like you need the key to operate it, and you're like, huh, and everything's pretty well lit, it's like a nice hub little place you're at. Then you go off to a, a different part, and it's like almost pure darkness, and it's like, the key's in there. And you're like, it is now, it huh? Is. And then, and the Frictional <laughs> talked about it as like, the reason why this is so strong is because in a film, the character's like, oh, geez, well, I gotta get in there, and the audience member, you know, pulls up their blanket, stares at the screen like, oh, gee, I hope they make it. But in the game, it's like, no, you have to push forward. Uh, you you have to make in the decisions. Go. Yeah, you you can't passively you can't passively just watch it play out. You have to be. And if active. you freeze, you're like terrified, and you sit in the corner and you sort of shiver and hope it goes away. In a lot of times, in both Soma and Dark Descent, that can save you. Like it it's, it's they're doing their best yeah. to try and make it feel as though like they're breaking down the wall between you and the game. And, uh, you know, like, it's just so funny for Joseph to be like, they just tried too hard. <laughs> like, uh, okay. <laughs> okay, whatever. Save this for fucking Rebirth, here. okay? The fucking f fear flashes. <laughs> fear flashes, yeah. And when you're being told what your objectives are in a game, right, there is this element of, yeah, that stuff you have to do, listen up. It's not just going to happen magically and passively by somebody else on a screen. No, no. You have to do these things I'm telling you to do. And sometimes when you're being told that you have to go to the spooky, you know, dark place or whatever to get a beacon or a key or a latch or a component or whatever to progress, when you hear that being told to you, and there's that understanding of you have to be the one to do that, it gives you a kind of sense of dread for what's to come. Uh, I mean, you know, in terms of relating it to Soma, uh, I think it's in Theta when you're being pursued, um... You know, like the big sprawl, it's where you find real Brandon, where it's it's Acres is uh, chasing you in there. Yeah. Um, where it, it, it pretty clearly says, okay, you need to get to this elevator. You got to get through here. 
But, you know, the, the, what you need is, like, way on the other side. And then you have to go there and get it and make your way back. And it's, it's just, like, knowing that these are all the tasks you need to do while evading acres is, like, damn. All right, shit, that's a little bit scary. <laughs> There's a lot to do. And I'm very vulnerable uh, to this monster. And, and it's there's like something, that anticipation. Something really you know? unique too with like, at first it seems like an almost maze of corridors and doors and rooms. And then you get yeah. a map and it's like, you are here, yeah. you need to go here. So, like, so yeah. forward, left, down the hall, and then to the left. I can yeah. do that. I can do that. I can do that. <laughs> exactly. Amping yourself up to do it. And then, you know, like... And and then it's you know the the sort of emergent things that can happen right where you where he finds you just as you're about to get there it's like run 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 okay yeah. like open the door open the door open the door and like having those sorts of feelings. Well, we were that, watching uh, you, uh, you do that part live I think me and Rags we were in a call and you 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 were just like pressing the buttons on the elevator just like yeah. doesn't matter if I go <laughs> yeah. don't care if it's the right floor, floor just go yeah. <laughs> any floor yeah. that isn't yeah. this floor let's just yeah. think, that was think pretty much my thinking yeah just any floor please but it's not scary. The point, the point being is that I found this game pretty scary, um, even, even in the good old just, yeah, you know, like, most basic, oh, scary monster! Um, like, I even found it scary just in that regard. The Construct, that's the first guy you have an encounter with, um, I found him, like, sort of mid in terms of how scared I was, uh, first time I played it, but the, the guy in the server room, I remember being absolutely terrified on my first time through the uh, game yeah. with him. <laughs> And it was, I, yeah. it, it was, um, I got the, the experience I imagine Frictional wanted me to, right? I would get halfway through the room. I haven't seen him yet. No idea what he looks like. I just hear him breathing. And then this like slapping of feet just over the side of the wall I was on, clearly going from in front to the left to the back to the left. Like, I know he's very close and he's moving around where I am. And like, you know, it's, it's the theater of the mind, as they say, I'm imagining so much of what's going on over the side of that wall and i want nothing more than for him to never find me and then it's like to get the key slash whatever you need you have to press a button to activate and it has to charge for what is it like 20 seconds or something yeah. before you can pick it up and it yeah. makes loads of sound so it's like you can stand yeah. next to it but he'll find you so you know do what you do whatever you want you get going. <laughs> You're like, oh my god <laughs> And then, yeah, usually you start to sprint out of the room, but you, you might hear him activate his screams, and then his footsteps get faster, and you're just like, ah! The idea that all of this effort is, like, too much over the top, I just, I can't believe it sometimes, because I think the scaling of, uh. um, you know, scaring people in video games has gotten so crap in terms of how... I, uh, I'm a huge fan of horror, and I've said this over and over again, I have barely any... Favorite horror. It's 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 it's. There's a small selection because I chase that experience like the proverbial dragon, knowing that I'll never get it, <laughs> unfortunately, or at least won't get it that often. Yeah. It's just it's hard to get that level of terrified by a game. Um, a lot of the time, even though I know that games have some of the best access to that emotional experience. Yeah, if something jumps at me, and for a second or two, I'm terrified just because it's a natural reaction. And then all I can think of afterwards is I, me rolling my eyes and yep. going, uh, good job, you know, now you just annoyed me and frustrated me because it's just lazy and this is all you can do. Well, at that point, I don't walk away with positive experiences. I'm like, oh, you're just being cheap. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, it's like, oh, you sure scared me. Yep, you did you? evolutionarily the thing. Instead of actually scaring you, what the fuck does actually scaring you mean, Joseph? I, I'm, I'm, actually I'm, scaring I, I, you. Okay, whatever. Okay. <laughs> how how is this over the top? How? Look at yeah, this. I mean, this is this is pretty subdued. I'd say. I'd, oh god, yeah. I had so much compliments for this. I'd be like, the atmosphere is almost perfect. The little jitters in your in your visuals that's justified in universe, making it slightly harder to make out what's going on. This figure, you can't quite tell what it is or what it does. Exactly. And then the fact that like you know the music is like mm, like it's like a hum. It's a hum. Yeah. The idea that this is over the top. Are you kidding me? <laughs> The enemy robots don't even I look mean, scary. Yeah. The first time I saw They don't even look scary. No, they don't even look scary. I don't know what... The, I don't know what... How can you... Uh, we're, because we're, remember, we're, if a serial killer... So we have ruled this, out what? no movie about a human serial killer can be scary if it just looks like a person, right? I, he's wrong. You can't be afraid of people <laughs> because they just look like people. 
He's so incredibly fucking wrong. We'll have uh, exhibit A, B, and C. Let me grab him. Yeah, I was not prepared the... for this. Yeah, um... this is... <laughs> you didn't think you'd have to go and look at all the creatures? And all the fucked up amalgamations of flesh and metal <laughs> that the WoW creates? Well, we don't even have to... We probably should, but we don't have to get into the fact that it's more than just what they look like. It's what they are. Yeah, that's what's really... Or what really... they believe themselves to be. Okay, that'll do... I think it's a little bit low res, but whatever. Uh, we'll start with... Uh, do you remember this lady? I think you, we briefly were chased by... I think you had a bit of trouble with her fringy, but then you completed this segment in a way that I hadn't even seen before, I think, if I remember. Oh, yeah, yeah, she's the one that was um, standing, like, facing... That was uh, that was in... Uh, before you go down into the depths. Which was that? Uh... She was in... That would make her in... Is it Omicron? I think Omicron? Yeah, that was what I was thinking. Yeah. I was trying to distract her by making noises, by throwing things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can... The way you can defeat... The, the, what they wanted, I think, from that sequence is that... Think of it as, like, you can only make so much sound before she'll activate, but you can move relatively slowly and you won't piss her off. So they try yeah. and create a tense sequence. You know, like Mission Impossible 1 with the... <laughs> like you're trying to move very carefully, get the battery and move away yeah. very. The the reason that it gets very tense is they drop a whole bunch of stuff on the floor, and if you touch any of it, it'll go clang <laughs> clang, and then she'll go, yeah, yeah, and you're yeah. like, ah. yeah. So, but yeah, I mean that's not very scary. No, um, no, of course. Yeah. And look at her; she's whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you're like, oh, this was a human being. This was a person. Yeah. Look at the, this Pathos Two shit she's got there. Yeah. Yep. Used Covered to be blood. A staff there, person with a life. Then we can go to, I forget again the name of these ones. I used to know it well, and it's, I don't know why it's so low res, but obviously these are the I'm guys. Sure. This uh. is the one I was saying with a face, and there's, there's arms and a feet around the whole thing, and then like the barnacle things, and it's just, it's just disgusting. It's a, it's a pool of flesh that's been like vaguely and horrifically constructed back into something that's gradually becoming humanoid, maybe. Like, it feels like the WoW's attempt at patchworking a human out of pieces. And yeah, you, the sounds it makes makes it so much worse, but you just wonder how aware this creature is. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, of course, Terry Akers, who uh, creates a sequence that is oftentimes considered one of the scariest in the game as well. I mean, look at that. That's, a, that's pretty bad, especially when you... Like, again, the context of... Who he is, mm -hmm. what he did. Yeah. Um, exactly. I mean, <laughs> it's not very scary, though. Not very scary, know? nah. Now, um, if I was to be as fair as possible, he's only referencing the construct. The, unfortunately, he already said this, the monsters aren't scary, so it kind of ruins his whole point. But <laughs> if if we were solely talking about the construct enemy, and someone said, "You, that one's not very scary. That this is the guy." Um. I would be like, yeah, but isn't this a good one to start with? As an introduction, This one sure looks yeah. like a machine. It just looks like a machine. It yeah, doesn't look exactly. human at all. It doesn't look like it has any human parts. And what we come to discover, like totally of course, machine. would be that this has been uploaded with a human brain scan, more than likely, but it's, it's like, uh, corrupted slash out of control, disbalanced, and it's just raging. Who knows what yeah. it sees, you know? But like, exactly. to me, it makes so much more sense that we meet this guy first, and as the game goes on, we meet. I mean, you know, isn't this like the... pretty fucking normal for a video game to start with like relatively tame and mundane monsters, and then ramp it up the longer it goes? Yeah, very often that's the case. So I um yeah, I just think that's woefully unfair to the game. But oh well, because a lot of this is like, yeah, okay, well, fine. He didn't find those scary, and it's like you can't. I don't even. Yeah, but, but, but he's, <laughs> it's going beyond I didn't find it scary. It's like a broader criticism of the game itself. Yeah, imagine telling people, like, this game isn't scary, it tries too hard to be scary, and all the monsters in it aren't scary. It's like, huh. Yeah. And then ending it with, for me. He's like fucking Jigsaw. There's <laughs> a big gap. To me! <laughs> 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 it's 
Soba is a the horror game. The enemy game. robots don't even look Doobie. scary. The first time I saw one, I ran right up to it to get a better look because I thought it looked cool, not creepy. I don't. What? Well, whose fault is that? Okay. <laughs> like what? Okay. Uh, do you think what? that? Do you think that you are the insane outlier? I don't I'm even sorry. know. What if I said do I walked up to Wesker because I thought he was cool in Resident <laughs> Evil? What does that even mean? Mr. X <laughs> looks cool. <laughs> Nemesis looks cool. What am I supposed to do with this? Yeah, exactly. Yep. It also feels like Frictional realized they weren't that visually intimidating either oh, and used that screen tearing you? effect to make it so you can't always get a great look at the thing. Okay, we clearly have a great look at him when you do that. Yeah. And secondly, yeah. like, that is the way he's supposed to look. He represents one of the loader droids or whatever that have obviously been hit with structure gel and other pieces of metal and he's got an uploaded thing. That's how it's supposed to look. Whether or not you find him scary is, like, I don't know why it hasn't been accepted yet that this is, like, turns out people are scared by different things. They mm -hmm. weren't that visually intimidating. But either. the, um, either, and either, I'm trying to get a good shot here use that of the aberration, but he's saying, like, the screen tear effect to make it so you can't really understand. It's like, even with the tear in full effect, which I think I've paused on, you can see him. Yeah, the idea that Frictional is trying to hide yeah, this is stupid. Sure. No, they're not trying to hide it. It's just like a way of communicating how close or distant an enemy is, even when you can't see them. Yeah, it's just it's it's tools for gameplay as as well as you know having some narrative they, relevance. Yeah, they gave it a justification in Universe too. This is the kind of marrying that we want. It reduces exactly or increases verisimilitude, I guess. Uh, I'd say it increases it. Yeah. yeah. And also recall, you couldn't really look at the monsters and amnesia, the Dark Descent. Yeah, they well, Rags, they did that because they were trying to hide their awful-looking monsters. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Apparently, the fact to make it so you can't always get a great look at the things and have to fill parts of it with your imagination and stuff. Okay, oh, now no. show us the other ones, Joseph. Now show us all the yeah, other ones. Let the, the audience ones. see the other ones so that they know that you're not lying yeah. when you say that they're all like these, you know, they're kind of cool-looking. Dead. Again, trying to convince you to be scared instead of being actually scary. Trying to convince... <laughs> Stop. I'm trying to other ones. <laughs> you hit my brain. You bring back awful memories, Joseph. <laughs> let's rewind even further to something that was said near the beginning. Yeah, no, let's not rewind. Let's use the other examples. All you've shown us is two constructs, which are the same construct from the early point in the game. You've completed it. Show us yeah. the other monsters. Yeah, show us the scary-ass one. What about the one that swims around and tries to snatch you after you encounter the WoW? What about the fucking yeah, could, uh, the 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 angler fish? You could even what show Johan Ross. He's not ones? he's not even an antagonist. But look at Johan. Like he's fucking gross looking. Like this is what I mean about like just showing the construct is just disingenuous. It's like me saying there's no scary enemies in this game in Resident Evil Four, and it's just like one of the women Ganados, and it's like oh look, it's an old lady. <laughs> it's just an old lady. See, yeah. the enemies in this game are lame and they're not scary at all. Look at her. They're like, oh, yeah, that would be, that would be lying. Well, and then someone's like, okay, Rag, show a second one. And you're like, fine, and it's her five minutes later in a different place. <laughs> it's like, that's the same thing. Why are you doing that? Expectations matter a lot. Okay. So does the player's willingness to meet the game on its own terms, which I imagine is a really complicated issue when it comes to designing a game. There will be yep. people who go into horror games with a specific intent to not be scared because they want uh -huh. to prove to themselves or the world that they aren't creeped out. Or so uh, that's, 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 that's an interesting observation. Mm, that is an mm. interesting anyway, observation, <laughs> Joseph. Anyway, moving on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, wait, let's not dwell on that. Game and its silly scares don't work on them. Or far more favorably, they simply don't enjoy being scared and separate themselves so much that they don't engage with the game. Or they claim they can't be scared by video or games. Or they claim they can't be scared. Yeah. By this. Which is level. interesting, right, because that other video would essentially be an admission that Joseph Anderson is incapable of meeting a game halfway because if you can die and respawn, it's fucked. It's over, you know, yeah. like it can't achieve these effects. Is that not an example of you not being able to meet a game halfway? Certainly not horror games. Well, except if it has permadeath. Or if it blows even up the then, I think, or something, when you die, you know? I think it, even he said, has... like, even permadeath ones are like... Uh, I could have sworn it was something like it's more mechanically satisfying than like a horror experience. Which, at that point, it's like, can we can we go be past death as like a thing that's capable of scaring somebody? Which because let's be fucking me? frank, the massive majority of times that you've been afraid in your life, death had nothing to do with it. What it's you think that... when someone just notices a cockroach right next to them and they jump and go, huh? You think they're afraid of dying? <laughs> it's it's <laughs> just. 
you know, it's it. Uh, it's let's let's expand our horizons here in terms of the nature of of like horror beyond just death as a possibility. Which again, surely these arguments would apply to a film, right? It's like, well, sure, but there's no real consequences because this is all made up. These yeah, you can you can definitely make that death. argument. The game is but all at that code. Point, just, it's all fake. At, at that point, you've just eliminated any capacity for art, basically at all, to evoke any feeling in you, because it's like, yeah, but I mean, this isn't real. You know? Well, yeah, yeah imagine we took it to the point of, you showed me a photo of, like, the pyramids, and I'm like, it's not actually a pyramid. Yeah, but I mean, I wasn't there. Well, and it's just, I wasn't there. You know, this is just a bunch of ink on a, on a piece of paper. Yeah. I don't really, I don't feel anything from this. And it's just like, okay. Okay. <laughs> I guess that's all art ruined for you forever. Well, yeah, and, you, and Joseph would be like, that's unreasonable. I'd be like, yeah, that's unreasonable. <laughs> okay, anyway. And play it for the story or something instead. The issue Soma has is that you have to meet the game more than halfway in order to be scared by it. You basically have to roll <laughs> yeah. as the lion from The Wizard of Oz, because even if you are um, scared by the visuals uh... and find the robots genuinely scary, eventually... See, this is what I mean. It's like... You make these are much broader statements than me personally. This yeah. is like on average, the average person who plays Soma you is going to have to role X. play as the lion. They have to essentially make themselves get, which is I don't even know what that means. Uh, well, I was so actually that was going to be my thing. You have scared. to meet the game more than halfway. It's like, what do you mean by that? What does that mean? That you have to you have to pretend to be scared when you're not because it's it's just it's, it's a visceral by. emotion. You're scared or you're not scared. Like, it scared me when I played it. Scared yeah, the I, fuck yeah, out of me. Exactly. I was like, scared. I, mean, yeah. I can only speak for myself. I found the game pretty terrifying. Um, both in I terms guess that of makes me a fucking ooh, pussy. I guess it makes me the, uh, the like lion. Emphasize, though, it's like, it's not just the ooh spooky monster. It's what the fucking game is about. That's the thing that's really scary. You basically have to roleplay as the lion from The Wizard of Oz. Because yeah, even uh, if you are spooked by the visuals and find the robots genuinely scary... I've why didn't he just say role plays the cowardly lion? As if there's another cowardly lion to confuse him with? But That's also, nice. why why does he keep saying the robots? Why doesn't he talk about the more exactly. organic? Yeah, oh, like what a the great ones question. That we're on the screen. Yeah. Why why are you why are you? Yeah, you. Those oh man, robots? Brandon's fucking uh, story, of yeah. course. Yeah. The yeah. there's so much you discover through just the environmental storytelling in Soma. It's a fucking masterpiece on many levels, and that's one of them. Mm -hmm. The fact that this guy stayed behind so that everyone could get out, and then he killed himself to prevent anyone from fucking him up or corrupting him, when you know... Like, I think that's already horrifying in and of itself, because you, you see all of that. Then you know, if the WoW gets a hold of him, the WoW exactly. has the scans, and they can use yep. the flash... Like, it's just like, Jesus Christ. It'll, yeah, yeah, the WoW will create another version of Brandon... That thinks mm -hmm. it's the old Brandon, and in a way, sort of is. That's kind of the point of the game, and it will just be shambling the halls or attached to the yeah. wall for. Well, imagine it was coherent eternity. enough to discover himself. Yeah, imagine that. Well, I don't even know if Joseph is aware of any of this stuff. But it's not scary, and it's not a horror game, and <laughs> eventually, you're going to get caught. And this is the final nail in the underwater coffin that hammers home that you have no reason to be scared of these enemies. Eventually, because you're when going you die, to die. You dude, look at it. Look. How is that not? Scary? <laughs> <laughs> Remember the section on how none of the monsters are scary; they're only really cool looking. <laughs> how is the, this image alone? If this was in like a promotional yeah. material thing, I'd be like, "What the fuck is that?" Immediately back to life and get to try again with no penalty. Yeah, so ah yes, there it is. There's hit for the ah yes, because you respawn. Yeah, I, I, so I've been over this. How is this different from a death screen? How lit like mechanically and literally? I'm not asking this rhetorically. Literally, tell me how. I guess he can't literally. I guess he can later. Um, how is this different from a death screen in any other game? Well, I think. Hang on. We'll let him play this in full because I've got so much to say on this. This is the um, final nail in the underwater coffin that hammers home that you have no reason to be scared of these enemies. Because when you die, you come immediately back to life and get to try again with no penalty. Even after a game over, you just reload and try again with frequent checkpoints. Mm -hmm. The game itself... That's literally video games. So that's video... Yeah, so th this, is, that, that's this isn't Resident a critique of Soma. That's just critique of video games. Yeah, you, you just have a fundamental distaste or an, an inability to engage with the death mechanics of all video games 
I don't see why but Soma had to be crucified to on that particular cross when every game, like you know what I mean? Like Soma's now this is, the. This yeah. is games. He's describing video games. This is Resident Evil. This is Battlefield. This is every game where you die, you respawn and try well, again. Well, I would imagine that the argument he'd make is, yeah, but I mean, those games aren't trying to scare me. So like, that's just mechanics. I can engage. Yeah, with I feel invincible forward. now because I, wherever yeah. I go, even if I but fall that's every over. Horror game. Well, yes, yeah, every that, that's horror game yeah. is that, that the is, thing. Is, that, that's the main critique of his why horror games don't scare me video. I was like, dude, this is just... It's, it's the reason why I get annoyed with that Soma isn't a horror game. It's like nothing can be. In your world, nothing can be. Yeah, and you Soma need to let people out. know that when you're reviewing this game because other pe most people, the takeaway because is like, this horror game, game like, isn't scary. Oh, this one. Exactly. Exactly. Not, oh, the reviewer that I'm watching for this doesn't find any video game scary at all. But me, as somebody who almost certainly does... It, it just makes the review less useful. For and them, then, right? um, of course, so, so <laughs> mechanically in horror games, and this is something Frictional talked about, and I, I, this is when I had massive respect for him, because I was fascinated by all the design choices. Um, they talk about, like, how death is fucking annoying in video game, uh, for horror games as, as developers, because whenever a player dies, the tension, it's like the elastic band snapped, and now you've got to try and reform it and start stretching it again. Uh, you never want it to snap. You want to keep pulling and pulling and pulling and then, you know, release and then pull and pull and pull and release. That's what they want. Highs, lows, highs, lows, never uh, snap. They don't want you to die, but they understand that that's like an inevitability. Um, obviously, in Soma, you get one chance and then you die. The one chance is to desperately try and contextualize how you, like, you know, the, the creature hit you down Simon, uh, you know, whatever, his electronics, like, stuttered, and he's he's inactive on the floor, and then the creature doesn't sense anything anymore, so it just walks off. That's what it tries to make happen. Similar to the Dark Descent with Daniel. Exactly, because the Frictional's goal is to try and best keep you... You know, like, Mario Kart falling off the track, and the, in the newer versions, they'll have a guy grab you almost straight away and get you back on the track. It feels a lot better as a player, because you the, the interruption isn't as bad. As like a black mm -hmm. screen, and then slowly, you know, dropping down and going again. It's like, whoa, whoa back on, let's get, keep the race going. It's kind of like that with the stream of horror, because looking at menus and looking at black screens and game overs is, is something that can hurt the immersion of horror. The developers understand that, the players understand that. It's a whole thing. Unfortunately, they are video games. You need to have a factor of losing. You have to, it has to be some, some way. Some sort of fail state in some degree. Something you're trying to have not happen. And so, yeah, they, uh, but of course there's a version of Soma where there are no monsters. And so I guess that's the best way to not have to worry about ever reaching a loss. But again, there's so many reasons why that breaks a lot of what I believe is important about Soma. In any case, what I'm trying to get at is it is infinitely frustrating to me that they have implemented this system with the specific goal of trying to address the problem that Joe Fanson has an issue with, and he's just there whining about how they haven't solved it. An unsolvable problem that they've not solved. An unsolvable problem, exactly. But th something that you wouldn't know of, this is the only video that you'd seen, and you hadn't seen as one on horror games. I mean, I don't even think you need to see... Oh, sorry, uh, what I was thinking of is you wouldn't even need to yeah, see any more like context to understand what they're doing with how that you don't reach a game over in the first hit but the second hit. But he hasn't seemed to accept that. He, he's like lumped it in as the same thing. Remember, because he said like right. you get knocked over and get back up even if you hit a game over. Like he hasn't even seen a difference. He doesn't understand why it was even put in. So it's obviously to try and maintain that immersion, to try and help you up even though you failed. Yeah, they don't, they don't want they don't want breaks at all of like oh yeah it's game over it is game over you know and now you need to restart they when you get hit and then you get hit again frictional like okay I'm sorry you fucked up too much that's a game yeah. over <laughs> we, like we, we can't like exactly. we can't keep bailing you out I mean in a way Joseph's right you do need to engage with a game to some degree on its level like all games for instance you might want to try and like you want to avoid losing the game you want yeah. to like try and. Just like the base level of working with the experience. Self nudges you toward this realization because at first the gameplay in Soma is basically hide and seek. You don't have any weapons or tools or anything to use against the monsters. I'm not saying the game and that's should be bad. No tools to use against good, the monsters, but you can or... distract them by throwing objects. That's right. That's got to count for something. You You're not utterly helpless. To fight them, but there's nothing else to do with them except hide at the beginning. 
but you can the okay. construct especially can be distracted and i feel like that's not getting mentioned and it should be and even if all you could do was hide and run away from them they're like all right yeah it's is gameplay that bad it's, is it's, that uh, wrong he's described cat and mouse dismissively even though that is a, a archetypal form of like game <laughs> cat and mouse it's, there's yeah. nothing inherently wrong with cat and mouse later on the game adds a couple of mechanics that really push you to learning that the enemies are simple AI constructs in video game terms now not story ones no in story two in a story lot of them two. function very uh, simply oh I thought he was going to be like a point of praise but never mind I nope. guess he's <laughs> about it alright never mind that you often manipulate or toy with in order to proceed Okay, like she is make a noise that. to lure the shambling thing to a spot so you can get past, or lure it to a circular hallway so you can run around it and through the He's corridor coming for stealth that games too. walking. <laughs> it shows you that you're actually faster than most of the robots, so even if you are spotted, chances are you can still get away. No, the speed goes from like 0 0.5 of yours to I 0 0.7 to 1 to 1 1.2 to 1 yeah. 1.5. Like, they will be faster than you. They get to the point that you can't just outrun them. And also, I these mean, like, if he wants to, if he wants to say that these things are problems or whatever, you certainly can. But just you, you're just destroying the stealth genre. Like, there's well, no good. You're like, right because he basically just described what is, but he did it in a way that sounded critical. It's yeah, like, okay. I don't really understand what the actual problem is. You just, you just described really basic mechanics for these kinds of games, which again is fine if you want to do that. You haven't actually explained why they're bad or anything. You just. You just said they were bad, and these are kind of like standard sorts of things that people seem to typically enjoy, and they work really well, so I, I don't really know what's going on here. Um, but all right, I suppose. ...into roaming inconveniences rather than scares, because they're not a threat. They're not interesting. They're getting in the way of the good they're stuff. They're not interesting. Okay. They're not, you see the monsters, so, they're this, not interesting. So they're this getting is what we... the, the monsters are getting in the way of the story. You see, the, 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 there's so much here that I hate. So it's like they're <laughs> okay. not they're not a threat. Like okay, so that's just objectively not true. <laughs> like they are a threat. They are of course are. a threat in the sense that they will take your life from you and send you back in however much time. But if your point is, well, no, because I just come back anyway, so they're not even a threat. It'd be like your logic is insane, and no other game can pass. Like, the something isn't a threat to me if I can respawn. So permadeath games yeah, are the only like, ones that pass exactly. this test. Cool. Like, actual permadeath. Yeah. Like, you play the game, you die, you can't play the game anymore. And then they're not interesting. When you come across that girl in uh, Omicron who you need to get the battery from behind her, pretty sure she's just sitting down and crying, or she's standing and crying. Um... She's just covered in metal. She's got the, like I said, as we mentioned, it's like a worker who's been infected by all of this. She's possibly the most, maybe, you know, human looking that, that's, that's got that amount of uh, metal on her. And the fact that you can still hear human noises coming from her. So it's like, there's nothing interesting to you about that? Nothing at all. Okay. What about this very much droid sentry looking machine having a human voice coming from it? Mm -hmm. Is that not interesting to you at all? Okay. What what am I supposed to do about this? What if I find it interesting? What happens then, Joseph? Am I supposed to just be like, well, I should have known better? Like, oh, yeah, I guess I was wrong. It isn't interesting at all, actually. Thanks, Joseph. <laughs> Instead, two examples are the blind monster about halfway through the game that is in a dark room with a lot of stuff on the floor. The challenge here is to not trip over any of it so you don't make a noise. That's it. Really slow and boring. If you make them okay, okay. At this point, you're just being a dick. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what to say. Like, I that's it. All you have to do is engage in this incredibly tense cat and mouse uh, scenario where it uses its ears to hear you, and there's a bunch of traps on the floor that will bring it your way. Like, I, like what? What more does it need? I want you to fucking tell me what more this scenario needs for it to not suck in your mind. It's weird well, because it was... a great sequence in the game. If he presented an alternative, what would he add on top to make it yes. better? What is it lacking that it needs to have to where it meets your standards of being okay? It was about, um, I don't know if it was like a half hour ago or whatever, but uh, I was talking about this, this specific room and experience. This is one of the most I was terrified in the game when I first ever streamed it. And it's, yeah, this was scary as fuck. Like I said, I, I hadn't seen the creature. I knew it was there. I could hear it moving around, and I knew that any wrong move, and it's gonna... It's that shit where, like, 
you make a sound, move a thing, drop a thing, whatever. And when you hear the consistent, you know, plat, 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 somewhere around, and then you make a noise and it goes plat and stops, you're like, oh shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's right. It's fucking scary, but like, no, he's just like, the way he just did this was like, yeah, there's this game where you get one of several shapes and you have to put them down one by one and make a line. That's it. He's like, yeah, is is that bad? Why? Wait, did you just describe Tetris? What's happening? <laughs> it's like, yeah, well, fuck you. I don't know. I, what, what's the pack bad? You just sort of, you just go up, down, left, right, collecting little balls. That's it. Like, a yeah, lot of these I, concepts yeah, can work, Joseph, but you need to tell us more. Why doesn't it work? Mistake, you can usually run away and hide again to reset the monster. Even if you don't, you get to try again immediately if you're killed. So again, it's just coming back to the, he wants you to have permadeath in Soma, I guess. So this is you imagine that? for checkpoints in other games is, to be very is, far away from it, the fight in which you yeah, die. I was about to say, or is it a dramatic punishment if you have to retread substantial portions of the game to get back? And what's going to the happen then? Are... All the other reviewers would say this game is retarded, it doesn't have checkpoints. Yeah, all of them would be yeah, like, I died. I have to replay things that I already completed that aren't challenging, that's just me exploring terrain. I have I've to do all that him. again to just do get back again. to the battle. Yeah. That's right, because if because if you die, if you lose to this monster and he gets you, and you have to go back thirty minutes, well, I bet it'll be a hell of a lot yeah, more that's, tense that's, when you're fighting the monster, because you know that if I he mean, fucking gets you, you got to go through the same the stuff game, half an hour. Yeah, at that scary. point, I'm like, that's fuck just it. annoying. That's that. God, like, imagine that's I was scary. like, that's, I don't want to lose all my progress. <laughs> imagine I was as spicy as the um the pillar of garbage guy, and I made a video responding to this and called it Joe's fantasy and lied to you. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> like, Kind of a you, little bit. I mean, so far uh, I still yeah. wouldn't call it that. It'll depend on what else he's got in here because I've completely he's forgotten. He's stretching the line in a few places. The whole robots and nothing scary. The, 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 but yeah, it's it's pretty. It's pretty fucking bad. Yeah, this is pretty bad. Or how about the flesher monster that goes berserk and kills you if you either get too close or if you look at it? Eye contact sets it off, so you're supposed to look away or down at the floor. It's like the opposite of SCP-173 or the booze in Super Mario World. There's a part okay. where one of the things is roaming between okay. rooms and blocking your path. Oh, it I was just so a tired of thing he said. Okay. <laughs> it was just, he just said, this isn't like these other things. Moving on. <laughs> but is, was that a criticism? Was that wrong? I guess to well, help us that understand it. It looks like he's about to say that he hates it. Yeah, we'll okay. roll him back, but... I want to be able to stare at the thing that's trying to kill me. It's like, like the opposite right, of yeah. SCP-173, or the booze in Super Mario World. There's a part where one of the things is roaming between rooms and blocking your path. I got so tired of waiting for its slow movement that I just went crab walking right in there with it, making sure to face away while I bumped into walls and things before making it to the other side. Because the game had taught me that this thing just appearing means stop and look away, and then do nothing until it passes. Not scary. Um, I'm pretty sure Catherine says to you explicitly more than twice, just don't look at it. That's the key with this one. I think so. I think so. The idea that he's saying, like, I've pretty much broken the game because I can just move around while not looking at it, it's like, that's kind of intentional. That's what Catherine says. Tedious instead. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> sorry. You, oh, I'm sorry. So sorry. <laughs> yeah, but I've heard what you've called tedious in the server room. You've called that tedious. Yeah. So I don't fucking care what your opinion is on what is and isn't tedious. It's it's literally worthless. I need more. This is nothing. At the end here, you're also forced into an encounter with a thing that has the intended solution of running away, canonically proving that Simon is faster than them. Canonically. Not even necessarily. What do you even mean by that? Like, they're, they're all different anyway. This one, yeah, you can run to the... The, like submissive or whatever. It, it seems like he's implying well, it was never a threat anyway, because he could outrun it. It's like, well, sure, but being able to outrun it physically doesn't mean anything if you don't know where you're going. What if you run into a room and it's a dead end? Doesn't matter how fast you ran. Yeah. And if what if there's more than one? Point one units. Yeah, exactly. What a yeah, is what I mean? It's, it's, what a weird thing to say. Um, it, it, it's like you're saying canonically Simon's faster, so there was really no reason to be scared at all, because you could always outrun it, as though simply being able to outrun the monster is the only parameter for success. I mean, like, that's wild. Like, it, it, it means that it's it's basically impossible it could scare you because you can always run faster than it, never mind that you don't know where you're going, and that you could run into a place that's a dead end and then get caught. It's like he's implying it's impossible for it to be a threat. 
What a I stupid mean, again, thing to like, <laughs> We have disqualified like the vast majority of enemies in video games that can't yeah, catch up um, to your character. Good old, uh, good old Leon, he can outrun all the zombies. Uh, fucking yeah, zombies I think in there's, general, right? Zombies I think in general. Ex yeah, I think everything except the cameos are are going to be able to... That they're slower than you. I think... I, I most think you, most enemies in Dark Souls as a doors, whole, yeah. they're all slower than you. Most video game enemies are slower than you. Like, yeah, that's typically um, not work. Yeah, that's that's legitimately fucking bizarre that like he's just <laughs> discounted he like ninety five percent of video game enemies. Faster. Why did he say it like that? Simon is canonically faster. Well, and also okay. the ship is exploding at this point, so yeah. there's plenty of in-universe justification for why this creature has trouble catching up with you at this point. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, what, this feels exactly. like nitpicking, but it's not even valid. <laughs> This is being bizarre. meaningless in horror games is not a problem unique to Soma. It's a topic I'd like to explore ah. in a future video because I think oh, there is it the is. best uh... candidate for some compelling experiences that couldn't be reproduced in other media. I don't want you to have any influence on the state of horror, please. Back away. <laughs> yes, please do not. I don't. I hope that no dev in their right minds ever fucking Thanks listens to you. Well, to people like Joseph well, Anderson, well, Soma, well, which was a wonderful step in the right direction, got completely backstepped. It was like... And then uh, they yeah, went to you amnesia got Amnesia Rebirth, Rebirth which is a shit tier video game that has no, virtually no value whatsoever, and I oh wouldn't recommend it to my worst well, enemy. Well, I would go as far as saying I assume you guys probably agree with this, but that it's it's less remembered than Soma already. Absolutely, like, no one remembers Rebirth. No, and it's only been what's, out for that long, remember? like certainly not compared to Soma. So it's just like, yeah, that that's the legacy of that one. Flush down the toilet, no one cares. Um, what a sad state of affairs. Meanwhile, Soma, I feel, over time, like, it, honestly, with every year that passes, just more and more people being told to play it, more, you know, it's just slowly crawling along, being, like, appreciated. That's nice. But it is a glaring flaw in Soma that no. persists from beginning a to end. A glaring flaw? Beginning to end. The fact no, you can respawn. No. No. I get all power games suck successful with its jump scares which aren't that common nor are they that terrifying which is probably a good thing. also been like all this is just a narrative distinction in borderlands 2 if you die you just your body just gets reassembled in a little machine and it's like oh you died but you're we made a copy of you thanks for buying our copy machine thing and, and like so borderlands can't be tense there's nothing nope. exciting in Borderlands, I guess. There's no fear of failure because narratively, you just your body just gets rebuilt when you die. It's just so all funny because if that was real life, no if we all, when getting shot through the head, reassemble in something, like, do you think that just takes the fear and tension out of being shot well, in the again, head? Like, it's it's what a why is the nature of stake stemming only from death? <laughs> like, there's other stakes that you could have that don't involve death. Thing. I don't know. Maybe I, I don't know. It's it's just fucking bizarre. It's like I'm. It's like he's not even a human. It's, it's like. Well, I mean, weird. I don't know if this seems a little too low scale, but I think it's important to mention. It's like, what about discomfort? Not even like crazy levels, but yeah. you know, when you wake up from the the vision you're sort of having or the the dreamscape that you're in, like when when you're in the wall of meat and you're pulling your arms out of it, it's like that's fucking gross. It's like yeah, but you're not you're not you're not dying. It's like okay. I still I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> like I am experienced. It's like why? It's a video game. Why? You could just respawn if you die. It's like this doesn't address anything I'm thinking about, but okay. Scares are cheap and have a misleading name. They're more like jump startles, since that's all they're good for. In some of these are sudden loud noises, things breaking apart, abrupt crashes, that sort of thing. They're the most effective part some... of that assault on your senses that I mentioned earlier. Uh... For the other times you're it's just amazing to me because Soma is one of the most reserved games in history for jump scares. I think it shows a remarkable amount of restraint, especially, I guess, now I haven't played Amnesia Rebirth, but based on what I've heard about Fear Flash, it's... Oh. It's fucking <laughs> insanely obnoxious. <laughs> so, wasn't the idea with Fear Flash is that basically, regardless of the context, it would just occasionally just go... It would be like one, one per what, right? It's like 30 seconds, it just jump scares you? It'll be... Oh, more than that. Uh, so the longer <laughs> that you... The more afraid your character is, which is influenced by a number of things, but the more afraid you are, the more it flashes. So oh, if you're in the dark, or if there's a spooky boy nearby, or something like that, then you get the little fear flash, which just pops up in front of your screen, and it oh, it's a spooky face. Ah, my goodness, that was so startling. And it can be obnoxiously intermittent. Uh, it it's it's a it's it's, it's the kind of thing that when they introduced it, it sucks. every player all over the world was like, 
You what, mate? Like, the, <laughs> no, no way. <laughs> Even Outlast had the fucking dignity to hide that behind a bunch of big scary men grabbing you and yelling in your face, okay? At least there's an animation, at least there's an implication in World of something happening. They would just tell you, sorry, this is the jump scare mechanic, it will activate every ten seconds. You're like, okay. That's great. Your screen starts to fizzle in warning when you're in danger. This warning that something was nearby became a trigger for me to be annoyed rather than frightened. It was an announcement that one part of the game was over and that it was now monster time. Oh, I remember this. It's deliciously ironic. So there's a couple layers to this. And this this is what sprouted like my whole... If Sitch and Adam have laws, I think my law was um, the, the video essayist will always use a visual that disproves their point. And this is one of the Yo, most that's beautiful the first... ones ever. That was what I was thinking. There is no monster during this entire... Well, like, let me... Until... Uh, let, let, let Papa yeah, Mola like... give you a whole bunch of context, okay? So this is called the Patchwork <laughs> Man. Uh, he mm. was originally designed to be an enemy in Soma. Monster, yeah, that's right. He had a section. It was all in the game files. You can find all this, but they didn't have enough time, so they dropped him here. When you activate the power in this sector, you come back here and he's gone. That's supposed Ooh. to be a bit of a like, oh shit, where is he now? But you don't which see Which is him. like legitimately fucking freaky because you don't know if you'll see him again. No. Nope. And even if you don't, which you don't, um, the fact that you like, oh, he got up and he left. This thing, whatever He's it is, around this shambling somewhere. corpse is around here. He got up and it's alive. And what is his experience when with all of the, the, the living things that you've encountered so far in the game have disparate perceptions of reality? What is his reality? So... Going back, just listen again. You're in danger. This warning that something was nearby became a trigger for me to be annoyed rather than frightened. It was an announcement that one part of the game was over and that it was now monster time. So that, that's true, uh, Joseph. That would be annoying if if every time the aberrations came up, that that was automatic. Like every time it was a guaranteed monster encounter because it's just like, well, I guess it's monster time. Um, even though I think I'd still try and defend a system like that somewhat because I, I'd be like, there's still benefits to it, but. Um, I mean, combat he, music is basically what yeah. this is in pretty much all other video games. He, uh, it's weird that he would use this visual, because he would know from playing the game, he never encountered an enemy that looked like this. He never fought this man. This is not, this is not a thing. So him using this to illustrate that whenever this stuff comes on screen, it's time to fight or run, with a visual where you don't have to fight or run, you instead continue exploring, is just retarded on its own. But then secondly... It completely disproves his whole point, his whole criticism of Soma there. He says the problem with the system is that it always told him when it was time to fight or run, even though that's not true at all. It would have this happen, and Fringy, you would know this from playing it recently. That comes up a lot, that yeah, experience. Yeah, it does. Like, when there, there's pl like, often when there's like a big wow kind of like overgrowth in an area, it'll yep. just start flashing. I would argue when, it, it comes up more than it does for combat encounters. Yeah, like I never, I never gathered that it was a thing that was telling me combat time. It was just this is an effect whenever I'm near something that's like really wow. You know that's what I mean? He's just, <laughs> he's just completely wrong. For the other times, your screen starts to fizzle in warning when you're in danger. This warning. But remember, it's all subjective, so it doesn't matter. That something was nearby. So it doesn't matter that this is just like a annoyed. fault. Like this is just wrong. It's, it's not only <laughs> this is what I mean. It's not only wrong. It's interesting as to how exactly it's wrong in terms of what they were designing here and what they did for a lack of time that they had. But then it's also it's super wrong a problem. as a visual to use for his video, and he should know yeah. that. He never fought anything exactly. here. He never ran away from anything here. Why is he yeah. saying this? <laughs> like, what are you doing? Are you just relying, on, just relying on your um, audience not knowing what the context is of the scene that you're presenting? Because well, if you are... You can go with... What? So this was what you were saying with Mola's Law, right? Where they pres where a video essay has footage that contradicts their point. And, I mean, you've been on EFAP. <laughs> the amount of times I this mean, happens yeah. is absolutely fucking insane that they will have a visual that directly <laughs> contradicts the thing they're saying. It's just like, it's wow. It's so weird. Why? Don't know. Um, but obviously this one is particularly strong because it's the complete opposite of what he said, and he should know that. Wait, I mean, he did fighting. play the game, so it was yeah. An announcement that one part of the game was over, <laughs> Allegedly. and that it was now monster time. Mm -hmm. Soma is split quite artificially like that. You rotate between a clumped together experience of puzzles, exploration, and story, and then over to monster hide and seek. So um, yeah, I don't, I don't um, know what to do with this. Like when I was playing the game the first time, the border between these sections was not clear as I was playing the game. Yeah, I could no speedrun Soma at this point, knowing where I have to be careful and knowing where I don't, but obviously I've played it like yeah. 17 times now, so the interesting comparison, though, is he just said, 
there's a strict border between monster encounters and then ex exploration and uh, you know sorting out stations or whatever. And it's like no, there is uh, several encounters like the one that's on screen right now where your exploration and monster encounter are happening at the same time. Exactly. You've got to get around here exactly. and find the battery. Yep. Really right. weird that he said this. The construct. I mean, it, dude, even the even the first part of the <clears> game. <throat> remember with the with the robot uh, in uh, in good old uh, Upsilon. Um, depending on whether or not what you do with Cull, right, and which one. That'd be like, the construct. That yeah. Creates. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, sorry, I didn't. Re yeah, like that's and that's another instance. You have to where access the blurry. the panel, unlock the doors while it's roaming in the room. So exactly, he's just wrong again. Yep. How is this not just another way of saying when there's a spooky monster trying to kill me, uh, the vibe changes? Well, so that's which, uh, that's mean, actually it, yeah. hitting on another thing. If he was right, which he's not, is there a problem that we have these sections where you explore and the sections where you deal with monsters are like there's some level of a border between them? That's a big conversation to be had. It, it's kind of the thing where he's saying it annoyed me that this was a signal that I needed to change my approach. Maybe that's a good thing. That might be a good thing. It depends. It's contextual how much a game ought to communicate to you about the mode of play that you're in now. Like, is it a problem when you're playing Uncharted and you beat the area where all of the bad guys are? The when Nate just starts, like, walking and he's not running anymore? That the game is con conveying to you clearly, combat's over. Yeah, you're safe Music now. stops. You're safe. You can move around freely. Is that a bad thing? A, lo a lot of people would say that's a good thing because it's oh, yeah, clear um... communication of the expectations if, that you should bring to this experience. If I said, like, Dead Space's atmosphere is destroyed every time I talk to any of the NPCs because I'm automatically safe, that's just... That's just, you know, mm. combat's over, scary time over, ruins the whole game. Well, like, yeah, is, is, it uh, okay. that, uh, is it a problem that Resident Evil has safe rooms that are safe? <laughs> when the music plays, oh, yeah, when you see that typewriter, you're, you're safe. Done. You are yeah. safe. A lot of people would point to that. I, I know that this is the case, especially with how... Uh, oddly calming but foreboding the music often is in the save rooms that there's yeah. a, a palpable sense of relief of ah oh, i'm safe i am safe nothing can get me here this is a place where i can relax you know it's it's complicated like, <laughs> like i said uh, this if is not you, a black and white sort of thing if you want to go to the direction of something like they wanted to make it seamless and the borders are utterly clear and they failed at doing that or whatever like maybe maybe you can make that argument, but again, Soma is it does them at the same time, and one of the best examples is the one he's showing right now. So I don't understand why he put this on screen as well. Yep. Most of the puzzles are okay. Some are too simple. If you feel like you're actually messing with computer menus instead of playing a game, and there's one puzzle which stands out to me as one of the best moments in Soma. Exploring is engaging as long as you like that sort of thing in games. More walking and looking parts with things to find. That That's you can what read. exploring fucking is. <laughs> But I want you to define exploring that isn't walking and looking at things. That's it. Like, you knocked like out the Lewis two main Lewis parts Clark, of exploring, walking, like, and looking. That's Lewis and Clark walked and looked until they got to the ocean, and then they walked and looked the way back. Like That's what they did. And, mm. like, I'm, I'm not trying to devalue it. That's just what it is. That's what exploring is. It's walking around looking at things. It's also, uh, it felt dismissive when it's like, it's one of the most valuable things about Soma compared to a lot of games of similar kind. It, it nails the walk around and soak in the world because there's everything to take advantage of. Yeah, it's a really good looking environment. Very, very immersive. Wh Loads of stories like? everywhere it... you can find out about. Yeah, as, as long as he lets us know what it lacks that it needs, then mm -hmm. we should be okay. So any moment when he wants to get around to that, I'm all for it listen to or inspect for yourself there's not an immense amount of environmental storytelling here what what it's, it's almost it's what almost God. the best one parody. like soma this is a parody. like my pick for environmental storytelling i, I don't know one that uh, is better environment like i like may i'd have to sit down and there are there are others hard thing there may be about, others that i would like, pick over soma as well but like there there are a lot of bioshock is another good example of a game with plenty absolutely. of environmental storytelling i just Oh god, it, it hurts listening to this because Soma's so fucking good at it. It's like, what? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Why did you just say that? What's happening? Let's uh, let's get it full. Do you like that sort of thing in games? More walking and looking parts with things to find that you can read, listen to, or inspect for yourself. There's not an immense amount of environmental storytelling here, although occasionally <laughs> the game does do a good job with it. Especially occasionally, occasionally it does a good, does a good job. job. <laughs> 
Oh, my man, okay. Some of the later sites where the corpse is left around. It's the story told more directly with Simon and another character you meet that succeeds more than anything else here. So let's Man, return to that. like, I feel like you can't... I feel isn't like it it's so inexplicable, sad? the environmental like, storytelling. All those stories that you get to find out about. Of, this is why it's annoying the division of gameplay and story when a game that is strong with environmental storytelling, that line is really blurry. There's a huge amount to just be picked up from looking around, reading logs, reading notes and everything, yeah. and just, like, paying attention to the landscape. When what, oh, what's in again? If we talk about EFAP's law, the the visuals contradict what is being said by the video essayist. Do you ever you ever wonder why? How come everyone's heads are missing? That's weird. <laughs> everyone's heads are just gone. What's up with that? Uh, if only through environmental storytelling, we could figure out the tale. Well, I think that was of his example of it being happened. good, but everywhere oh, else it's not. It, good. That's great. Like he said, at times it's pretty good. It's just like. Okay. <laughs> I mean, Brandon's story, you know, Brandon's yep. story, a lot of that is to be gleaned from the environment. Dude, the, um, the sort of medical part of that area where it's, uh, the, the, the area for, like, the surgery or whatever, and then it's just a big pool of blood and then a blood smear that goes all the way out the door. And it's mm -hmm. like, what is that? It's like, well, that's acres. <laughs> Yeah, and then you can find the uh, the the transcript or the recorder for his surgery. Yeah, like the, I don't, I yep. just don't buy this. I think it's so fucking wrong, and you start to wonder like, how much did you actually, you know, absorb? Do you think it's bad because you got it all and you were like, yeah, I man, it's not that impressive, or did you miss a lot of it? I do wonder that now, with us being confused about how we travel through time from present day Toronto to the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean in twenty one oh four. You didn't Things travel become through weirder time, before you're given no, any yeah. answers. No, yeah. or you didn't actually to travel through time. No. ...character that isn't a memory trapped in the panels around you. There's this strange mix of mechanical and organic growth that might make you think about the first robot that went nuts and ripped itself free at the beginning, leaving mm. a trail of what we can call blood behind it, that structure yell. You discover uh. that this part of Pathos 2 is used to generate power. You make contact with someone named Catherine, who is in another part of the facility and is seemingly safe and detached from whatever catastrophe occurred here. What? What's happening? Hello? Is there anyone there? You bring the power back online and, guided by Catherine, have your first solid goal, to reach a communication center so you can better speak with her. A few things happen here that are important. First, just so you can understand the context of what I showed earlier, this is where you meet your first robot enemy, the shuffling thing with the spotlight, which is a reasonably clever way of letting the player know that you want to stay out of sight. Or out of the light in this case. I thought you said that you was thought it was so cool you ran right up to it and it killed you, because... <laughs> it's so cool. But the spotlight but is a really good it's... idea, though. Yeah, I'll let you know to avoid it. Oh, no. The design is great because it lets you know to avoid it. The design sucks because I think it's cool and I want to run up to him. I, was like, oh, I don't know, which Brandon will we get in the next sentence? It's so exciting. Which Brandon will we get? On the edge get? of my seat. Oh, is Joseph. <laughs> Brandon Whoever Anderson. Whoever this guy is. Whoever this loser is. This was the robot that I ran right up to get a better look at. Oh. And really, I feel sorry for this thing. It seems so pathetic. Oh my god, but I thought they weren't interesting, you... Joseph. They weren't interesting. And I thought, but the spotlight lets you know to stay clear. But the first thing you did was run up to it. And I, I, I don't, I don't There's too many contradictions. I don't know what you're trying to tell me because your sentences contradict. Just tell no. me how you feel and be honest. Help me, Joseph. You're my only hope of understanding you. Pathetic and incapable of doing anything, really. It's like the Eeyore of crazy killer robot monsters. Eeyore you lock it away when you reach the next area. He, I, so, like, he's saying that almost to be critical, but, like, that is what it is in-universe. It is that awkward-looking creature that can barely walk properly, and it gets angry it's when it sees you and rams you. It's so interesting that all he does is describe all of the things about it that make sense and are good, but that's, like, criticism. It's really cool how it looks, and it's really cool that it's conveyed very clearly that you need to avoid it because of the flashlight. But, you know, it's pretty fucking lame, you know, all things considered. I well, yeah, you've almost undersold okay. it, right? Because he just, he's identified so much of what Frictional were trying to get him to identify. It is a sympathetic yeah. creature to look at, especially when you understand more of the context surrounding it. It does look like it's awkward. It's barely able to walk properly. You are supposed to stay away from it, but at the same time be curious about what it is. These are all things exactly. that Frictional wanted you to think. And these things, yes, by the way, would succeeding. definitely come under the umbrella of interesting. I, yeah. It's not an apathetic yep. gray blob that you don't understand and don't care about. Like, wh why? Mm -hmm. 
Why are we pretending that it is? The fact that he's talked about it this much is evidence of how much he, yeah. he cared to talk about it, you know? Wanders around hopeless for a while, I guess. Hopeless. Hmm. There's another robot here that's friendly. That was stuck a on weird. some sort of thing. That, that looks was like a weird visual. Line. The strange thing about this one, though, is that it doesn't know it's a robot. That is strange. How yeah. I don't even say it's interesting. It thinks it's a human that can't get up because it's injured, and it can't be convinced otherwise no matter how many times I find Simon it interesting that he keeps saying it, it, because whenever I talk about all of these guys, I I refer to them with, like, yeah. pronouns, like with he human or she. Pronouns, yeah. You know, yeah. Seeing. Okay, okay, I, I'm, right. just, I'm just gonna be, I, I'm not seeing it. I, I see a machine, a robot talking. This part is great for two reasons. The first is that it's unusual enough to get you wondering about what's going on. It's also hmm. a little creepy. Parts of the story in this game are much more horrific than any of the monsters, in my opinion. One of the biggest things... Uh, that yeah. None of it's scary? Oh, God. Yeah. Parts yeah. of this... <laughs> How, but, how do you, how how do you admit something that there are aspects of it that are scary, but that it's not a horror game? It's much more <laughs> horrific, but it's not a... Uh, that is the hey. game. That is a part of the game. Being like, no, I game ain't scary, but some of the stuff in the game is scary. <laughs> more more yeah. horrific, even. More horrific, yeah. Well, well yeah, I mean... Oh, not, it's not scary, or... <laughs> other reason this interaction is great is that it will likely make a lot of players think, how could this guy not realize that he's a robot? How can he not tell? Because there's a revelation shortly after this that tell reveals he's a robot? you're in the exact mm. same situation. How is this possible? Uh, this, isn't, this is insane! Let's address that directly now. How the hell does the game explain how you go from this to this? So in the hundred or so years that pass after Simon's first brain scan, this technology that the doctor in training is testing becomes the foundation for many advancements. Among those are artificial intelligence, although far from what you typically see in science fiction, and the ability to copy and paste the consciousness um, from one source to another. And that distinction is really important. It's not cut and paste, it's copy and paste. So I find this really interesting that he points this out because... Even when you've explained this, there's still a lot to unpack. When you cut and paste, maybe there's that you're copying and deleting, yeah. you know? Like, how do you want to square it away, you know, uh, ep epistemologically? What the, what's the fucking word? No, it's it. <laughs> epistemologically. Yeah? yeah? Yeah, like, when you're trying to, you know what I mean? So it's interesting that he, because I imagine that, I, I presume that we're going somewhere with this. <laughs> we'll see. I hope so. Because Simon's scan was collected in the early experimental phase, it's been used and iterated upon many times, which is one of the many subtle details that becomes terrifying when you think about it after finishing the game. What do you mean terrifying? I thought even this is horror. Horror. I don't yeah, understand it's what? And it's not scary. <laughs> that doesn't get counted as part of the game, I guess. Okay, it's that's insane. weird. That's sure, a weird Simon... thing for a video game reviewer to do, to like not bundle it all to you know what I mean? Like make these weird segments of of what the game is when it's all part of the complete experience stored and copied consciousness is still relevant because he was involved so soon in the project he's kept under a legacy section here a lot has happened in these hundred years and this is the beginning of what i think is one of soma's greatest strengths it's not just about one thing or the one specific idea that's been popularized in science fiction it's not mm. just an underwater research facility, it also deals with the idea of what makes a consciousness, or even a soul. I'm sorry, the, the script there hurt me. It's not just yeah, about being an underwater s station, it also deals with human consciousness. It's like, wait, 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 yeah. wait. <laughs> like... I, I, it's, it's such a weird, it's a weird way of framing it. To me, the fact that it was an underwater station, it's just like, that's where we are. Like, that's not really that important compared to what's happening in the station. Yeah. Yeah, that's you know what, I mean? what it is and how that might cause problems if it's placed into the wrong sort of body. It's not just about a central AI that goes functionally crazy, there's this infected, plagued version of technology that's constricting and consuming everything throughout the facility like a cancer. And on top of this, this isn't just a grim, dark future that Simon wakes up in, it's also a post-apocalyptic one. It's not grim, this dark, it's also major apocalyptic. Events that <laughs>
cause a lot of chaos too to go to right. hell. A comet has crashed into Earth and wiped out all life on the surface. You discover this in pieces, reading on terminals mostly, about how the efforts to deflect the comet failed. That the underwater facility was protected from the impact, but now they're stranded and lost at the bottom of the Atlantic. The facility is more or less self-sufficient, but more or less isn't exactly uplifting when the rest of the species just got incinerated. I really like this amalgamation of science fiction plot devices, and that in a way, you play as one, a walking, talking one as Simon. A copy a of his consciousness was placed into the body that device. you inhabit here. Because the AI on Pathos 2, the warden unit that they unfortunately call the WoW, has taken... What's unfortunate about that? Is he going the direction of... That sounds like saying W-O-W. -W. I mean, it does sound like saying W-O-W. -W. I figured that that was intentional. Well, there's also, like, when you consider a lot of the naming conventions for other things, like Tau, like, it's not seen yeah. as T-O-W, rather T-A-U is a known and understood sort of... Mm -hmm. it, it, do you understand what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't come across as, wow! To a lot of people. It sounds like the kind of... Yeah, no one even pronounces it like that. And plus, this is just something that humans do. Humans I mean, just do this. They a name lot of things... The time we do. We name well, I mean, things it, it, with acronyms that sound similar to things that we, you know, have heard about before. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with it being casually. called the WoW. Like, it, I, I don't, I don't think there's a problem with it. Like I said, I figured it was called the WoW specifically to invoke awe in a certain sense. Like, WoW, but not a, not a good WoW. You know, like, kind of a, kind of a scary WoW. <laughs> it upon itself to preserve all human life, whatever form that might take, in response mm. to Armageddon. Like I said, this AI isn't really one that's seen in a lot of movies and games. It doesn't speak or think really, so AI might not strictly be the best word for it. It can. Uh, so why does that have to decisions. do if it's, uh, does, if it's uh, not an AI uh, if you don't hear it speak? It definitely <laughs> thinks. Uh, it definitely, definitely thinks. thinks. It has You're an objective. You're meant to come to the conclusion that the WoW is a kind of consciousness. It's just that it's a very foreign There's, one. I think they said when the, the comet landed, the WoW went offline for like a week or some or some some selection of time, and the, they, they concluded that what it was doing was basically thinking. It was, re, it was, it was reassembling all of its, its protocols. Uh, objectives. Yeah, exactly. like trying to figure out what it was supposed to do. And then, of course, there's what it did at, uh, was it Theta or Omicron, where it blew up all the heads? You can't tell me that, that it was wasn't, Omicron. that was a thought it had, and it decided to act on it. But it's yep. still following directives that limit what it can do. It's just sort of twisted its interpretation of them in response to the world ending. He won't let me die. Nothing is allowed to die. This might not be all that comprehensible yet because I'm avoiding one part of the story until we reach the next area and meet Catherine. Despite all these different plot points and details about the setting, at a focus level, Soma is all about exploring the idea of what it means to be human, and the unsettling implications that human might not be the most important word that defines us. Soma brilliantly sets up the player to be open to the idea of consciousness being more important than a body in three ways. The first is that confused robot that we saw earlier. The second is Simon's perception Carl. eventually correcting itself and realizing yeah. that he's not a yes. human body. His name is Carl. And the third is Catherine. Who Isn't is it fascinating, though? That he's, he calls Catherine he, by her name. He's easily willing yeah. to call Catherine Catherine, Simon Simon, but he's not willing to call Carl Carl. Mm. Which feels it's like that's something just, worth, uh, yeah, worth that's just thinking interesting. about, you know? That's Especially when he talks about, you know, the point that Simon's making is it's really the consciousness that's relevant. Uh, you know, this robot, for instance, this it... <laughs> Like, it believes itself to be conscious and a person. Perfectly normal sounding human woman that you want to meet. Another person that can help you and speak to you and work with you who will have answers and can explain what's going on. And then you meet her and she's another broken robot stuck on the floor. There you are, upright and everything. No, not you too. I was really hoping you were human. This time it's different though. Catherine knows what she is, and she doesn't seem to care all that much. She understands what's happening and has accepted it. And the lead up to this conversation, where it's properly revealed that Simon isn't the same Simon we started with, is really great in my eyes. Have you looked at yourself lately? You're a walking, talking diving suit with some electronics left on for good measure. I, I don't. You don't want to think about it? We'll start thinking about it. The robot thought he was human. You and Simon both thought you were human. You thought Catherine was human, and this eases you into concluding that maybe you weren't wrong. 
the human body might not be there, but it's still a person. They're still alive, still a consciousness. You treated Catherine like a person before you saw her, just like you think I'm human, even though I'm only a voice coming through YouTube right now. Hee 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 hee, but this is all very confident that you're human, straightforward yes. and yes, this is this is some of the things that Soma is indeed about and trying to do. Is mm -hmm. the body really that important? And that's the framework needed to understand the true horror lurking in Soma. Please stop. But it's not you scary. Can't... But it, but you can't say these things. You can't keep saying that after saying allowed. it's not a scary game. Like I just said. The true horror of Soma, the not horror game. Catherine, are we alive? The final piece here is the player's goal, which is also not so neatly intertwined with a lot of the other things we just spoke about. Mm, Before she so was neat. stuffed into a robot, uh, really? Catherine was leading the only project that had given survivors on Pathos 2 any sense of hope or purpose. She didn't start it for that reason, but it became the only thing keeping most of the last humans going, in their bleak, isolated life in the water that kept them safe from the fires on the surface. This is another science fiction idea that's been used before. Catherine was working on a simulated reality that could be populated by scanned versions of the surviving humans. It could be a second world for them to inhabit and live on. An arc that would be a backup plan if the people in Pathos 2 were to die, taking what was left of the human race with them. This arc was to be launched into space with the intended purpose of flying on forever, powered by solar batteries. This was a romantic enough idea to get the survivors working toward completing the goal, with some taking to it far more obsessively than others. The tragedy here, and what functions as the second important trigger for Simon to be brought into Soma's main plot, is an important detail I mentioned earlier. These brain scans are copy and paste, not cut and paste. There's a good comic by Womp that represents this fairly well. It's a common enough idea that's been explored in hypotheticals about being uploaded to a robot body. I'm gonna look at the comic now. All, All right. right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess it's worthwhile. I'm ready to start my new life as a computer brain mind guy. Well, what we do is upload your brain structure to the servers. That's what I just said. Now make with the immortality. All right, we're all done. Wait, why am I still here? Is this the virtual world now? I'm afraid not. There's your duplicate mind experiencing virtual Earth, which it'll do for the foreseeable future of humanity. But doesn't that mean there are two of me? How does that... And then there's a spooky lady that's gonna kill him. Or guy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Alright. Okay, right. So yep. yeah, I mean, right. that's... Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean that, that's more yeah. or less the... Yeah. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so the, the, the question right. there. Well, yeah. it's a common enough idea that's been explored in hypotheticals about being uploaded to a robot body or some virtual utopia, even about teleporting, or some people say that even if you go to sleep, your consciousness breaks and it's yeah. a different person that wakes mm. up. The yeah, issue starts here. Some people on Pathos 2, clearly disturbed by the comet's impact, started thinking about the ARC project as a way out. Some didn't understand the difference between cut and copy. Others did, but convinced themselves that, if they were to die shortly after the transfer was made, that they would functionally be transferred into the next world instead of being left behind when their new copy lives on. This doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but considering the situation these people were in and that the idea of what comprises a consciousness isn't fully accepted, you can sort of understand where they're coming from. Sort uh, of, I guess. No, their it's not that you sort simple. of. It's... It, no, I I think it follows. Like, people, people don't agree or... People don't agree on these things. You know, like the nature of consciousness or the continuity of consciousness or even the existence of the soul and things like that. I could absolutely you get believe to read that be some people a lot about the people here and why they thought what they thought and the the you know, plenty of the like Catherine and others were trying to tell them how it works, or at least try to warn them against the decisions they were making, but some of them would be like, Oh yeah, no, it's insane, I'd never do that, and then they do it. Mm -hmm. Like a, a lot of you, and, and yeah, the the only thing you need is that they they were in a a station that is slowly dying, and the whole world has been destroyed. And as far as they know and understand, the only real hope they have is moving to the Ark. And the only thing that even could even though, come close to yeah. doing that is to get scanned and then kill yourself. Yeah, even Which even is, though you know, like you know, actually coming to the conclusion that that would put you you as a continuation on there rather than the copy of you. Again, it's it's complicated. These sorts of subjects, people don't agree on these things. So I'm not sure why he's saying it's like, yeah, uh, you know, it doesn't really make much sense. But like, I sort of get it. It's like, no, I mean, I understand it in terms of like a narrative, a a as like a thing that happened in the narrative. People, people don't, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like people, pe yeah. people disagree on these things. Pathetic, at least. Conrad killed himself after the scan. Jesus, how? 
um, Nazer tool, what should I do? So after Catherine scans a lot of people and a handful of them kill themselves because they think it'll make them get transferred into the Ark, this causes the WoW to freak out. Its directives are to prevent what little human life is left, and now they're killing themselves. Now some of these details aren't explicitly Some clear, but the tail. general idea they just is keep that, killing themselves. <laughs> that the WoW recognizes both traditional human life and the copy. Uh, I don't know, I feel like he might be wrong on that. The WoW was doing what he's talking about uh, before they started killing themselves. Um, yeah. The WoW uh, begins so, its right? project, like, instantly. Like, once the it's back online after the apocalypse, it starts scanning people without their permission or consent. Yeah. And it's like, why is it doing that? It's like, it's collecting people to start putting them into the creatures it'll start constructing. Like, it's just going to start. It's the whole process. The, uh, Ross has those images of the Alpha Core. And it's like, mm -hmm. over the over days, it's getting huge and huge and huge. It's going out of control. It's using all the structure gel to just take over. Um, this has nothing to do with them killing themselves on Omicron, at least. No, uh, that, that was all about the oh. project coming to an end. That, yeah, it was, it was Theta they, they were killing themselves on. I don't, hands. I don't remember any logs about how when they started killing themselves, the the WoW started going crazy. No, I don't remember that at all. It scans a lot of people, and a handful of them kill themselves because they think it'll make them get transferred into the Ark. This causes the WoW to freak out. Its directives are to prevent what little human life is left, and now they're killing themselves. Yeah, this wouldn't make sense if, because the WoW wouldn't want to just explode everyone's heads. Essentially, it would find an alternative way to preserve their lives um probably but you know think well it, um the main the main reason it freaked out is because of the mass death of humanity on earth that was that's yes. what changed its parameters the uh the head exploding ones that's all the black boxes it killed them all because yes. uh there was that one lady who was working with um or well, somewhat with Ross I can't remember if she knew uh she was directly working with them but she knew she had to get the infected uh Structure gel into the core. That was her goal. She got into the power suit, and the uh, the WoW freaked out and blew up everybody's black boxes to prevent that from happening. And of course, even yeah. without their heads, the WoW can then attach, as it did with um, Image and Read, uh, the 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 eyes and the shit. And then, and what I'm trying to get at is that the WoW created Simon with an almost headless woman. So like, it's it, it can still work with the bodies that are left behind. Is what I'm saying. Now, some of these details aren't explicitly clear, but the general idea is that the WoW recognizes both traditional human life and the copied versions on virtual space as worth protecting. I think it's also implied that it eventually decides that the computerized versions of people are worth even more since they're easier to protect and maintain. The virtual copies can't hurt the original versions, but the physical human sure can destroy the computer ones. Is this hard? I think we're safe. Oh. I was so worried something had gone wrong. So using its influence throughout the facility and structure gel, it spreads and ensures that the humans are safe, by forcing them to live on in some instances, or by experimenting with different ways to give them better bodies by transferring copied humans into robots. Which is why we have people confused about what they are and think they're human, or are roaming monsters that have gone crazy. These are the WoW's successes and failures. Some are better fits to the robot bodies than others. I think you should say it's the WoW's successes only. As far as the WoW's concerned, these are all life. I um, exist. So there are no failures here for the WoW. Reality. Exactly. Others, and acclimate better to the change, even if it requires the consciousness filling in the gaps and lying to itself so it can resolve those conflicts. Which is why Simon saw himself as a person at first, just like the injured robot did near the beginning. Some of these being... Carl. Like, why can't you call him Carl? Carl. <laughs> These are also twisted got a name. by the WoW at keeping traditional human bodies alive. The structure gel, the black blood we that saw at the guy. start, is like an mm. all-purpose substance that's used to repair or construct things. It can mesh robotics with organic matter, which is how the more creative-looking monster people came to exist. It's important to know that all of this information is given to you in a I'm sorry, mm. that's how the more creative-looking monster people came to exist? What are you trying to imply with that sentiment? The uncreative ones are... You know what I mean? Like, th that's how the creative ones yeah. exist. Like, okay. ...in a steady drip through the first two-thirds of the game. It's not like you show up here and Catherine says, let me tell you the story of my people, and then starts blasting techno music. She can... <laughs> that, was, that was a joke. Oh. No, jokes are funny.
Confirms that you're not the same Simon, but she doesn't know why or how you got into your current body until a few hours later, when you learn that you're a mix of both machine and human, a fusion of one of the dead people at Pathos 2 and a WoW experiment. It's also why you can access those memories around the facility, you're able to intuitively access the last audio file at each location, whether that's a terminal panel or the neural implant every worker had in case they got into trouble in the dangerous environment so far underwater. It also explains why your vision tears, because it's a malfunctioning camera, not eyes. What's unfortunate about this journey to each of the different sites of Pathos 2 is that everything I just explained is the good stuff, and I'll have a few examples to back that up in just a moment. It's the interruptions that are bad, and it's not just the monsters, although they are the biggest problem for reasons I already went into. Thank okay. you. So, like, the value of the monsters is to make you live and experience what the WoW has created as life, exactly. which will play heavily into your decisions. Yeah. This is why I consider it something that should not be removed. This is why I do not like the whole, hey, you mod so much so that you get all the monsters out of the game. I find that crazy, and it, it damages the overall experience. You need to see Akers doing all this. You need to see the Construct doing what he's doing. You need to see these creatures living so that you understand what the WoW considers living, what the WoW considers human, and whether or not you draw the line for whether or not these things should be considered human. But if you remove all that, it's all gone. It's like, yeah, well, it annoys me. It's like, <laughs> okay. Ironically, it feels like Frictional was of two minds when they were developing this game. There's the half that wanted to craft this really thoughtful, slow-burning thriller experience. So you have some great dialogue, exploration with some impressive visuals, and pieces of story to collect and understand, with actual answers to almost every question. And then you have the other half that wanted an intense experience, not just with the monsters, but with train car crashes and parts of the facility bursting open and so many loud noises after so much time spent in the quiet. How are these not married? Yeah, like, it's it's funny how he says, yeah, it feels like Frictional were of two minds, and I'm just, just like, nah, no, not really. So this, the, this all feels very cohesive. The train cart thing, like, going off the rails, just like, yeah, that's just significant structural damage to the whole facility. You're lucky you got as far as you did. This one yeah. is we had to, this is an emergency ship that Catherine couldn't launch unless the ship was in a state of emergency, and she said... How the hell isn't it in a state of emergency? It's at the bottom of the ocean. It's like, yeah, because the WoW is... Uh, you have to go to the control power room, and the WoW is like, set it up so that it's got... It, it's like, stabilized the ship. You have to unstabilize it, and then it explodes, and that hits your ship, and it knocks it over into... Um, I forget which, uh, which the area is, but it's the one where you find where Akers has pulled his eyes out. Um, you end up there, and it's like, what? That that's not married now. How is that not married? Why? Why are you saying? Why did he say you have a lot of sequences where it's quiet, and then there's loud parts? This is clearly a contradiction. Like, <laughs> what? Uh... Yeah, Delta. Which is a real shame, because it was those quiet moments that I enjoyed the most, and they succeeded far more with their own kind of tension. So, so there's some slight, this kind of exciting, intense moments? But you bitched I mean, about the server room! Well, I'm confused. It's, it's almost like he's implying there isn't... That there, there's not much value to be gained from the uh, intense, action-y moments. That if anything, they get in the way. But why? Okay. Yeah, I don't think you've given us a reason why, you just said that they are lost at the bottom of the ocean, wondering what might be coming next as you drift from one site to another on a platform, and another even better version of this when you take the long elevator ride down to a much deeper part of the ocean, an event that carries weight because you have to spend time preparing a new body to withstand the pressure when you got much further down, uh -huh. and once you reach here, you have the best part of all for an intense experience. When you feel like you're so vulnerable in this alien place, exposed as you wander through it, hoping you're going the right way, and it doesn't resort to any of the jump scares or shoving stuff in your face to achieve that. The reason you're going through all of these areas is the goal that Simon and Catherine set for themselves, to find the Ark full of virtual copies of all the humans on the base, upload themselves onto it, and then launch it into space. This is far more humble than a save the world ending and more in line with making some last ditch token effort to do something instead of sitting around sulking. They have no other options really. 
Or maybe they do. We'll get back to this. This was never about certainty. It's about hope. So as you try to find the Ark, you go through a series of sections in the game. Story, exploration, hide and seek, intense scripted sequence. And these keep rolling along until the end of the game, with the story having some cool moments, the exploration being more enjoyable than in most games, the hide and seek parts being always a chore, and the scripted sections occasionally no, being a chore, hiding, but mostly yeah. not really. Okay. There are two things that I want to focus on in Soma that I think illustrate how the game uses interactivity to give the player a unique experience, or something close to it. Something that I think couldn't really be replicated in a book or film. I'm glad you've acknowledged that. It feels at odds with other things you said, though, but okay. Yeah. Or at least it wouldn't have the same impact. Just make sure it's all bunched together with the structure jam connecting all the parts. The first is the game's most compelling puzzle, which, like many in the game, is presented as more of a problem instead of a screen announcing its puzzle time. This is a little over halfway into the game. You need a passcode to unlock the way forward, and the only people who know what it is are dead. No, of course not. Except that Catherine made a copy of almost everyone. This part of the facility has her workshop, which is, coincidentally, where you learn how it is that a copy of your consciousness was available to be put into a body by the WoW when it started trying- so That wouldn't be a coincidence, then? Yeah, it's not a coincidence. It's there's a reason. It follows. Yeah. <laughs> and to create new people. Kath, what is this? Why do you have a file of me? You are one of Doctor Munchie's templates, a legacy scan. You collect the necessary components and identify the right person who would know the passcode to create a simulation, so you can ask the person for the information. Once you grasp the idea, it's pretty straightforward, especially if you've been paying attention as you play the game. Which For me, I started been. the simulation the first time without much thought, and it wasn't until it began to run and the guy inside the... I find this funny because you, you understand what's happening here is that it, it worked perfectly on him, this sequence. He went in the yeah. way Frank Chanel want you to, which is to not really think about it, but gradually start to really think about the horrors of what you're doing. Exactly. And it, and it got him, which, like, the, all the sequences <laughs> are about that, all the monsters are about that, all the fucking environmental storytelling is about that. That's what the game is. It's supposed to terrify you with those thoughts. Yep. But he somehow managed to say, like, that was a really good part of a puzzle. You're like, <laughs> okay. All right. The computer mm. was confused and borderline scared that I realized what I had done. Or rather, I realized that the solution to this puzzle wasn't that simple. Where did everyone go? Don't be afraid. Chuck? What happened? I, I can't see anything. There's nothing here. And so began many attempts, guided by Catherine, to create an artificial environment in order to convince this guy that he's safe, that he isn't in a simulation after all, and that he's relaxed enough to give over the passcode. This is twisted enough on its own, since it involves tracking down different backgrounds to use to make him more at ease, and then raiding his private quarters for information so Catherine can fake the presence of his girlfriend within the simulation so that he trusts her, yep. with a fabricated voice to go along with an equally fake model. I think we got this, Simon. I can synthesize Alice's voice from the intercom and use it to impersonate her for the simulation. But the real horror of this part snuck up on me slowly, with layers that I didn't really grasp until I thought about it hours later. The game laid down the foundation for you to accept that each consciousness is a person in its own right. If you don't accept this, then you can't really resolve anything about you, the player character, and your actions. They hold no meaning, no weight, and I don't know why you'd even continue playing the game if that was the case. If you got to this point then, I'd say it's fair that you're buying into this idea. The minds and the robots you find might be confused, but they're no less real than yours. Just like Catherine is real too, the only difference between her and the other robots is that she's sane. So each time that you run this simulation, you are effectively bringing this person to life, a new version, each time, and then snuffing their existence out permanently when you're done. For him, this transition from being scanned in the chair to being interrogated is just as smooth and sudden as your transition from the chair in Toronto to the room in Pathos 2. And it's so beautifully twisted when you think about it, because you can try the simulation as- It's funny to me that he spent so much time explaining how meaningful this is, which means he won't be spending that time on the Lindwall exchange, the one with the girl outside of Theta. The, mm -hmm. Obviously the choice with you and- uh, presumably you and Simon 2. Well, Simon 3, I guess I should say. Yep, um, the choices that needed the decision elements. Who knows what 
but we still got out of time. Yeah, we've got some time left, but I don't know. I just yeah. it's just interesting. He spent so much time on this, appreciating what it means for the writing. But like, there's loads in the game that has this to it. As many mm -hmm. times as you like until you get it right. Hell, I thought giving him a tropical beach background would make him more relaxed to make him think that he was in the arc, so he'd be open to speaking. And each time I was trying something like that, I was both resurrecting a dead person and then killing them again seconds later, before doing it again and again, chair to scan to simulation every time. And the amount of times I did it was determined by how quick or clever I was in identifying what pieces I should use so he would be cooperative. Each player will do this a different amount of times. Each player will bring this guy back to life and kill him a different amount of times. The deeper horror here is the realization that there must be thousands or even tens of thousands of different Simons that have experienced this same thing, which is something I didn't think about until I was finished with the game. Mm -hmm. Yep, because yep. he's one of the legacies. The yeah, not only that, but also even the intention of the project itself. The, there's a Simon who ran, you know, and had painkillers or whatever they suggested as alternatives. There were potentially millions of them in the computer, and they were all no less real. And they all got deleted once they were done with. Like, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's haunting. The foundation for so many experiments. You can find old audio logs with the original Simon agreeing to let the doctor in training use the scans for this reason. Something with consequences that he didn't understand when he went along with it. I was supposed to save you. Hey, you got my brain on file. Maybe you can put it to some use. <laughs> yeah, who knows? You'd be okay with that? Using it for my research? Sure. It's like a part of me lives on or something. It's been about a hundred years. Imagine how many times there's been a Simon that's been booted up and poked at. How many simulations like the one you just ran for the passcode. How many other Simons had a far different transition from the scanning chair to something far more short-lived? Or maybe even far longer and more horrific? Something that might be even close to torture while the technology was being tweaked, even the original intention to flood simulated Simons with stimuli to find a treatment becomes terrifying. All because the wannabe doctor here didn't realize his- Talk about bad- Wannabe doctor. Talk about bad voice acting too. Uh, that was supposed to be like an exclamation, I think. Like he probably wrote that in the script. Listen to how he says terrifying being tweaked, even the original intention to flood simulated Simons with stimuli to find a treatment becomes terrifying. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> the little scratchiness there, yeah. Joe, we could, we could do another take. <laughs> you could do three more, even. All because the wannabe doctor here didn't realize his scan was functionally another consciousness. This is something I think about more than I care to admit, in part because I write science fiction, why but would also you... because it's being brought up why in the news a bit like lately. That? Some people way smarter than you and me have proposed that the chances are fairly high that we're Oh, innocent. well, I'm dead. This is a pretty fucking badly <laughs> I guarantee you he would not say this today. That's funny. People who are far smarter than us, like Elon Musk. You know, have, yeah, 2016 Elon, like, that's, his reputation yeah. was top-notch at that point. <laughs> we have proposed that the chances are fairly high that we're in a simulation right now. Ultimately, it doesn't matter because the simulation is so good that it functions identically to reality as we know it, but, well, think about it the other way. Think of the sorts of things we could discover or mysteries we could solve if we could run a literal one-to-one -one recreation of our history. If some technology that would look like magic to us so far in the future could process such a simulation. I've always thought of this as being something time travelers would do, send back probes that could catalog and record our entire history to have the primary source to end all primary sources about what happened throughout the entire lifespan of the human race. A simulation could do that. It could also do a lot of other things after- Remember when this was like a review of Soma? Yeah, like kind of. this feels like we've kind of gone off the rails a little bit. Like, I'm not sure what I have to say about, like, the structure of his critique in any case. Like, it's been a bit I'm, jumbled. I'm still mm. waiting for him to explain how the uh, gameplay is a total failure. No, we're past that. It's over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, just, I guess I'm just which, holding which out is hope. Hilarious because it's crazy to think that he thought that in, like, that 10, 15 minute section, it's like, ah, yes, nailed it. I mean, it's basically just definitive, you know, that the, the gameplay is pretty fucking bad. Uh, anyway, moving on. <laughs> yeah. After you achieve the first one as a baseline, 
And if the way people have tinkered around with the guys in Dwarf Fortress is any indication to go on, it's a deeply disturbing thought. It calls into question all sorts of things that should be impossible. Just like we were just screwing with this guy here to get something as boring as a passcode, imagine the more creative possibilities that could exist here. Maybe this is too far out there though, especially for this video. Let's just get back to Soma. Yeah, that'd be great. I'm sorry, Mr. Long. Red. Goodbye. The other way the game builds on this idea is with two parts, but they're linked in my mind, so I'm going to count them as just one conjoined piece. Okay, so he is piece. going to talk Near about Near the end of the game, you have to build the stronger body I mentioned earlier to withstand the higher pressure deeper in the ocean. Your consciousness has to be transferred into that new body, which, while well, I'm sure you see where this is going. Simon is not the smartest person in the world, even though there's only like five people left. Some say that he's been through a lot, and being plucked from one life into another one so alien that to him, it may as well not count as being on Earth at all, is enough to understand why he has trouble grasping concepts that the player probably won't. There's even one of the best lines in the game that hints at this. It's a really thoughtful take on another, more human perspective on consciousness and what's happening to him. I never realized how much the idea of myself depended on where I am. How do you mean? I miss Toronto. Not because my friends and family are there, but because I know where I fit in. In Toronto, I know who I am. The other explanation is that this copy of the consciousness isn't as well integrated into the robotic body as it could have been, so it has limited intelligence compared to how well Catherine functions. Personally, I just um, think the guy is a little bit slow. Uh, so okay. so that's not an alternative or theorized explanation. That's something Catherine says explicitly. His scan is simple compared to the later scans. Meaning, like, he, mm. he does understand the world in a more simpler way than uh, the other scans do. He's not as capable of, I presume, higher level, like, creative thinking. It doesn't make him a fucking moron, but it it makes it so that he's, uh, you know, see a little bit more salt of the earth, maybe you could say. A little bit more straightforward. He's yeah. just your average man. He's not a scientist. Either way, this doesn't bother me much because you're not limited by what he thinks or says. The handful of decisions you make are still in your control. It's worth bringing up though because Simon doesn't ever grasp the copy and paste part, to the point that Catherine has to lie to him to make him proceed. She explains the transfer as a coin flip, that there's a 50-50 chance that you'll end up in the new body or left behind in the old one. In reality, you're always left behind. The copy and transfer uh, are done at the same time, and are so this is complicated. Yeah, <laughs> the, okay. The, Sorry, it's it's the prestige, guys. Uh, the quickest way to explain this is just that when Simon sits down in that chair and is pointed at by someone and says, "You're gonna stay here. We're gonna do the copy, and you will stay here. You are fucked. You're staying here." Other Simon, he's off. He's gonna be great. You are staying here, and then the procedure happens. And then that Simon opens his eyes and he's on the arc. And he's like, what? Yeah. Wait, what? And it's like, yeah, you are always going to end up here. And it's like, well, I... But, and it's like, yes, to that Simon, he's just victoriously won a thing that he shouldn't have been allowed to win. Because he feels exactly the same as the Simon that stayed behind. Because he's got all the copied memories, and that's what the whole game is about up to that point, or at least the whole thing is. They have the exact same thing that makes them who they are. Definitionally, like, we don't separate them as lesser or more human or lesser or more Simon. Because that's what the game's about, like I said. Um, so, how does that fi Simon feel, the one that's on the arc? It's like, well, I just fucking won. Because I, 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 I am me. I, I'm not left behind. I get to jump from Toronto to Pathos 2 to Simon 3 to the Ark. Um, and as far as he would be concerned, he wins the coin flip, as would Catherine on the Ark. Even though, ultimately speaking, the physical bodies left behind, that copy of Simon is still there. Um, but th I, I feel like they illustrated this with Simon's reactions, both uh, when he's left behind and with the one you see on the Ark, who's like, fucking overjoyed. He's not even thinking about the idea that um, the the true Simon was left behind. That's kind of Simon's POV throughout the whole game is that the true Simon is the one that you are or the true person is the yeah. one that you are which is part of what Soma's point is. I mean, especially at that first person perspective, you know, following, yeah. choosing to follow which Simon because, um, I mean, the game following because you, you play as multiple people during the game. 
something that's often kind of forgotten yes. um, because of the way that it's sort of presented and the way that we engage with, I guess, being ourselves in reality. Um, you don't play as one character in Soma. You play as one, Simon, two, one, two, three, three four. Yeah. Four. There really? Four you play as human Simon and then the three. And four, yeah, uh, that's right. Copies. At the end. Yeah, that's right. Um, something I feel he did geniusly with this as well. It's little pieces in the dialogue. When you when you first wakes up in this sequence and you hear the Simon in the background saying, I don't think it worked. When Simon gets up, Simon 3 in this case, he says, why was it still talking? Why was he still talking? And it's such a cool, yeah. like, you know, so much separation. And then like a brief realization that, oh, sh that, that was, I was him a second ago. What the fuck? Like, and it makes him so angry. And uh, Catherine recognizes it, of course. And just the the thing that I love about it is that Catherine was obviously trying to shut him down before he could speak, but she didn't yep. get it in time for him not to say something. Are written into the new body. This is just her way of placating him. No, it's, it's again. Be... So to emphasize, in the Prestige, when Hugh Jackman copies himself, and then he sees the clone for the first time, and then he grabs the gun, and, and the clone says, no, no, wait, I'm the, and then gets shot. The point there is that both of them be believe themselves to be the continuation. They believe themselves to be the real person, and there is no distinction between them. They both, they, they're both as real as each other. And so, like, when, you know, the, oh, well, I mean, it depends how much I want to talk about the prestige at this point. Um, I mean, it to maybe talk. help the, the science, if you think about, uh, Frank brought this up kind of early on, but how does this work exactly? It's like, well, it'll analyze you into, like, individual pieces and then send you over to another place and reform you into a thing, thus the copy. And it's like, well, how do you know it's not, especially in the case of the prestige, uh, disassembling Hugh Jackman, sending him to another place, but then leaving behind then leaving a, copy. a copy. Behind, exactly. Um, and in which case and are they both the, copies at that point? And at the end of the day, both this is what the experience is going to be in terms of you know the whole the whole actual magic apparatus. There is going to be Hugh Jackman, who then the procedure happens, he falls through the trap door, and then he gets drowned. And then there's the Hugh Jackman who gets up on there and then gets teleported elsewhere and is like, yeah, look, that's me. They both perceive themselves to be real and a continuation of the person who existed before the copy. And they, yes. The, the, the thing they are the, opposite the, sides of a branch that occurs at that point. And exactly. You see, um, and the idea that there's a more or less real one, they both believe themselves to be as real as each other and there is no difference between them. When he talks about the courage of getting into the machine every time, it's because he legitimately yep. wants to be the one that lives. That's why when he drops into the yep. water and uh, Christian Bale sees him, he's fucking terrified. Exactly. Because he now knows, because like, I'm the one in the yeah. box. Exactly. But who knows whether or not that's the continuation of the original or the copy. Who actually knows? And it doesn't even matter what is the case because he believes himself to be a continuation. Yeah, it's so much so more complicated. And this is the, this is exactly. Catherine's philosophy is that basically one hundred percent. As far as she's yeah, concerned, as, you know, Catherine lives on. Catherine is also in Pathos Two. Um, the, and yeah, the, that's the, the job Catherine, completed. Yeah, because the Catherine who lives on will experience going there, uploading, and then being on the Ark. That yeah. will be her perception of her life. Meanwhile, there is another Catherine whose perception is uploading, and then they're still there. But they both, it is a coin toss, even though there's one that's going to get left behind, because from their perspective, it's a coin toss. From their perspective, one of them ends up being left behind, and one of them perceives themselves as continuing and being uploaded onto the Ark. And I, yeah, you, you get the sense, if you were Catherine or Simon, you're like, I'm the one who has all those memories and stayed, as opposed to all those memories and went. I mean, you feel like the special one because you are you. You feel like the real one. But the other one feels like the real one too. It, it feels like it was very deliberate in terms of the, the way that it's presented, right? You've got human Simon, which is Simon 1, and then you, you don't follow his life. You go to, you know, Simon 2. And then to copy again, and you're not the Simon that gets left behind, you're Simon 3 and you experience that continuation. And then finally, you see what the perspective is when you're the one who gets left behind. That feels very deliberate in terms of emphasizing the nature of how each of the Simons perceive themselves. They don't perceive themselves as being something different than the continuation of their consciousness. It's a coin toss, is the point. 
It might be just the the verbiage or something, because a lot of people Maybe. would would lock onto the whole like, but that that Simon is still there and would always have been there. It's like don't don't like don't try try not to get too right. caught up in that. More so, think about the POVs think and the the, POV. the nature That's of consciousness as presented. Exactly. Yep. I'm a new Simon. You go through the same process you did in the chair in Toronto, only this go around there's no time lapse. It's immediate. There must be something wrong. Can't you run a diagnosis or something? <laughs> oh, man. Especially with that musical cue, where it's just yeah. like, because oh, the game knows exactly what just happened. It knows exactly yeah. how you feel. Yep. What was that? It's so interesting, too, because, like, this is nothing new. The whole game has set all of this up, but now that it's actually happening, it makes you think about it. You don't want to think about it, but now you have to. Yeah, experiencing it is different than conceptualizing it. So when you start moving around, you hear the old Simon sitting in the chair wondering why he wasn't transferred. You can even go and look at him, look at you, the version that you just were and are now a new copy of, a copy of a copy. I think that having just been in control of the old version and then being pushed into a new one with your control shifting and being taken away from the other Simon is a really strong moment for a game. This could and has been done in movies and books. Hell, even I've done something like it more than okay. once actually now. I don't care. What, in Interstellar Joe. Marines? <laughs> I just, just, just get on with it, man. It's fine. Okay. Now that I think about it, but I think so much is added to the scene by having the player control it all. It's a much more powerful shift because it's your actual perspective that moves instead of seeing a clone of a character with the same actor on a screen or something like it and that the old version carries on without you and you have to think about what you just were and who just took control of that person away from you now that you're not with them anymore. The end of the game. Oh, okay. I th I thought he was setting us up to talk about that scenario. I didn't realize oh, that was it. But I, oh, that's it. I guess. All right. Yeah. All right. It has a similar Some moment that is, in my opinion, a bit less powerful. You arrive at the space gun, which is one of the main functions of Pathos Two, and load the Ark to fire it. Catherine lies to Simon again that they'll be transferred into the Ark just before it fires. This countdown well, no, expires, she did, she and didn't of course, lie. the copies didn't of lie. Simon and she Catherine never lied. To fly off into space. Really. This time our perspective doesn't change. We experience the other side of the transfer for this one. We're the ones left behind. The game ends with Simon screaming in the dark, just like the other Simon we abandoned earlier must go through when he wakes up later. Um, depending on the choice you made. Depending on the yeah. choice you made, which you didn't say was a choice. That's so fucking bizarre that you wouldn't highlight that that's like a choice. Well, he does know that that's a choice, right? No, he doesn't know that's a choice. Are you okay. shitting me? No. And okay. this is another thing that's right. like, you can, as as free illustrated, you can easily miss it, but if it, if you're if you're doing a full breakdown of the potential of the game and you didn't know that you can end life on Earth, essentially, or not, that's like a thing, at least in the form of the WoW, and you, you know, it's like, oh, I feel like you should well, probably... Because actually, because there's... Cause... You know, the way that someone perceives choices or their existence or lack thereof in a game, that's like a really interesting conversation to have about, you know, what you, it's it's a conversation that often gets brought up with Mass Effect, right? Because most of the choices you make don't, like, change anything, but that a choice, or, you know, the Telltale games, that a choice can be interesting in that it reflects a perspective that you have or a philosophy that you have rather than it being something that has a dramatic effect on your game experience. Um, and, and then of course the question of, do you convey that this is a choice to somebody or do you make it less clear that there's a, like Spec Ops Align has a lot of things where they don't clearly signal this is choice A and this is choice B. They'll put you in a situation where there is a choice available to you, but it's not quite clear what that choice exactly is. Mm. Um, like for instance, there's the one in Spec Ops Align where at this point Walker has hallucinated two, two people strung up. Uh, and you have to choose which one should be killed because they both made a choice that resulted in people dying. Um, that's presented to you as the choice, but you also have the choice to not do that and to just fight the enemies around you. You don't have to make a choice on which one you want to kill. And so, like, it doesn't present that clear. And that can be interesting, right, in terms of does the player recognize what is the decision that they make with the information that they have, or do they think about whether or not there are other choices available to them that are worth pursuing and then sometimes a the game will actually let you do that and i feel like soma generally you know signals there is a choice here but sometimes it's not as clear what the choice is um and that's fine 
And I mean, you know, this is all building up to I I uh I um didn't quite fully realize that I could have uh left uh the wow. Like that wasn't I uh I didn't quite grasp that at the time, which um I'd say is more so just <laughs> that should have been obvious, but the point being it's a difference between, you know, when it's in your playthrough that you don't realize versus when you make the video. <laughs> like, when you make the video, you should probably check. Oh, I think so, yeah. I mean, it, it goes from um, being like, oh, it's just an experience thing that you had, you didn't even realize, and now you do. That's, that's kind of neat. But when it's in your video, it's like your video is permanently shit because of that. Or at least yeah, shitter. You, it's an important aspect. Yeah, is research that research, too. Because, like, because not realizing that there's a choice means that you don't get to talk about what the choice means. The choice for do you do you let Simon wake up, realizing that he didn't get transferred, that he's going to be left behind and probably can't even get out of the room, uh, or do you delete him so that you know from his perspective he doesn't even perceive this as having occurred? There's so much to unpack there, and it's the same with the wow, right? There's a lot to think about in terms of okay, what is the wow? What do I perceive the wow as being? How do the people who are connected to the WoW or the product of the WoW, how do they perceive themselves as existing? Should the WoW continue, be allowed to continue to exist? Uh, are the people who are attached to it perpetually going to suffer? Um, or is it something that's evolving? It's like a new form of life that, you know, eventually is going to work its way towards life continuing to exist on Earth. Um, do I even have the right to make this kind of choice? These are all of the conversations that you can have. If you don't, if you make a review of Sermon, you don't realize that that's something that is a choice. You've just missed out on a huge thing. Well, and how thing weird is it? He had that very long sequence talking about the Brandon One stuff, and it's like, how did you not do that for the end of the game? For the choice with the WoW, for the choice with the bodies, with with Simon Three Two. Look, I, I and it's I like, mean, well, did he know? If you, if you instinctively made a choice, and then you, because I mean, you know, speaking from my experience, I like I destroyed the WoW, and then sort of realized like, oh, I could have like. I didn't have to do, I, you know, I could have walked away and it's like, damn, there's a lot to think about there about the fact that that was the decision that I made when I was yeah. presented with that choice, potentially not even realizing it was a choice. And that's something that you can talk about in terms of your discussions about Soma. But if you don't even recognize, you know what I mean? Like if you don't even recognize that, you're just missing all of these op opportunities. Does he not know that there was a choice there with Simon? It sounds like he didn't realize Rolling back. Which is weird because that, that one is particular. Must go through when he wakes up later. Their side of the transfer. You see this one. We're the ones left behind. The game ends with Simon screaming in the dark, just like the other Simon we abandoned earlier must go through when he wakes up later. That is so. Or not. Exactly. You, you know what I mean? Like it must damn. be. You, you can't miss that choice. That one's pretty explicit. No, I, I don't see how you can miss that. Like. Catherine specifically explained. It might just be a fail in his script, like he should have said the one we may have abandoned. We may have left behind, yeah. yeah. Catherine? Please don't leave me alone. Catherine? Catherine? There's a post credit scene that is surprisingly happy. The Ark makes it to space, you fly off, That's you have surprising a the other Simon, who is too stupid to see through Catherine. Okay. Oh, not too stupid. Okay. He's not too stupid. Right. Here we go. I can brace myself. <laughs> yeah, big Joseph Anderson. He, I can't get scared by horror games. Scene that is surprisingly happy. The Ark makes it to space. You fly off. You have a short scene as the other Simon, who is too stupid to see through Catherine's white lies. There's no. They weren't white the lies. You're the stupid she one. Lie. She didn't lie. She didn't lie. She had a whole speech about this. Yeah. <laughs> like, she... I remember Simon's the stupid one. Oh man, yeah. it's it's such an undersell of that final scene too. Uh, at least on Pathos too, like the those those fuckers up there living at large. They're not us. They're not us. And then she says, "I'm sorry you feel that way." Like because she doesn't perceive she from her perspective, it's just like yeah, no Simon and Catherine, they're up there on the ark, you know. And but we saved the world, you know, like yeah. that's what we did. So I'm happy with what I did. And then, of course, it's worth thinking about Catherine's POV, right? When she describes, I think it, we we talked about it in a conversation, right? That Catherine doesn't like sleep. There is no non-existence for her. It's always existence forever. How tired must she be? There's a lot to it that's really interesting. There's the fact that she didn't really react that hard to her own physical body's death, that she's very much gotten comfortable with the idea that 
she is who she is, yep. that that was who that was, and the, you know... She said better this way, I think. Yeah. It's, uh, Catherine's a complicated character, she's really interesting. I would call that a misdirection in the game to make you think that she's, like, a villainous or antagonistic character, when she's just a girl who is trying to complete her mission, and that she yep. encountered a shit ton of complications because people were killing themselves, or people were refusing to launch the Ark out of concern for the dangers of the shrapnel slash the instability of the uh, launching tube and stuff, and she's just trying to get it done, and who is the only person that can help her? A man who is very unstable and deals with pressure very badly. So she's mm -hmm. like, okay. And, uh, yeah, you, you see throughout the game every time... I think it's best illustrated in terms of a... on one hand and then the other. In... Um, I keep forgetting the station's name, but it's the one where you crash on after the submarine. Uh, that's... Oh, that's, uh, isn't that... Is that Theta? I'm pretty sure Theta's after that, but maybe. Um, uh, I can't remember. I thought Theta yeah. was where all the dead people were, or there's a lot of dead people, not the... Wait, the one where you crash after, because you go to... after the ship, right? Yeah, it's Upsilon to Lambda, and then where's after that? Uh, Delta? I think it's Delta, there, there you go. Um, yeah. so oh, yes, it's Delta, yeah, yeah. When leaving Delta, um, you've, you've either taken the chip out of one of the two options, which is another one that you didn't talk about, I'm not sure why. Mm -hmm. Um, Catherine is strangely silent, and, uh, you get a lot from her that, like, she just doesn't want to address any of these actual points or issues with you, because she's, she doesn't trust that it's a good idea to do it with Simon. Which, uh, she might be right. She probably was um, right. I think she did the best she could. Because, I mean, if Simon if Simon actually thought that he wasn't going to, you know, that there was a possibility that he wasn't going to make it onto the Ark, maybe he wouldn't have helped her. Maybe he wouldn't have gone through... Because, I mean, that was difficult for him. That was a fucking scary adventure for him. Yeah. You know? Nothing is wrong with it, at least not that I could tell. By now you should have fully accepted the idea that these people are alive, so this is a victory. A strange, albeit minor one, since Earth is ruined, but still a victory. I can't believe I mean, Earth is ruined either way, so yes, it's a victory. I don't like this ending, not because it's optimistic or anything. Oh. I feel that it deflates and doesn't capitalize on the potential of the story. I think I've made it clear um, at this point how much Soma's story succeeds, especially in that the true horror is in these narrative moments instead of gameplay ones. Could but it's not a horror game. They are, that... <laughs> Whatever. And also it's they, like, they are connected. This is um, what I mean. Like when I'm fucking running from acres, it does, it's so weird to be like, see, that's gameplay scary. It's got nothing to do with the story. It's like, what do you mean? This man terrorized the people of Theta. Yeah. He like exactly. consumed he's a character in the story, and I am playing as Simon, one of the characters in the story. Yeah, I know who this guy is, how he got to where he is, I know the people that tried to save him, I know what his voice sounds like, and I know that he wants to kill me for several different reasons, there could be all kinds of delusions, or the fact that he's just, like, lost his mind to the point of enjoying striking people down and stuff. Why are you, like, separating that out into gameplay and story? It's so weird. I got it. Conceptually, it's a fitting end that our third generation Simon, in our line anyway, ends up alone and probably dead at the bottom of the ocean. And for a while I was happy with that moment of dread being the end of the game before the tease after the credits. But the more I think about it, the more I wish the game went further. I get anxious when I make suggestions because they change a lot of the game. I don't think it's truly fair to propose changes like yeah, what this, is, but after what's criticizing what so many what's games and thinking about them, I can't help but do it sometimes and hope that it's constructive, especially with Soma, since I've already said too many times hope that the monsters in the game fail. Yeah, but you haven't substantiated why they failed. Yeah, you another... haven't even... Yeah, remember, he started this off by saying that it has totally failed with its gameplay, and not once has he even, like, begun to elaborate on that. Wait, imagine... He's just said that it has. Imagine being frictional. What do you learn from this video? <laughs> that people are dumb? Well, I mean, like, I mean, you certainly, I guess you learn you need to have permadeath. And um. by the way, there is a, I think this is a 100% guarantee that they watched this. I don't see how they wouldn't Probably, have. Probably, right? This is one of the most prominent like, critiques. Yeah, we're looking game. at 99.999% chance they watched this and they took it in and they ended up making fucking Amnesia Rebirth. And they made Amnesia Rebirth. Yep. So good job, Joseph. You fucking <laughs> nearly tanked the company. <laughs> uh, you ruined the series. Good I job. Would... Like I said, wasn't going to blame him fully, but he didn't fucking help, okay? It's, uh, and it doesn't help that you don't, he clearly doesn't understand Soma, which sucks.
big event yeah, before finding the space gun. It's like the end to the other half of the game. You reach the heart of the warden unit and, guided by one of the crazy but maybe not that crazy robot monsters, destroy the AI. It's not is a that very what you good call man. Them? Well, okay. All right. well um, again, this is a choice. Um, he monsters. doesn't know the that. Way that he's called a, the way that he's called a robot monster. So, is so like... wait, so with it, this one, he definitely doesn't know that this was a choice. Just doesn't, yeah, strictly doesn't you know. Can you why can did, just turn around why and didn't he, Why didn't he check, though? Because like I oh. said, I, like, why didn't he check? <laughs> you think what? before you write your your video, you maybe listen to some other reviews, talk with some people about it, which is really good to do because some people might have noticed things that you just flat out didn't exactly. notice. You yep. don't even yep. know it's there to critique. Getting mm -hmm. other people's perspectives isn't tarnishing We've, um, yours. We would have talked about it years ago because I remember it coming up, but um, the concept of yes, but... I value, because I had a friend who did YouTube videos and he had this point of view, he's like, I'll never look at anyone's review of anything I'm reviewing before I've reviewed mine, because I don't want my sort of POV, my experiences, my values to be changed based on, like, almost adopting someone else's opinions instead of just expressing my own. It's like, okay, I can understand that to some degree. You wouldn't want the, the purity of it compromised, but at the same time, watching other people's reviews effect. can really help you even understand your own perspective. Um, because when someone says, like, Soma's not a horror game, and you found it terrifying, you're like, wow, that's bizarre, what's, what's the reasoning? And then you look into it, and you're like, oh, what crazy nonsense. Okay, yeah, we're still, it doesn't really change my POV on, on thingy, but the reverse can happen sometimes, where you believe something isn't working, and then you see someone say, yeah, you're supposed to wear the necklace of bountiful flames, and then you can get past this bridge that doesn't appear otherwise, and you're like, oh... Well, how was I supposed to know? And then the person says, uh, they give three tool tips in relation to this necklace, and you're like, oh, I guess I missed those. And this is like, oh, yeah, there you go. That that would have been awkward if I'd put that in my video. But now I don't, I don't need to, because this person helped me understand how I didn't understand the thing. And I think that we live in a culture that, especially with media review, that tends to reward and celebrate just however you're feeling from the thing, no matter what. There's just nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. You feel things, you go, you go nuts, and this has now bled over and extended into like statements of, that are just incorrect. It's like, uh, you know, if if he was to have said, "I hate the fact that there's no choice to destroy the WoW," imagine he said that, it would be like, Buh. I mean, what? Are, it's like, is that is that your precious experience to be protected or what? Like, what happens now? The end to the other half of the game. You reach the heart of the Warden unit and, guided by one of the crazy but maybe not that crazy robot monsters, destroy the AI. It's not a very good moment in the game and drove home to me how much I would have preferred Soma if everything to do with the WoW and its monsters were gone and the story was different instead. The Ark could still exist, but it could have been people experimenting with creating robot bodies instead of an AI. With all of the work required by Frictional to make the monster safe. So the reason why it's better to be an AI rather than human hands creating all this stuff is because the it's supposed to make you think about the nature of life itself. Evolution, how, how all this stuff happens in the first place. What is the difference between an AI scrambling at trying to make things alive, like by its own broken definitions, compared to how the, the craziness of all the horrible suffering that we have in all levels of life right now? Or like, fucking look at the insect kingdom. That shit is considered life when they plant things in your brain and make you a zombie to get picked up by other... Like, there's, there's so many so many creatures on Earth that if we were to just try and judge them as to whether or not they deserve to exist as a, as a piece of life, we probably all agreed no. That it well, should I mean, be destroyed. You know, like, tapeworms and shit, like... There, is, there are some forms of life that are just like, fucking delete that shit. How did this even happen? Why did this even happen? And yeah, the, I'm pretty sure the WoW is supposed to evoke that. If it was all humans yeah. that made these experiments, we'd start to, I think, delve too far into like, mad scientist sort of territory, which is not supposed well, to, it's it, not uh, what Soma's about. It's, it's, it's wait, no, because Catherine describes the WoW as cancer, like a cancer. Yeah. Um, which is an analogy kind of follows a lot, right? Because as I understand it, a cancer cell is basically, it's a cell that's become corrupted. It doesn't want to, like... It doesn't it, die, it will, right? It will, it will perpetuate itself instead of, you know, dying, uh, yeah. and then infect other cells nearby, and then a, a gradually consume so much from the, the body that it, it kills, you know, the, the person. 
Um, and then and then there's Ross who says like, how can we expect a how can we expect a computer to understand what life is like, what it means to be alive, the thing that we value about existing? Mm -hmm. um, and it's all these. And then of course seeing the monsters because <laughs> when you see the monsters that are the product of the WoW, it does push you in a certain direction. But then in terms of when you think about the manifestation of the consciousness and all of the different robots that you've encountered and entities, you know, it just it's makes you think. It's uh it's it's well, what's uh, the, it makes you really think. What's the counter argument? It's like, well, think about it. What have you been doing this whole game trying to survive? What are you? You're a life form created by the wow. Yep. It, it's it's genius. <laughs> like it's so interesting I, to I think about. <sighs> when uh when Acres connects you up to the uh to the wow, you get a glimpse of what maybe it looks like. Yeah, which could um, it could and, be and, that and, all life forms on Pathos 2 are experiencing bliss. Well, and the first, you know, the first robot that you meet who's connected to the WoW says, why did you disconnect me? I was happy. Yeah. I don't think it's any coincidence that the first robot said that. It's to make you question what exactly... The WoW from the outside appears horrifying, but, I mean, you're presented with more than enough information to make it way more complicated what exactly it actually is and what the experience is for the entities that are connected to it. And finally, what it could become. We exactly. Don't, we don't Given know. Time. Yeah. You get rid of the wow. That's it. Everything on Earth is dead. Um, which you know, maybe, maybe that's, maybe that's the better outcome. Maybe it's not. It's complicated. For something else, that development time. And instead of talking about all that, we're talking about his fanfic version, which is. And that's part of the problem is that he doesn't even fucking realize that, <laughs> like, yeah. that there are some of these choices here. Could have Damn. been spent on different interactions with people and sites around Pathos 2 that explore more of the ideas surrounding what makes a consciousness. The game could have I feel like on after we covered basically everything that I could expect to be covered in terms of the subjects of consciousness and AI. We talked yeah. a lot about it. it was... <laughs> there's probably, I mean, by saying that there's probably more we could talk about is a credit to the game, um, if anything. Yep. Uh, yeah. There's so much to discuss, and there's so much that lingers with you and stays in your mind and really makes you think, and you can't help but compare things to Soma. It has that gold standardy kind of quality for environmental storytelling, uh, even though he doesn't seem to think That's so. That's not what I heard, um, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, so there's, there's so much to like about it. There's so much that lingers. Um, it, it, what, a, what a shame. After firing Damn. the arc for another hour or two with a different ending with Simon finally understanding and working on resolving some of the issues in the base, because things aren't strictly speaking hopeless. Pathos 2 was almost self-sufficient, and with the notes you can find in some of the bases showing that they could resolve... Uh, there's nothing to say. This is his own story that he wanted for yeah, some reason. He's, he story. wanted a different story. He wanted a... What is he wanted he, a, what? He, he wanted a canonical happy ending for the Simon left on, at, at the bottom of the ocean. I don't understand. Why is he saying all of this? Resort to catching fish this... for food, you can begin to see how humanity didn't have to go extinct after all. The main plot point could have been Catherine and the others splicing together new people from bits and pieces of different scans. <laughs> what are you talking about? What, what the fuck are you different. splicing different people different together? Story. What the okay, hell? Wow, <laughs> too. <laughs> Oh, Simon okay. can be one of the first ones they make from the legacy section, and there could still be a Why lot of stairs here to explore. If some of the hybrid scans, he's learned this is nothing. Totally he's learned story. nothing. <laughs> this isn't even he's close to what Soba is as a story anymore. This is like he has learned nothing. Let's just start splicing people together, and we can get the old Simon, and <laughs> I, we can put him, and we can fix yeah, him. Like, and... I, I, I thought like you're literally annoying. turning into the WoW. That's you now. He talked about the branded section. He talked about the branded section and how horrifying it was of just like creating and then experimenting, you know, and how many times did this happen to Simon as one of the legacy scads? It's like, yeah, but I mean, what if Simon and Catherine started doing that? What? <laughs> Fucking and Dr. It, it, Frankenstein and his wife at this point. <laughs> Don't turn I mean, like, out as well as they <laughs> hope. It's like, what are you? This would effectively be a way that Catherine tries to repopulate the planet with robot bodies Good that can God. withstand the so wrecked it's conditions the on the surface. It's or the WoW! It's the WoW! That's what the WoW's doing! Just let well, the yeah, WoW he, do he, it! He's, he said he feels that it would be like a better, a better story if it were people doing it rather than an AI. As if the whole point is that it makes you think when it's an AI that's doing it. <laughs>
this is what I mean. Like, there's so much more to the AI's function, I feel, than than like some mis like, misguided human that got confused or, or wants to create these amalgamations well, I mean, for some reason. It's reflected in the fact that the the developers gave you the choice to walk away from the WoW. Why would they leave you that choice if not because they believe that by that point in the game, you might be thinking about whether or not you should even destroy it, mm -hmm. whether or not you have a right to, whether you have a right to destroy it, whether or not, you know, putting an end to life because at this point, you know, in the timeline, it's pretty bad, especially when you think about life on this planet, you know, and how, <laughs> how it began and uh, all of the, every, you know, every, the, the progression of life and everything like that. But it's, it's like, Holy shit, he's just proposing an entirely different story. He is, and I mean, like, Simon's alive at the bottom of the ocean. He doesn't just, he like, is. disappear when the credits roll. No, like, it, what is he gonna do? I don't know. You know, we we, we don't really know what he's gonna do. Is well, he doing? What is he gonna Probably. do? Is he gonna... But I mean, he's alive. Maybe he'll start you know, stitching people alive. together to create new things. He's okay. got well, maybe, agency, he's got a body. You know, I mean, who knows? Maybe but he he'll can try and get up he... on Earth, you know? Get back to I the mean, surface somehow. Who knows? We didn't see all of Pathos 2. I mean, who knows if he might find someone else? I mean, what if he talks to someone and they... A lot of stuff could happen? Like, it's really mm -hmm. open-ended. It's not happy ending at all. But, like, I don't know. To, I'm not going to say it's, like, entirely hopeless, I, I guess. It, it depends on Simon in a, in, in, in a lot of ways. Like, I don't know if he just, well, I don't know if, if he sulks for a couple years down there or whatever, and maybe he just has a different perspective, or who knows what he's going to do. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know. It just to say, no, canonically, this is what he does after the end uh, of the game is like, oh, man, I feel like we're really missing out on one of the <laughs> things that make yeah. the ending so so excellent. Oh, well, yeah, I think the ending is excellent. Multiple um, copies of themselves for a bigger workforce and how different factions comprised of multiples of the same people could form. There's a lot of cool potential for what a story What are we doing? Here. It's just it's what, completely what different. Fuck? He wants to tell his own story about something this is, there. This is his own, like, fan it, it doesn't even, it doesn't combat. sound like a good one either. I wouldn't no, want this it, No, it, it, this it sounds, sounds like it contradicts a lot of the points that are being raised that he praised in this game. Now, there are moments in the game that require the player to make a choice. Some of these aren't as clearly presented to you as others. There's You're a... fucking obviously, since you didn't even yes. know about yes. some of them. Well, I mean, it's true. Some of them aren't presented as clearly as others, but, I mean, is that a bad thing, necessarily? I don't, I don't know. I have no idea. I just I just find it funny. Cause he's... Well, it's funny, it's considering that, yeah, when he's writing this review, he didn't realize that... The, the wow, he didn't realize that that was a choice. There's other stuff like that in the game, too. The game screws with your head a bit. Corpses will move when you leave a room and come back to it. This bloody door is closed when you first arrive at this area. Later, it's open like something got out. Little things like this, which are ultimately meaningless for scares or dangers, is something you might not even notice. I'm sure there are a couple that I didn't catch. They can They're ultimately Probably meaningless for catch. scares or dangers. It's really weird no, to if... describe it that way. Especially if it's meant to be for like scaring and making you think, right? Then it, it succeeded. Yeah, it did the thing. Like if we actually get to the point of the, what does an open door mean? It's like well, Joseph just said something may have crawled out of there, but it's meaningless. It's like um, when you're playing through the first time and you notice it, you might think that that's a monster that you got to worry about. That's not meaningless. Well, that's kind of what I'm highlighting. How you describe it as meaningless while also telling us the meaning of it. The fact that you're even highlighting it as a thing that happened, you know, like, there's some meaning there. Contributed a lot to the feeling of unease for me, and was a much more effective way of What, what do you me mean unease? Okay, what, did I misunderstand game? him? Why did he say it was meaningless? This will move when you leave a room and come back to it. This bloody door is closed when you first arrive at this area. Later it's open, like something got out. Little things like this, which are ultimately meaningless for scares or dangers, is something you might not even notice. I'm sure there are a couple that I didn't catch. That they feels like a broken a sentence. Of it, well, yeah, if, if they're feel, ultimately it meaningless, like, but yeah, they gave him... said they're meaningless, but they contribute to a sense of unease. So well, it's that's not like, meaningless. It's almost like saying, yeah, it's sometimes meaningful. you eat food and it's delicious and it keeps you alive, but it's ultimately meaningless. It's like, but but it did the thing. It's, it's it, so it, funny. It succeeded. It did it, the it, thing it, it needed to do. It, it achieved exactly, yeah, it achieved exactly what it was meant to do. And it made you uneasy, but Soma's not a horror game. How do you do this? How, How do you, you do this? Apart from the times he said it was terrifying and horrific and stuff like that. He literally used horrific several times to describe aspects of this game. But it's not well, a horror game. And all that explanation he had about Brandon 1, and that didn't feed at all into whether or not this is a horror game. He keeps that separated. 
it's a much so more weird. effective way of creeping me out rather than monsters and jump scares. And I have to wonder if they're still effective even if you're not consciously aware of them. The choices you can make involve killing the last human you find. I mean, like, you know what? That's a good point. If you don't pay as much attention, you might not get as much out of the game. That's true. Hmm. I mean, that, that's a really good point, Joseph. That's a really good point. You should be a video game reviewer. Yeah. On life support, she on life support, she asks to be killed. You can also kill your old self after your coffee oh, and paste so it he into does the know new that body. This is a choice. You're also given the choice to kill a living robot. Oh, or... here we go. It's weird that he puts this all at the very end. Yeah, what the fuck? Yeah. Of... Right. It seems bizarre. It's like, oh, by the way, remember that thing I was kind of talking about earlier? I, it turns out you can actually do the thing back at the end here. Helper drone in one part so you can salvage a piece of tech from them to proceed. These choices don't change anything. Oh, you, you but didn't even highlight the nature of that choice. The potential was there for some really thoughtful situations. Wait, what's oh, happened? Oh, the potential right. was there what's for thoughtful happened? situations. Support, she asks to be killed. You can also kill your old self after you're copied and pasted into the new body. You're also given the choice to kill a living robot or a helper drone in one part so you can oh, salvage a piece no. of tech from them to proceed. Oh no, These a living don't one or a anything, helper one? They still made me stop and think, and the potential was there for some really thoughtful situations if the story had been built around them. No, you what? fool. Oh my what? god, you <laughs> fool is such a correct word. I can't believe it. Joseph, have the ball sack the, up and tell me what they fucked up with and how it could have been better. It's so sad because Soma is in like inextricably oh bound to those decisions. The whole story that's, that's is based the, around what it. The meaning of the story is derived from. Is what does it mean to be human? How do we that. value one piece of life over another? Like it's it's all of those choices that's are supposed to accentuate that, and all those, the experiences of playing the game keep informing your decisions. Come on. Those choices are as much the game as running away from a monster. Yes. Yep. I also all find it together. funny that he's like, when he talked about the robot, a living one or a helper one, it's like, they're both alive, maybe. <laughs> like, <that's... laughs> we don't actually know what's going <laughs> on with them. Know. We don't know what's going on necessarily with any of the creatures here. We can't know. Yeah, exactly. More interactions and decisions instead of hide and seek with monsters. Shut up. More conversations and goals about. F why? I, I don't. Why the fuck does he poison the well by calling it hide and seek? Like, you're running. Like, uh, how, uh, yeah. how are we not going to color every single. Like, this is a, a mainstay of all kinds of different horror. Um, you know, horror genre. Running games, from a right? horrifying enemy, yes. Running from correct. a horrifying enemy. But if, are we just going to denigrate it and say, it's just hide and seek? Well, all, right, it's just you know, hide and seek? Uh, Halloween, Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, they are hide and seek films. Oh, Alien. Hide and seek film, yeah. Predators is a hide, hide and seek oh, it's, film. It's hide and seek. Oh, okay. Terminator is a hide and seek film. I'm not even going to hide and seek films are kind of lame. I'm just saying. I'm just, 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 just. Finding just hide a and solution seek. to the last humans being stuck at the bottom of the ocean instead of the destroying arc. a misguided AI. Soma is a great experience. You, have you didn't have to destroy it. Question how successful it is. As you see this thing, even here, even on his little recap that he might have added later, when he says the choices you could have made, he didn't even catch that the wow one here. No, he's definitely not aware of the wow one. Finding a solution to the last humans being stuck at the bottom of the ocean instead of destroying a misguided AI. And also, what if there isn't a solution? What, what if well, it's just right, you hit his capacity? fucking batshit conclusion was that yeah, we work together and start the human race and yeah, patchworking people, pa minds. body parts to create a zombie race. Clones of ourselves. You know what? The, the wow was onto something, even though we destroyed it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm fucking yeah, glad he it fucking was the wow and not Joseph running the installation. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Imagine being the stuck down there with him, and he's like, together. you know, let's not despair, we can still stitch together pieces of metal and flesh and hopefully create a new human race. I'd be like, Joe, <laughs> like, are, you, are you okay? Are we the baddies? <laughs> Soma is a oh, great yeah. experience, even if I question how successful it is as a game. In the end, this I can't help but wonder retard. how much of it was lost by forcing monsters into the story. Like it wasn't oh. forcing, forcing, forcing monsters, monsters. Uh -huh. which, by the way, is incredibly important in and of itself. You describing them as monsters, monsters. Mm -hmm. When I when I refer to them as monsters, it, it's mockingly, right? Because of the way of course, presented, the... right? They're not 
Like, the, it's so complex. To call that just say, oh, they just forced monsters in the story, it's like you didn't even fucking pay attention to the whole point of the story. If you didn't want to review the game, you didn't have to play it. If you didn't want to engage with the game, you didn't have to make a video about it. You don't have to review every game that comes out. You don't have to do it. If it's not your thing, if it's beyond your capability to understand, if you don't know how it works, you don't have to engage with it. Monster, even though to the WoW they're no less a life form than you are. Mm. Monster, monster, monster. Forcing in the monsters. Enough to stand mm. on its own. Which is a real shame because even sort of mangled as it is today, it still managed to be something special. It ain't mangled. Your video's mangled. This is oh, yeah. No. What a shit video. God damn. I hope he's improved over the years, because Jesus Christ, well, that was awful. Obviously, this video uh, inspired me to go... <laughs> this was the main one that tipped me over the edge for being like, I have to make sober videos. And, um... <laughs> It's funny because I almost want to make more of them. Like Soma's so fucking good, and it's uh, it's unfair that it's barely recognized for that. But oh well. Um, yeah. So that video is still terrible. Not wow, a huge surprise. Bad. Damn. Damn. It's almost it's, it's fascinating. It's a fascinating one. It's full of contradictions. <laughs> of Hi, literal this... inability to understand the points of the story. Missing information. I I mean, the whole, like, weird fan fiction at the end about basically becoming the WoW 2.0 yourself was absolutely fucking bizarre. Like, that Jesus Christ. What was... <laughs> what is that? That was really weird. Oh, my I, God. I, yeah, that, that... Yeah, I mean, it's just a bad video. <laughs> that's that's really all I got for it. Jeez. Well, and, uh... You know, it's... A, a lot of the comments... A pretty like chill right now. They're not like um, like for example, three years ago. So recent compared to the last time I looked at this comment section, Soma was always scarier than most other games to me. The existential drag lingers with you far beyond a simple jump scare or feeling of unease in a typical horror game. Like wow, that's that's completely counter to the entire yep. video. But that's okay, the opposite of his video. Yeah, well, that's the opposite so of what he claimed the video to be. Counter to the he video, did. while he simultaneously makes these points in the video. I, I mean, yeah, it's a contradictive mess. A horror game. I don't understand why he said that when he repeatedly said that the game horrified It's horrific. Him. Not a horror horrific. game, but it's horrific. And um, look at this. I, In regard to you complaining the doctor repeated uh, exposition to Simon sh that, that he should already know, informed consent is one of the most important concepts of modern medicine. This means you're... And they go on to explain it. I'm just saying you're like... <laughs> it's such a bad video. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> So it was so terrifying, it left me feeling a sense of dread for weeks after I finished playing it. Not a horror game, bro. So, too bad. <laughs> That's right. Um, they said, I'm sad you missed the survey section. There's two in the game. And with the knowledge you have before the first, it's like, yeah, no, he didn't do that. Yeah, that's a that's a big thing to talk about, that they present you with the same questions at different points in the game uh, to see how the experience itself has changed your perception on these things. What you, a great idea that was. Someone's got the helper robot you have a choice to kill might have a human mind. The robot itself doesn't have the capacity to speak, but it shows human or animal characteristics, such as being grateful that you freed it. Yeah, yeah like well, he didn't it's, notice it's, that. When we talk about the whole thing, right, the game Soma, which, as Rags has helpfully pointed out, is the Greek word for body, that, that like, a lot of... That, that, there's a level of, like, dysphoria between the consciousness and the way that that can manifest in the world... And there's a lot of conflicting information in terms of the robots that you encounter and their perception. I mean, the other robot that you're talking to, like, his perception of reality is totally different from what it actually is. He's just, like, talking gibberish. Meanwhile, the helper robot, who comes across more like a, like a dog, right? Like a really helpful doggo, seems to actually grasp the situation. So it's kind of an interesting thing to explore in terms of, like, the consciousness and the way that that manifests and how you don't quite know what their experiences are but still need to make a judgment in order to, you know, advance your own situation anyway. And there's a lot of that throughout the game. The fact that he just said, oh, yeah, you know, like, the human robot and then just, like, the helper robot thing. The fact that he just said it so flippantly and dismissively. It's like, shit, man. Like, <laughs> you know? 
How much did you not understand about the experience? A lot. Um, really unfortunate. That's all I can conclude from this, is that he, he didn't understand a lot of what the game was, uh, had to say. Top comment from one year ago. It's still a horror game, Joseph. Existential dread and shock over a worldview altering revelation can be catalysts for horror. And then someone responds to that comment saying, he never said it wasn't a horror game, he just said it wasn't a good one. He, no, he literally, literally, he put it up on the screen in text. text. On the screen, saying that so wrong with isn't you. a horror game, it isn't scary. You can't get more explicit than that. He yeah. made it a point to explicitly have it in text. That, there it is. Yeah. Like, so it, he, he wanted real. you to make sure that this yes. is a point that was really driven that home. Stuck with you. That really sticks with you. Exactly. Soma isn't really a horror game. It isn't scary. <laughs> Played Soma for the first time last month. Sorry you didn't have the same experience as me in terms of the scares. This game got me pretty good. See what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's so many people in the top comments that are just like, it was scary, though. <laughs> well, <laughs> like, I, think, I think it's what you said. You know? I know, you're big and brave. Yeah. Eventually, people will hear about Soma, play Soma, and then get something from it, because it's a great game. Look at this. This one's from six years ago. Man, that robot girl asking, is this the arc? I was so worried something had gone wrong. Devastated me. Yeah, that's fucking yep. sad, oh, well. isn't it? That's really fucking sad, isn't it? Makes Honestly, you really wonder. You know, but, uh, Makes you really think. You know, but I think the story would be improved if uh, if Simon and Catherine started splicing together <laughs> people's consciousness <laughs> to try Jesus and Christ. humanity. It's, it's hard enough to find out who's human and who isn't human when it's just one mind. When you start splicing multiple people together, Jesus yeah. Christ. Now that's a horror scenario. Honestly, I think this game is even more scarier than Amnesia The Dark Descent, not because of the monsters, which are absolutely horrifying, but the isolated post-apocalyptic Mariana Trench-like setting added so much horror to it as well, not to mention the feeling of hopelessness throughout the game. It's no coincidence it's... that you're meant to feel like the whole universe is crashing around you, simultaneously physically doing that, and then from a mental perspective. This is absolutely like, this is adjacent to Lovecraftian horror for sure. It oh, yeah. is a, it's a, yeah, it's, it's just a different kind of horror and the dark descent's terrifying and so is this but they just they're different flavors of a, mm -hmm. of a similar kind of experience um and they're meaningfully different um and, and i and i value them both immensely for the different experiences that they bring we're not done um, yet though so this is another sort of you know is, is it worth Getting Soma, let's find out. Hi everyone, this is Carrick from ACG, and today I bring you the review for Soma by Frictional Games, available for PC, Mac, Linux, and PS4. This game you tells bet. the tale of Simon, a man with brain damage from a prior accident, who goes in to get his brain scanned in the hope that the doctor. It's not a. It's not a future accident. It's not an accident that hasn't occurred yet. It's a prior accident. Okay, I just making <laughs> sure. I just get. A, sometimes I get confused. It's good doctors might be able to find a way to fix the issues he's having. You know, just like Total Recall and Quaid. And as you know, that went off without a hitch. The same thing happens here with Simon waking up somewhere completely alien to him. The game then delves into the mysteries Toronto, of self, yes. virtual reality, murder, and transformation. In fact, there are just a great deal of similarities in theme to Total Recall, which makes sense as the first quote you see is from the author of Total Recall. A first-person horror game set in the confines of an unknown location okay. with a character... It's, yeah, I guess. What's the... <laughs> What it, what's the first quote again? I I didn't I can't even remember. It's uh, the quote on reality, right? I think it's the reality is that which when you thought believing, believing, believing in it doesn't in go it away. Doesn't, yeah, yeah uh, I gotcha. Go yeah, it's a good one. Questioning who he is with minimal weaponry to defend themselves. This sounds like the typical setup of a hundred horror games, right? Well, let's see if Soma deals the goods, offering an elegant, eclectic romp into the experience of what someone might see if they took a drink of its namesake. Or maybe Soma falls flat on its face, a direly negligent title with only subtle, useless connections to the literary works of Philip K. Dick and H.P. Lovecraft. So let's check it out. This is the review for Soma, Underwater Bunkers, a world where craftsmen drills breed like wild cats, rampant AI as if... Man, this is a... A busy it's script. Totally strained. Yeah, this is this is a uh, we got a lot of a lot of words are happening. I think uh, uh, busy is a good way of describing it. If there was any other kind, and see an enemy fisting. Remember to subscribe if you like the review. All Graphics right. Are up first. Chromatic right. aberration. The game. Mm -hmm. That's what this should be called. If a little is awesome, then a ton must be better, right? You see, at first the game just looks good, not great, but acceptable with fairly high resolution textures and highly interactive environments. Did I say interactive? Sorry, I meant cluttered. 
shit is strewn Buttered. everywhere, and at times it feels like the entire game is playing some kind of trick, as if they just now realized interactive and physics-based items can be put in an engine, and so crap, it's throwable, spinnable, and flickable. My why is that a, why is I that didn't a realize it would be so well, upsetting off, to have a mug, and you could lift it up if you want to. Well, I don't want to skip past the current aberration part, right? Um, that too. But, like, don't show all these things that don't have it, except specifically when it does pop up, which is specific for when it happens. It happens for a reason, in, you know, contextually. Um, I, I, I don't know, I guess he didn't yeah, I'm he notice that. Aberration in the game. Max Payne 3 is chromatic aberration in the game. It's got a lot, that yeah. Has a lot. Well, it's, yeah. It's something you can turn off much. as well. Yeah, so also, yes. it's almost, at that point, it's like, so what the, what's the problem then? <laughs> and, like, yeah. what... Why can't you just look? They're just items. It, it probably would make it might take them more work to make all these items non movable than to just put them in there and have them be something you can interact well, with. And like around, the crux of his point is that it's senseless. They're just here for the sake of being here, not for any reason. Doesn't Not add to every the game object at all. has a narrative or mechanical purpose. If you want to pick up the cup, you can do it. Yeah, if you sometimes want to. the mug like... is just a mug, and that's unacceptable, Rags. Yeah. Uh, okay, um, I'm sorry, my dude, that the green mug doesn't have any big narrative or meaningful gameplay purpose. I'm sorry. <laughs> there are, there uh, are bits and bobs, household objects that would exist in people's rooms that only really help you feel like these rooms are real and people used to live here. But really, it's just exactly. crap. I feel like when people say, how come I can interact with everything, is the exact kind of person I, know, I can understand saying, I can't interact with anything. Yeah. Yeah. Might as well throw it in there. The important items change the icon on the screen, resulting in a swinging around kind of gameplay where you look for whatever. You couldn't do a sentence without chopping that up. That was I was actually struggling to know what he said exactly there. I was uh... look, you know, it's a it's a YouTube video. It's not live. You can do a number of takes until you get a good one. If you can't manage to get out a maybe very short was a paragraph, maybe he did, which indicates an even larger issue. <laughs> But uh, I surely you can, as a YouTuber, you can get out a short paragraph that you have pre-scripted down onto a word processor without having to take multiple cuts and splice to get. Oh no, splice together oh, no. multiple no. like sentences into some monstrous abomination. For matters versus finding the 333rd Craftsman Drill. Once you awaken in your new digs, the setup becomes much easier on the eyes with unique and mysterious locations exuding the eerie feeling you know the developer was going for originally. Nothing ever looks- So it wasn't eerie from the start? How was it not I, eerie from the start? I guess it's not, in the dark room with spooky lights and all that sparking and then horrible gurgling and screaming sounds and stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I guess it wasn't enough, okay. Great though, it's passable with the high number of environmental effects like when seeing the bad guys your vision begins to corrupt like movies would have you believe computer code does when you get hacked. It's all fairly bog standard stuff but it's presented well if a little on the basic side. Animations, enemy design, okay. and texturing are all also done pretty well, but at times it really does feel like they were cribbing from the likes of Aliens, The Last of Us, and System Shock across their entire design. In uh, what way do you mean that? Uh, you were, aliens you and The Last of Us? You're gonna have to justify the words you just said. Aliens because, because of the of... fact that there's wall things and things can be in the walls, is that what we're doing? Because the flesh, like... And technology meld has like alien isn't about that. My guess is that he's talking about how the technology is kind of looks a little bit dated while being futuristic at the same time. I thought he was because of the visual that he's talking about the the way that like the the wow and the flesh and yeah. everything and in the walls. I figured that's what he meant the Lost of Us with that because of the mush the spores and the the yeah, mushroom maybe. stuff yeah. because uh, but it's... again the comparison's weird because this is like fleshy bits compared to fungus soma feels um, like its own shit even the, obviously yeah. it would have inspiration but like at the same time it's like this is I don't know. it was like he couldn't just say it's good and just move on yeah this like is sufficiently the... different than other things yeah That's the most fun. yeah i don't know anything that uh Th that really would be confused with this. I think that the design of the WoW and the structure gel elements and, I mean, the rat was a good example of how it just makes something that doesn't look like anything that I've really mm. ever seen. Uh, I think it's got great, unique vibes to it. Most enemies move with a politician's grace, meandering fellows without usable... Politician's grace, okay. ...appendages okay. for doing much more than... Wait, a lot of politicians are very graceful. That, that, They're not all zombies. Out. <laughs> yeah, a lot of politicians are very smooth-mouthed and you know, silver-tongued and charismatic. 
headbutting their way through doors and occasionally turning on the speed when they sense you. Where the game does excel, however, are little robotic animations, which is strange to say, but to me personally, the robot- Wait, was he complaining that they get faster when they sense you? It, it's that's the, the strangeness of the yeah this. the strangeness of the structure of it the he, sentences yeah the way that he structures this c makes me feel as if that is supposed to be a complaint which Robots. i don't agree with you meet within the game have far more emotion and atmospheric resonance than any of the creatures you actually face what do you mean why because they're talking to you because they're like conscious supposed to screaming that are talking to you is it yeah, I... yeah? I don't know, uh... He's, I... Okay. That could be due to their insanely low risk factor, the creatures, I mean, but I'll get to that in a moment. Underwater okay. environments are done very well, though, with texturing and polygon clipping across fluids and other missteps sort of taking that back, especially when you're not submerged in water. When you're submerged in water, it's fine, but anywhere else where water is moving around or within a room, it actually looks pretty poor. Overall, I would say I okay to good notice. graphics, hmm. but with some missteps, like their insane overuse of chromatic aberration. A little is good, so insane as I said, overuse. covering the universe. No, this is much. the server room. There's <laughs> actively a monster tr that that you have to avoid. Loads here. of electrical systems as well. Uh, like I, I don't yeah, know. This, turn it off if you don't like it. There's a total narrative reason, 100%, why there's a chromatic aberrative effect that's going on. And if it escaped you, then I don't know. You suck at your job. I guess I'm not sure must be great. The injury effects in the game turn the chromatic aberration as well as other effects up to a point of causing some pretty serious eye strain. Well, you, you are a machine getting damaged like it's supposed to... Mm -hmm. oh, so you can turn it off. Like if it that. is actually yeah. causing eye strain, then yeah, you can turn it off. Yeah, you can turn it off. This is like complaining that by default the game is set to 90 FOV, but I like 100, yeah, and I can yeah, set it to 100, exactly. but I, I ain't gonna. <laughs> okay, then. If not just downright being ugly and due to the way the game works, there's a chance you might be in this state for a very, very long time. Yeah, Experience in the world like someone's macing you every 30 seconds is not much fun. Lastly, the graphical design of the world means lights flashing, strobing, knobs to knobinate, levers to levitate, and all kinds of interaction. However, due to the way the game is presented, it can be downright impossible to tell if a button is pushable or if it's just static, resulting in you swiping your view left and right across every generator, I swear, I never had this issue. Like, if, no, if it's a like random that. drill on a table, I'm like, well, I'm not going to do anything with that, right? I don't need, I don't need that. But if, but if I'm a... looking for... It, and there's glowing buttons. The buttons often glow. They're yeah, red. Yeah, they often have a locked, big green or green, red glowing. It's yeah. Them. Or levers. They usually be important. Like, yeah, I had another spot. Yeah, I mean, it's all, it's all pretty intuitive. I think... Um, for most of us. I, I know how to fix it. If we put yellow paint on all of the ones Ooh, that are interactable... Yeah, yellow paint. Yeah, the people who came before you, they were like, you might be uh, a, a, a fucking idiot and dumb, <laughs> stupid head. Get some yellow so paint. So we need to make sure that you don't miss this ladder, so we need to we need to splotch it in yellow paint. Gyrating okay. gear, power switch, and light switch in a room. It's a design decision that I think would have been helped with a bit more graphical finesse. Sound, music, and voice. Oh, hi. Didn't hear you come in. It's weird that he says the name of the next section and not really that much different of a cadence or inflection yeah. than what he's normally been saying. And that's supposed to be the indicator that the next section is beginning without any sort of like visual you know, thing for it. Yeah. Simon Jarrett, right? Dr. Munchie? Oh, it's but, so much louder. Uh, just Mr. Mm. Munchie, but I'm working on it. <laughs> Actually, you're helping me right now. Is this part of your thesis work? Yeah. Yes, it should. I guess he's he found the button. He didn't even have to wiggle his thing over everything. He he, he did nail it. He pressed the button. He just pressed the button because it looks like a button. He used his eyeballs. Is that <gasps> no choice? He just picked up the object. It was just right there, and he just like instantly moved his cursor. Well, to be fair, there's it. yellow wow. on that object, so. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And the button was yellow too, I suppose. Yeah. I like how the little loading icon in the bottom right is a little brain scan. Yep. Yeah. 
Oh, wow. You just went and, and fucked them up. And sound is up first in the trilogy of awesome, as usual. And it's excellent with 3D audio cues continually played That's out. That's probably footage of his actual playthrough, too, that Catherine was like, you're going to have to take a chip out of whatever. He's like, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> like, I will do oh. that, lady in computer. You sneak, stealth, swim, and sprint past enemies on your way to finding out just what the hell is or isn't going on. Those enemies also sound really amazing, though a couple of those sounds do seem to be a little bit cribbed from past horror games. Though also, so uh, what do you mean, like when, are, like, are like, they? like are screaming, you an roaring, goggling? They seem to be cribbed. Like, are you saying well, they yeah, are? Can you are provide, well, just can you provide an example of what you mean by that? But how could you that's possibly? Like, that's like say like like when a creature goes brah it's like yeah that's uh, kind of copying yeah, that other creature that went brah maybe that is what he means like yeah how when could it, you possibly that's quite an accusation to make without like any supporting evidence whatsoever or a specific being mentioned and if you don't know then keep your mouth shut some audio effects are missing in places, like many times sounds reverberating normally underwater just seem to cause the game to miss out on that extra immersion level that's required for a horror title. And to me, that was a big misstep, especially when you're supposed to be underwater and things do sound the same. It's sort of like hearing gunshots normally in Destiny on the moon. Music. Now this was oh. really purely... <laughs> okay, oh, that's the music <laughs> section. Hearing oh, gunshots sorry, in Destiny on the Moon. On the moon. I Music. The Music. Why, <laughs> by the way, to defend Destiny, I imagine that the reason why is because all of the planets and everything in Destiny, there's like magic that makes them habitable, so it's probably got an atmosphere. Hence, the guns sound the same. I don't even like Destiny, but like, that's probably why. I don't know. I thought it was sufficient in some of the differences in sounds between water and. Uh, I did, yeah. Part of the problem is when we have no examples, it's just like, I mean, if you say so, dude. Yeah. Like, okay. Dynamic ambient, meaning it's soothing layers of constant synths and rarely any formative beats until something interesting happens or you start getting chased by the bad guys that look like they have a case of Amsterdam rot. It just doesn't really get into your head. It does what it's supposed to, layering another atmosphere on top of the visual and physical experience, but it's really no more than that. Voice. Damn. <laughs> it's sad because the soundtrack right, right, in Silver right, is right, wonderful. Right, 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 we're done with it too. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't uh, really make an over. impact. All right. Uh, that's it. That fucking the, the the main theme, like the song they play in the credits, it yeah. always just gets to me. There's a song. Inextricably connected to everything to do with this game at this point. This is hit and miss, with some characters hitting emotional resonance really well, like some of the robots left around the abandoned complexes you end up spending most of your game time in. Others, like Simon, hit uh, most of the time, but for what's right. being experienced, sometimes he sounds like a bartender listening to the town drunk. Uh-huh. Okay. Hmm. Really? That's interesting. Now, without spoiling the game, I could say uh, that you could explain some of that away with the plot, but not all of it, depending on the timing and the subject matter being discussed. Gameplay. Again, oh, okay. right. <laughs> not even examples, but oh yeah. Spoilers, I can say this. Simon goes in to have his head examined, and from that point on, just like Total Recall, you're sent on a ride that has you questioning. He keeps saying Total Recall. Why does he keep thing? comparing it to Total Recall? It's really not that It's similar. really not connected at all. And everything from your existence as Simon to the future of mankind to virtual torture. You uncover the mystery in the tried and true manner in which massive mysteries like this must be solved. By turning dials and knobs, because as we know, the universe runs on the circle of life. And what better way to demonstrate that than a knob that goes from nothing to something, which then turns on a thingy, which alights the doodad so that the whatchamacallit can be activated. You see, Fucking these problems hell. start what right the at the beginning. Fuck? I, the so, so, like, if I don't actually have a degree in uh, futuristic electrical engineering, like, how do you think this is... <laughs> uh, what... Like, what do you, uh, you want? know, you know the I need puzzle. You, I need these reviewers to start yes, telling me what the to fuck navigate, they want. In order to navigate this place, you press buttons and you pull levers. Yeah. Yeah. You as you assemble components, you get things, and you move them around. Uh, yeah. This little yes. panel was opened, and Brandon one I think stabbed the previous one or fried it, or whatever. So you have to get a replacement chip, make sure it's got the right stuff on it, put it in, and close the clasps, and then close the thing. Yes. There's context it's, for it in universe. It's simple from a gameplay point of view. Yes, yes, yes. What's the problem? The whole point of the panel is that it is accessible by other people for repair and maintenance and utility purposes. That's the point. You're not going into the individual wires and trying to manufacture the metal strands and weave them together so that electricity can flow through and them. And why the fuck would you? Why? Why? Tell me what you want. 
<laughs> Doodads. Is, instead Soma of just bitching, tell me what's by wrong. the numbers as a horror game, you're presented with a mystery and you go forth. Danger is required and so it shall be here. This time it's in the form of corrupted man things mixed with an underwater infection and an AI that's figured out, like all AIs are wont to do, that humans shouldn't be at the top of the food chain. They should be somewhere right around <laughs> No, 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 <laughs> no, it's the opposite of that. No. You're just wrong. You, you didn't no. engage with the story. You didn't listen to any of it. Your brain was on auto pilot you isn't you that just... funny though he's like it's like oh. every other ai and it's like no that's it's the point it's not at all like every other ai but okay no. this is that's that's pretty maddening i um i'm really not pleased at all by that uh you just i mean like you just didn't you didn't listen you didn't pay attention sorry rags we've only we're only mostly through now the two most watched reviews know. for soma I get the impression that, like, it almost gets, because there's, like, this sort of semi-casual, ha, yeah, look at me, just talking about my fucking video games. Like, that that's the kind of tone of this review, so we can kind of, like, skirt past... Yeah, let's get, a, let's get it anything. done. Let's get through this. And particularly because, isn't the format for this, like, oh, should you buy it? Should you rent it? Like, it's not, it's not being, like, I'm an all-encompassing critique. I'm just a guy letting you know what I thought about this wacky video game and whether mm -hmm. or not I think you should buy it or rent it. And then you can kind of... Almost like it's it's easier to just say wrong things like yeah. this. <laughs> you can just like you can just say any shit you want, I guess. You know, I, well, I get this is the this is the bad you have to accept with free speech, I suppose. You just well, it's have like to... you, it's like you said, Rags. If you're not that interested, you don't have to talk about it. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, but what if you need to cover all not... games that come out for you? Yeah, about that? Right, Ooh, that's yeah, true, if you just have to. But this is clearly an example of he just was not paying attention. He wasn't engaging with the story. You shouldn't have reviewed this game. You, you should never have reviewed it. Also, there's some bits about what year it may be or may not be and how you came to be there. But to stay out of spoiler territory, I can just say for the most part, it's handled with all the dexterity of smashing your thumb with a hammer. Oh, okay, so <laughs> but you didn't even know handled. what happened. <laughs> You, didn't okay, even, so you don't even know what's yeah. going on. How could you it's say funny. it was... It was... Know, and then he says it was badly handled. Okay, <laughs> was it badly handled or did you handle it badly? I just, I'm fascinated by the fact that like, this was so over. What was this thing that didn't happen? Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's interesting, I guess. Good job, man. You basically run around taking clues from and helping out a virtual pal inside your local pe a vir Catherine's a virtual pal. <laughs> She's a virtual pal, Catherine's yeah. a virtual pal. PDA. Soma starts with a System Shock feel at first, System Shock 2, but as you're exploring, even as the mystery unfolds around you, you realize fairly quickly that this is all going to be doing the same thing through the entire game. There is no subtle layering of new gameplay activity. Oh, you, you don't find an assault rifle and mow those fuckers down? That's yeah, I guess obviously, you don't. Obviously, yeah. We, yeah, we, we didn't evolve true. the gameplay from walking and pressing buttons and reading things. It's like, okay, but... All right. The game never fucking said it was gonna. Like, I don't know. Like, I guess it didn't. <laughs> I'm sorry it wasn't a completely different game in every way, I suppose. These ...after the beginning, resulting in a mechanical meandering through an underwater habitat that's, of course, been abandoned, which means flicking switches, experiencing bad timing in the form of... It's been abandoned. That's what's happening. He, he has what no idea what's going abandoned. on in this game. <laughs> yes. He doesn't have any idea. He's just, like, walked through it. He tried to... <laughs> Get this one out. Does, do you think he knows look, look, that there was an apocalypse? Uh, just a second. This came out on eight years ago, September 21st. Let me look up when Soma came out. All right, I imagine that this would have come out real close to release. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm looking. Might have uh, come out before release. Might have been, uh, you know. Store uh, page. Gotta... Uh, yes. Uh, right, let's see. Look. Oh, yep. This came out one day before release on Steam. Right, so this was one of the. So oh, this yeah. came out September twenty oh, first. Yeah, this came. Uh, this came out September twenty first, two thousand fifteen, and the Soma game came out September twenty second, two thousand and fifteen. So yeah, this guy got a it's review copy. I assume he oh, yeah, hurried yeah. the fuck through it, uh, which is the opposite of what the embargo is there for. It's to give you time to make an informed review, right? That's the purpose of the embargo. You'd hope. Uh, but I guess maybe five hours before he was like, oh shit, I have to have a video out in five hours. Um, yeah, I, uh, yeah, he clearly rushed through it in order to get his review out on time. Everything going wrong right when it seems like it should, and lots and lots of walking. Tons of walking. 
boat loads of walking, but interspersed with occasionally you go places. Man, and you know, and Mario, fun. fuck, you know, Mario, yeah, there's so much running. Oh, there's so much running, running, running around running, and jumping. jumping and running, running, and jumping. Wow, you know, it's, and it, it never evolves. It's always running and jumping. It's just running, and it's always, it's you're always going right. You're always going from left to right. What's up with that? That's right. kind of, That's true, oh, yeah. wow. Repetitive, stale, boring gameplay. This will never stand the test of time. And honestly, I bet if the, if you if you didn't do a lot of walking, he'd bitch. You don't go anywhere. <laughs> he just has that kind of like these videos. Yeah. They just bitch about stuff because they never explain why. They never say why something's bad. They never say what they would do to fix it. They never say what it's lacking. It's just it's bad. You just walk a lot, as if that isn't most games. But. Or maybe it's face. It's like a one night stand that way. You can never tell which one. Luckily, control's good. Why do you get into one night stands with ugly women? <laughs> I don't understand. Why would you say that? Does, is he, he's saying that he only has one night stands with ugly women? It's a joke, rags. Yeah, God. rags. Control's All right. good, though once you get injured, you're a slobbering, shambling mess of a man until you heal up, but it looks cool, and though it can be ultimately... No, it doesn't look cool, because you were bitching about the chromatic aberration! <laughs> it doesn't look cool! You can't... You <laughs> contradicted yourself! You were bitching and whining and moaning about how it looks like when you got hurt, and now you're like, yeah, it looks cool. Oh, you couldn't... Hmm. Some... The script was written in an afternoon. <laughs> the That's script why. was written Overestimate as he was playing it. Thing that gets it was your nerves yeah. after 15 minutes. It still shows an attention to detail missing in some other. You were injured for 15 minutes. Damn. Damn. Missing in some other titles where you're fined seven seconds after taking a crowbar to the balls. To be honest, I was just really surprised about how rote and basic that the story was, and its beats are so. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He didn't pay attention to the story. He li he literally. It is great. I think I think that what he did was he did actually the kind of the same thing that Joseph Anderson did, where he had this idea of what it was in his head. And at that point, this guy, even more so than Joseph, completely stopped engaging with the story. I guess because he believed what I think the story is, is what it, oh, this is Total Recall or whatever. And he just stopped engaging. You know when, And then he just walked around and didn't care. You know when Catherine said, uh, drain his battery if you want, I'd rather not stay plugged in. He walked over to the body, hit drain, and then left. Yeah, like because you, my you, virtual pal told me so. Yeah, like he wouldn't. He he'd be like, "What do you think about that choice?" He'd be like, "What choice?" You're like, you could have drained it, could have not. And he's like, "Yeah, okay." <laughs> well, this is pretty basic and boring. Well, that it absolutely offers nothing of interest after a couple hours in. Sure, you can continue Man, to discover what the gets, story. It is, gets it... increasingly interesting. <laughs> this guy, this guy is like. <laughs> The, Imagine fucking the, having um, written sober and listening to this. You'd be like, "Oh, okay." Yeah, Those the... conversations that we had about the game and and the story of a years and years and years. No wonder and they were fucking like, oh, discouraged. I mean, pretty basic. Imagine I mean, seeing these yeah. fucking reviews, man. It's like, what have we done? Yeah. We've made a horrible game, apparently. You have the analogies of the barbarian marveling at the gates of Rome, but this is like, um, this is like a grasshopper. You know, like, in front of Michelangelo's David. And it doesn't have any, like, capacity to understand what it is that's in front of it. It's just not... It physically can't do it. This and block is this in my way. Feels like. This annoying this, he's block. He's a grasshopper in front of David. He doesn't... He, he literally can't comprehend what it is he's in front of, what he's looking at. ...that a glacial pace, the kind which Dickens would say, Whoa, alas, your indiscretions are too short and your environments overstay much. Honestly, the entire game is opening a door, walking and listening to someone talk to you about crap, but constantly not telling the, you what the same. Fuck, I hate when people say <laughs> the entire game is this. The entire game for, like, the majority of first-person shooters is center the screen on the thing you want to kill. And then if press you get that, the red on enemy and if, click. If, if you want to get that reductive, or the entire thing of Mario is you just run and jump. But, like, that's a stupid way of describing a game. Most games have a core loop of, like, an activity that you just keep doing over and over and over again, but it's the context and the variety and all of that that, like, makes for the experience as a whole. And it's really annoying because, like, I guess, yeah, if you don't buy into the story at all and you have no interest in paying attention to what's happening or the world and, like, the areas you're going through, then, yeah, I guess the game is just press the button and then the door opens and then grab the thing and then put it there. But, like, why is he describing it in such a reductive way?
in time. Because he doesn't you can give a shit. He doesn't understand it, doesn't care. I, Moving I, on. Yeah, I think, I think it's safe to say he didn't give a shit about uh, the game. Yeah, this, this is gonna... an 11-minute... I'll graciously call this a review of a game that he got a copy for. He wanted to get it out in time. Maybe he was... I don't know, like he procrastinated and or he just didn't care or he doesn't give a shit and he just puts out videos. Hey, they get views, whatever, you know. Not telling you at the same time, you can occasionally hear the story being stretched out. Then sometimes the bad guys see you. Give me an example. Hide, which usually involves just kneeling Yeah, but down the thing is, is that when you say that, he'd be like, yeah, but there'd be spoilers though, so I can't do that. Mm. Come on, man. <laughs> if they do see you and smash into you or headbutt you, it results in you being knocked out and then back up. And if you don't find a sea creature to finger fiddle to heal yourself, it might happen again or a couple times until you finally die. This kind of lack of terror and fear of life means for the most part you never feel any real threat after the initial Keanu Reeves. But they're not... Wow. They design the game in the hopes that you don't fucking die all the time. They're hoping you listen to the rules and then you have the tension of actually trying to complete it instead of walking into the monster directly and looking right at it when you're explicitly told not to. And where's the gamer mentality of, like, I want to succeed at this challenge that's presented to me? Like, I don't... Mm, it... Mm. Wow, mm. this is shit. What is it? This, it's... The problem is that there are some people who are just too stupid for Soma. I think that's the issue. Oh, there are no. legitimately... Oh, there are no. legitimately people... It's just, Rags. like, that's just the, fedora, the truth. The fedora is growing on your head there. No, I'm it's like, like, I listen to these people <laughs> try and, like, talk about this game, and, like, you're actually too stupid to engage with this game. You're not thinking. You think that this is just another Call of Duty or something. Well, but that's the actual problem. Bullshit. It's not that they couldn't understand this at all. It's that they didn't even try. Like, they, they're playing it like The Dark Descent, which you can kind of play this way. Because it's a, a several sequences in which you need to get the key from over there so you can open the door. There's a spooky monster, though, and then it's really terrifying. It's more surface level, I guess. It's more, I guess... I'm um... not even trying to... It's, it's more so just Soma was like, if you went in with the wrong expectations, then yeah, you can really not the enjoy story, it. And the story can start yeah. to grate on you, I guess. Because you're like, I don't want to hear more story. I want to do more running around and stuff. And, and block it all out. I'm sure these people are capable of understanding what Soma was about. They just didn't care. They didn't want to know. And so that's that's the result we got. Reeves, whoa, these guys are like starfish and dudes that had a baby. Listen, folks, this is the last frontier, a deep, dark place where mankind since ancient times felt Leviathans rested. That has awesome locations like the Mariana Trench, Stygian Abyss, and my favorite, Challenger Deep. And yet all this mystery and cool names and awesome locations does nothing. The game simply isn't scary. Sorry, what is he talking uh -oh. about? Oh no. Rags, how could you pause <laughs> right when he was about to say the meme? Oh my Nothing. God. The game simply isn't scary. It isn't tense. <laughs> uh, despite getting head butted by the walking coral factories known as bad guys, it takes a good deal of hits to They're die. So guys. you get head butted, usually transporting Twice. that enemy a safe distance away, and then you wake up. There's almost no actual gameplay except finding ways to power things on without power There's or unpower no things. Gameplay. things on the as, the, as he and shows I'm... on the screen, him sneaking around the monster that Don't will count. otherwise yeah. kill him. Walking simulator. There weren't enough assault rifles and explosions in this game. It sucks balls. Where are the terrorists? I want to shoot and them. And unlike, say, the vanishing of Ethan Carter, or even everyone has gone to the rapture, Soma just creaks like an old boat any time the story tries to get going, spring in a leak just when you think it would, and then what comes... What are you talking about? <laughs> Why? You sound like know. you didn't the, play anywhere close again, to the same he, game. Again, again he'd just be like, engaged. yeah, but no spoilers, you know, so I just gotta... Why? I can't provide examples. Crashing down under the weight of its own rote gameplay. Add to that the almost immeasurably small emotional response you get from the characters, and you're left with an empty, Damn. leaking, crashing boat. It was just utterly Damn. disappointing in almost all ways, especially when it comes to doling out the story and, well, the gameplay. Fun factor. The first hour was actually fun. The second less so, and by the eighth, I could count on my sea and enemy juice encrusted fingers just how... How is the first hour fun, but as you learn more and you get closer and closer to finally launching the arc, it just gets like less fun. I don't as, know. as the as the as you go through each distinct um, station at Pathos Two, and they're all so different from one another, um, and, and like the it's got this incredible sense of progression from when you are in the you know when you first get down there and you can see that oh the, the it's nice and it's lovely under the ocean, and then at the end it's just pitch black. And you can only, you can barely see the lights. 
I don't know. I, I, don't I gotta know. say, I find this video way more intolerable than the Joseph Anderson one because at least he made arguments. When he tried, you know? he, Joseph Anderson did, he did try. try. He absolutely tried. Whereas this one just comes across as fuck it. I just gotta fucking get this video out. Um, oh yeah, Soma, this is a new game. I got a review copy for sure. I'll play it. Just fucking get it out there and then move on to the next game. Mm -hmm. Like to me, this comes across as incredibly soulless. I wouldn't be surprised um, the guy who made this video, if you said to him, what do you think of Soma? He might be like, what? Yeah, like you would, it, it's just absolutely oblivious to its existence. I just find it lame though, because of, it, it's just, yeah, like how many people were like, oh fuck, all right, well, I guess I wouldn't play it. Who would have played it and then really enjoyed it? I mean, it's, it. it's not exactly a conspiracy to assume that there was a knock-on effect significant from these reviewers who did a piss poor job of assessing so much to the point where lots of consumers it's were just like well though, i'll it? avoid because, it like the developers worked really hard on it and then they threw it out there and then like the their hard work was at the mercy of people who didn't care at all yeah isn't that isn't that so lame to think about that they, all the time that they would have spent having conversations about how to create like creating the game and and decisions for narrative and blending gameplay and choices and then it's just like yeah but i mean fuck you better hope that the guy who's going to review it actually gives a shit Otherwise, it's just, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, you know, first hour was pretty fu and fun, and then the second hour wasn't so good, and then by the eighth, it was fucking miserable. So, yeah, you know, so it's not that worthwhile. Well, let's see what is, what's his fun factor uh, rating, if he has How many one. I don't even know what a, what a, what a I don't even hour. know what a fun factor, I, I feel like that's a terrible metric to have for something that you would apply to every video game ever. What's well, the I don't... fun factor of Spec Ops The Line? What's the fun factor there, you know? Like, not yeah. every game is trying to be fun in the, uh, in the strict sense of providing positive emotions. Yeah, fun is a strictly positive emotion, um, like, yeah. by definition. Uh, and I don't, you don't have fun playing so? I guess you can, of course, but you're not, so, you don't I, really I, have I, fun. Not, I wouldn't it. describe it as fun. I describe it as captivating or enthralling. Yeah, engaging, um, yeah. interesting, but... Not fun. It's not yeah. a fun video game. No. Definitely wouldn't call it that. Yeah. How many cool things that happened in that entire hour. It loses steam far too quickly and gets bogged down in repetitive and ultimately reductionist gameplay that makes it unfun. So I rate games on a buy, wait for a sale, wait for a deep sale, or never touch it again rating scale. This is a wait for a deep sale. A deep, deep, deep sale. Deep sale. The game is... This, he's giving it the rating. He's just off saying don't play it at all. Awesome. I, I, I was about to say, why not just tell people? At least Josh I have Anderson to tell people that. Game, I'm just like, Dumb. you know, like at least some people who watch Joseph Anderson's review would still come away believing it was worthwhile to play it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, this guy is yeah, like. They, then the they played it, right. and then they told him how fucking wrong he was. Because so. well, when he says wait for a deep, 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 deep sale, he's talking about like wait for it to be two dollars. Yeah, he's basically well, yeah, at saying that point. if if his rating, if you broke down the buy wait for sale into like an out of ten, this is about as close to like a one as you can get without it being a one. Yeah, if like it was my scale, I would just, at this point, if I had to say all this, I'd be like, you know, just don't buy it. Just do other things. Just yeah, honestly, things. going by everything he said, if it was accurate, I'd probably say avoid the game. Yeah, how can you, like, what is in here of any value other than the underwater segments look kind of cool? I was like, well, that, is that justifying playing this whole game just to see some cool underwater segments? put together well enough and mostly stable and for those who want to walk around flicking switches and occasionally questioning your own existence and time management the title uh, would actually question your uh -huh. existence <laughs> but that's all it time be. management and maybe oh. even barely that so that's it for oh. me i hope you liked the review if you did hit thumbs up if you didn't hit thumbs down and no, you suck I, balls <laughs> this is like i it's worthless this video this is, is worthless it's no it's worse than worthless it's actively damaging it's actively detrimental to a really great video game <laughs> so you are through unfair. negligence lying about this video game <laughs> so now i want to read Wait, some of the top comments Oh, I'm sure he loved Outlast. I th I'm sure he thought Outlast was amazing. Um, so the top comments on this video. First one, a very smart and thought-provoking game. I loved it. It's like, huh, okay. okay That's thank very, God. It's very different than the video. <laughs> Next one, one of the best game stories ever and well-realized. How can this be a bad game? Oh, I see. There's nothing to shoot at. <laughs> oh, no! Hmm. Oh, no. Next top comment. I personally love the game. Love the story and the pacing as well as the exploration. The game makes you think about and question what makes you, uh, you feel uneasy, which I loved. Yes, the game has some missteps in areas, but I was willing to look past them when it came to progressing the story. For me, 8 out of 10. And that comment is 8 years old, by the way. Oh, so people at the time 
the yep. plane it were like, ah, yeah, no good. Next one says, I for one love this game. I wasn't expecting your review to be so scathing. I thought it was beautiful in a depressing way. Um, Thank I, the Lord for all of these comments. I know this video is old, but you interpreted the story so different from me. You said the AI wanted to end mankind, but I thought it wanted to save it. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. 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 People being so nice for no reason. I love this guy's reviews, but his opinion on Sober is 100% not close to mine. Like, well, yeah, you That's could say it nice like that. That's a nice way to say that. Uh, oh, interesting. I couldn't disagree with you more. Soma has been the best game I've ever played, at least if you scale games based on how much emotion they generate. In fact, I consider it so good that it has basically destroyed most other games for me. Everything seems so mediocre in comparison. And uh, he responded, oh that's good. Always like people enjoying their games. <laughs> yeah, okay, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. There you go. ACG, I totally... Deep, 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 deep sale. But hey, look, you know, it's cool, man. If you're enjoying it, you can just get what you want out of it. <laughs> there you go. I totally disagree here. This game is one of my favorites. Graphics are all there to set up a specific mood. They aren't going for beautiful or ugly in this game. They're going for something to affect the player. The audio underwater was perfect. The only sounds that were off were metal sounds, which is passable. I don't even necessarily agree with that. Um, they've got a whole set of comments here, basically just explaining what they loved about it. And he responded, enjoy the game. A lot of folks do. <laughs> By the way, these comments, the he's been putting them on <laughs> two years after this video came up. What do you mean? So the video was posted like eight years ago, and these comments he's been leaving here are six years ago. Oh, okay, I guess one day he just decided yeah. to uh, respond to people on Soma. I gotta say, that, that one that you read sounded a, a little bit big mad. They're all, uh, <laughs> they're all a little, I, I feel like they're all kind of mad at him without trying to express it too much, you know? Yeah, like, they're all being pretty kind, I'd I have say. to say, I really enjoyed this game. The gameplay wasn't anything new or interesting, but the themes it explored really resonated with me, and he responded, very cool. Yeah, like, you get what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Doesn't that just come across as, like, a little bit pissed off? Um, yeah, good for you, dude, you know? Yeah, alright. Like so many others here, I think the game was awesome, a must-buy for sci-fi fans, but as a horror game, it's much more story-based than many others and not as scary, so I get the disappointment. <sighs> Whatever. There's so many comments that just say it's amnesia, their favorite game. And then you got Amnesia Rebirth. <laughs> yeah, which as far as I know has been panned. Like, I don't think anyone really likes that game that much. Well, then uh, I guess maybe they'll be- maybe they'll make another- Well, they made like Amnesia game. The Bunker, which is apparently much more returned to form like Dark Descent, which I'll be playing Halloween. Okay. Well, that's something. Yeah, um, and who knows what's next for them. Amnesia Rebirth. How's that doing on Steam? Mostly positive. That's it's like 96% positive or something like that. I guess we're done with this video. Yes. Right. <laughs> it's going away. <laughs> it's going away. We're deleting this Well, video. on that note, we're, we're done with... Uh... <laughs> delete forever. I like how it says here, delete forever. Is the option. <laughs> yes. I wish it could be deleted forever. Yeah. Erase this data. Don't allow anything to bring it back. Uh, but yeah, that's that's it for us talking about Soma in a specific sort of way. And of course, those were two videos that made it into my coverage of Soma uh, back in the, the years <laughs> they before. Really, they really pissed you off, didn't they? Oh, they weren't the only two. There was plenty. I remember being annoyed at loads of people's videos. I, um, I mean... You know, on one hand, it's like, well, it's a lot to ask that everybody fully interpret perfectly the game before, like, know, when they've man, got days like, to Mark interview. Was uh, sorry, to... in real time. Well, so I was actually going to go that direction. It's like, the nature of reviewers to rush out these reviews, it's like, you can't expect them to get everything right. And it's like, yeah, but I expect them to get some things right. Like, this is getting ridiculous. Right, rather than just making incorrect claim after incorrect claim with no substantiating references at all. And then you watch someone like Markiplier play it who by the end of it, is just sitting there and contemplate what it all means. It went through all the choices well, and, and in a significant said, uh, way. As well, that he was worried that people weren't going to get it, and he was totally correct. It's, that, was, that was strangely prophetic of him at the end. He's at the credits of the game, and he said he's worried that people are not going to engage with this game, and not going to understand what it was mm -hmm. trying to do. And the thing is, over time, I'd say that its, it's reputation has gotten better, and people have gotten to understand it. I don't know anybody who says, like, to this day, like, Soma's so shit. It's like, no. 
I don't think there's anyone passionately hating it in the way that like TLJ still has, while also having passionate lovers. Like Soma, the only people that are left are the people who love it, seemingly. And they keep mm. getting recommended it and recommended around because Soma's really, really special. Um, it really is. And it's a shame we couldn't encourage more stuff like that, or perhaps that's part of what makes it so special is that it doesn't have a wide appeal. It's one of those situations. I don't know. We kind of, um, I don't know. I feel like these guys, if they'd given it a fair shake in their reviews, that we could have ended up in a place that was far more fair for it. Hmm. And maybe Amnesia Rebirth didn't have to. <laughs> if Soma was hyper successful, I'd like to believe that yeah, Frictional would would have made something better again. Who knows? Oh well, at least look, all right. At least at least we got Soma. At least we have. Oh yeah, it. yeah. Uh, we 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 lucked out on that one for this timeline. So mm -hmm. it's often referenced for me as just the best story in video games. But it's there's a, you know there's a couple of other contenders. It's just that that one is particularly impressive. It's so good. And I do like what that person said in one of the comments, that um, whether or not it's got these flaws here and there in whatever way, it's the game that made them feel the most. Which, yeah, that's important. Uh, it's a big factor for art. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much for watching. This was a strange cobbled together episode of different pieces and uh, the kind of discussion I think a lot of EFAP fans were waiting for, which was that we delve into a bit of Soma and a trip down memory lane, at least for me. Wonder what is just say it's, it's just funny to remember all of the horrors that was the meta of the review of this fucking game. <laughs> but, yeah. to better. but hey, what oh, are you well. gonna do? What well. are you going to do other than uh I don't know what we're doing, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> so what is he gonna do? Play Soma, it's really good. I recommend Soma. You should check it out. It's a fun game, right, guys? <laughs> an engaging fun. game. An enthralling it's game. A, yeah. A captivating game. Yes. Um, Makes you think. Well, and on that note, we shall say goodbye, everybody. Yeah, see you, everybody. Bye. All bye right. Bye-bye. See you later, everybody.